بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله ومن ولا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome once again to another live stream in Dawawais in our English channel and those of you who are following us we have started another Bangla channel and we're also doing live stream on Saturdays so first of all we'd like to welcome rehatularab.com not website personally but brother Imani assalamu alaikum how are you wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah akhi how are you yeah alhamdulillah it's, it's a good to have you here pleasure to have you here um inshallah i'm sure a lot of your followers will be pleased to see that you are here again once again and otherwise inshallah and i'm sure people will inshallah benefit from the contribution and exchanges that you have today in our stream so this is again another open q and a session and with us we also have rather you know pleased to have and honored to have brother waqar akbar shima from let me turn the tables website which is now rebranded and also in a new episode called ikra icr a dot org as you can see on this screen um brother waqar is running this website with a few other brothers together which has been influential website in the intra islamic criticism of islam polemics in which he has made valuable contributions in terms of writing articles refuting and debunking so called uh, shubhat that people raise normally um is currently having some technical difficulties to join inshallah he will he will be with us but we really pleased to have brother waqar here for the first time in our dawah wise and those of you don't know um i'll just quickly show you the the website this is the website ikra.org as you can see here lots of articles on different ca- topics and categories quran preservation compilation up problems on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his married life as you can see on the issues of hadith different reports about women in islam jurisprudence history answering antagonists um it includes you know people who don't believe in the finality of prophethood and many many more and lots of other issues and his well old website is also a gem um i'm i'm sure many of you have benefited immensely over the years um and we are still continuously benefiting from this website and from the contribution and it's a pleasure to have uh, brother waqar um in person here with us today and also we have the pleasure as always to have brother hashim ustad hashim with us assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you doing brother mansoor and brother yeah, alhamdulillah alhamdulillah yeah so just to introduce brother amini those who don't know brother yemeni is also been very active in the dawa scene engaging with qadianis as well um in 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 a full front engagement uh, as well as the quran rejectors I, i don't call them hadith rejectors i actually call them quran rejectors because um they essentially reject the quran and engaging with um all categories of non belief in speaker corner for example um he's been quite monumental in quite a few discussions there alhamdulillah and we are actually pleased to have young brothers uh, like yemeni and, and others so may allah increase them may allah increase and give them the ability and the tawfiq to continue and to to be the beacon to guide and inspire the muslim youth and the muslim ummah at large so that we can continuously benefit and be inspired um i don't want to praise um the brothers but i'm just simply saying may allah give you the ability to be the ones who can inspire us and inspire others to continue to present the deen of islam and to be able to defend any criticisms levied against islam so Amen. brother waqar can you hear us now Okay, we'll come back to Brother Aqar. Um, Brother Yemeni, tell us what is going on um, with yourself this minute. Um, and as you're speaking, I, if I don't, if you don't mind, I'm just going to bring uh, the website which people. Yes, I can hear you now. Mashallah. So sorry for this, but thank you. 
Uh, mashallah, mashallah. So, Brother Yemeni, I was saying, uh, is this the new redesigned website? That, um, yes. Yep. Okay. So, I've been working on that for uh, you know a couple of months. Of, alhamdulillah. If anything, the photography and the video that you see there that was actually created by an ex Qadiani that I met at Speakers Corner. So, I actually have an ex Qadiani working with me on the you know photography uh, and videography front. Uh, sure. Marshall has done a fantastic job and has provided me with the pictures um, that you see and the video here that you see. Um, so yeah, this this has been going and Alhamdulillah, I managed to get it online uh, up and running before the uh, end. So uh, the next step now is just to market it and reach a larger audience and inshallah at some point in yeah. the future. Spread the yeah. fragments. Spread yeah. the fragments, brother. Yeah. Spread the yeah. fragments. MashaAllah. Yeah. MashaAllah. And now we have with us, pleasure to have Brother Sabur once again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Nice to be here with you guys. It's always a privilege um, to have you, um, Brother Sabur. Um, I hope your presence doesn't scare off a lot of people who were willing to join. Um, whenever they see you, for example, you know, their evolutionary development somehow becomes devolved um, and <laughs> uh, it's no longer like on the, on the you know the roof but it somehow it's going down um, in the scale of intellectual development uh, I won't call that evolution um, I will call that devolution anyway what is going on um, with you brother Sabur what, what are you up to nowadays do you want to update us Alhamdulillah, there's always a lot of stuff happening in the Dawa, but today I was really happy to hear that um, two brothers accepted Islam, Mongolia, uh, who are professional uh, horseback archers. <laughs> oh. so, you know, uh, the Dawa, the way the Dawa is growing, I mean, I just had the phone call a few hours ago with one of the brothers who himself is a revert from Mongolia. And uh, he spoke about this. So in Mongolia, we went there a few year, a few months ago, and they have still have this tradition of horse riding. They have the tradition of um, archery. They have the tradition of wrestling. Uh, these are very big things. And there's been a massive growth, Mansoor. Mm. In, guess what religion in Mongolia? Just have a guess what's been growing in Mongolia since communism fell. There you go. He's got <laughs> Since communism fell, guess what has completely exploded all over Mongolia? Islam, alhamdulillah. Mormonism. Oh, is Mormonism. It? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know how, but this is very strange. A thousand years ago, there were Muslims in that region. Muslims were in that region of Western Mongolia, because Western Mongolia is Turkish. Uh, not Turkestan, but it touches upon Turkestan, East Turkestan, right? It's a Turkic region, right? Western mm -hmm. Mongolia is still Muslim. Western Mongolia is uh, Kazakh Muslims, right? However, Christianity, Nestorian Christianity, which I don't know too much about, but you guys are the Christianity experts. Maybe you guys can tell me. Nestorian Christianity interacted with the Mongols. Mormonism did not. And communism destroyed everything in Mongolia. Um, you know, the oldest mosque I could find was only 12 years old. So the mosques were completely destroyed in Mongolia. Yet, uh, evangelical Christianity and Mormonism in particular has completely taken over the country. It's amazing. Uh, not a good thing, but it's amazing. Uh, it, you know, Mormonism of all play, of all religions <laughs> is, uh, is taking off in Mongolia. Yeah. I think Yemeni, all you need to do is get a horse. You've already got the bow and arrow. That's actually yeah. one yeah. thing I'm right I'm actually, I'm actually capable of using my hand as as the quiver at the moment, and I fire nine arrows in about what do you call it? No, sorry, twelve arrows in about twenty seconds. Oh, that's good. So sure. the next the yeah. next step is just to bring that down and then get on a horse. Yeah. yeah. Mashallah. I just um, I'm displaying. Um, is that you, brother Sabur, or your impersonator? <laughs> That's me, hopefully. So this is the YouTube channel. Um, those of you who haven't seen and you've only seen uh, the supports um, articles or other appearances elsewhere, this is his personal channel. Please do subscribe and benefit from all the discussions and 
debates. Yes. So, Jazakallah yeah. for this, Mansoor. Could you please click on playlist? Because there's something I really want to highlight which is not being used right now. Yeah. So, I, I have different types of playlists here on the philosophy of evolution and different things. But if you click on the playlist which is called Testing Universal Common Ancestry. Yeah. Okay. Now, the claim of universal common ancestry is obviously something that we need to address as Muslims. So, it's a, this is approximately nine hours of content just on the topic of testing universal common ancestry with the philosopher of biology, uh, Paul Nelson. Um, and with and now, if you if you uh, if you go down slightly into the comments, so every single comment, uh, Paul has given me the references for everything. Right. So this is the type of information you will not even get at university level. Right. Some of these things, Paul is actually working on a book which is going to be published this year. He hasn't actually published them uh, anywhere else yet. So uh, if anybody has any doubts about universal common ancestry, please go over and watch this because I was surprised uh, how much information, uh, you know, he'd, he'd acquired over all these years. But I'm also surprised by the fact that a lot of Muslims aren't aware that all this information is out there and we need to get it to them. So just give us a, a brief intro of Paul Nelson. So Paul Nelson is one of the leading figures in the intelligent design movement. So the intelligent design movement is made up of Michael Behe, uh, Paul Nelson, uh, Stephen Meyer, Jonathan Wells, Philip Johnson. So all of these guys in America who've been challenging Darwinism. I mean, to understand how prominent they are, People like Dembski have been attacked verbally by people like Richard Dawkins. Uh, they've interacted with the likes of uh, Sam Harris and others. Uh, and what you will find is in places like The God Delusion, which is a polemic, polemical book written by atheists, uh, what you'll find is that they are re they're referring to intelligent design. So intelligent design is something that Dawkins regularly attacks. Uh, so Paul Nelson is one of the key figures who uh, about 20 years ago, he made certain predictions about the discovery of uh, non-taxonomical um, uh, sequences, what, what are known as um, uh, orphan genes. And his prediction came out to be true. And he actually made this prediction uh, when everybody else was predicting the opposite. So he's actually really well respected uh, in the biological community. Mashallah, that's good, yeah. Mashallah, because, uh, so what's what's the main beef with these guys, uh, with intelligent design? Why do they not accept it? So the thing is, who doesn't accept it? That's the question. Who the doesn't? Atheist, isn't it? Yeah. So we, what we need to be careful about is it's not a writ large representation of the atheist movement when people like Richard Dawkins uh, would challenge intelligent design. Uh, for example, Stephen Meyer's latest book, The Return of the God Hypothesis, one of the people who endorsed intelligent design is a Nobel uh, laureate. We also have people who are not atheists, like Thomas Nagel, uh, who in his book that was published by Oxford University, Mind and Cosmos, he again um, is somebody who is soft towards intelligent design. He believes it, it is something we should take seriously, even though he's an atheist. So the people who say, oh, intelligent design is not accepted in science, they're not really representing science. What they're representing is Darwinists who have a vested interest in the success of naturalism, which is why they want to support Darwinism as opposed to uh, alternative theories. So they yep. just want to remove or, uh, any mention or possibility of God or, yeah. or an intelligent being, isn't it? It is, it is. But it's also... Um, if, if they go down the route of uh, it's not science, okay? I just want to highlight a few things which are quite funny about their, their whole critique. You'll often find them saying it's not scientific because it's not method, it doesn't fit with methodological naturalism. At the same time, you will find them making theological arguments and also saying it's bad science. So they're contradicting themselves without realizing it. It's either bad science or it's not science, right? It can't be not science and bad science. But the other thing which I really like about Paul Nelson, one of the first arguments you're going to see he's going to be making in the videos that um, you go back a few years on my channel, um, is Darwin used intelligent design as a comparative theory to purport that uh, the facts of evolution show that his theory is correct. So if intelligent design is not science, that means a lot of, a lot of the argumentation in the origin of species is actually pseudoscience, right? So there's a lot of problems with 
you know, those people who try and say, okay, intelligent design is not science. Well, if it's not science, that shows that everybody pre-1859 was involved in pseudoscience. Um, Francis Crick, just one last example before I finish, he's the discoverer of um, the structure of DNA. He is somebody who argued for panspermia, directed panspermia, that aliens may have sent down life on Earth because even though um, life is immensely complex as, as, as we uh, see it, but it's also complex going back billions of years. So the only way that Francis Crick could explain this is by extraterrestrial beings which sent down life on Earth. Uh, no way. <laughs> or rockets or whatever. So he believed in intelligent design. When one last person who believed in intelligent design was the co-discoverer alongside Darwin of natural selection, right, which is Alfred Russell Wallace. Alfred Russell Wallace is somebody who apostated from the classical naturalistic uh, evolutionary theory famously by talking about the fact that human beings in terms of their mind cannot be explained by the evolutionary processes. So um, I think what's important to realize here is that there's a lot more going on in academia than what they 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 want you to believe. Subhanallah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's why we need brothers like you, mashallah, who keep up to date and then update us uh, with the latest in that field of evolution, intelligent design, and so on. Well, Alhamdulillah, it's good to see the creationists, you know, for a change, taking strides in this field and challenging the atheist narrative. Yes. But one last thing I'd add is I, I always love to point out that atheists are creationists too. The only difference is their creationism story starts off with particles to people through a naturalistic story. So they have their own Genesis story. It just doesn't involve God. It involves the blind watchmaker natural selection, right? And randomness is their idol. So I, I think sometimes what happens is words like creationist. Uh, have been thrown around, but we can just throw it back at them and say, yeah. how does it not apply to you? Yeah, and it's, it's much more, less plausible to believe such things, you know, which like something which is inanimate, um, like a particle would then become all of a sudden into this conscious being, you know, like human beings. It's just a leap of faith from their side. Yeah, it is. And I there's something funny I wanted to share. This is related to a video of Mansoor I saw a few years ago, right? It's really funny because it's related to a point in the philosophy of science. So uh, Mansoor is debating some atheists. This is like five years ago, maybe seven years ago. And he said, is it theoretically possible for a human being to evolve into a potato over millions of years? <laughs> right? And you know what's really funny about that? What's really funny about that is this is, re this is related to what's known as the philosophy of human evolution, which Michael Roos is really good at uh, explaining. You see, the way evolutionary process works is it can't actually predict what's going to happen in the future. What it can do is explain after the fact has been discovered, because the element of randomness means you can't actually predict what's going to happen in the future. You can only say things are going to adapt to the environment, but you don't know what they can actually do. So theoretically, hypothetically, there is nothing wrong with the concept. There's nothing incoherent or nothing inconceivable from an evolutionary perspective that a human being can evolve to become into a potato in millions of years. Like there's literally nothing incoherent about that. I don't know whether Mansoor, uh, you know, was, was aware of some of these discussions, but the, the point being made and that atheist, his reaction, it just goes to show a lot of these people just don't have a clue. They just don't have a clue about, you know, um, just how, uh, incoherent this theory can actually present itself as. Alhamdulillah. No, it's, uh, it's interesting to see how they themselves, you know, when questioned uh, on the most basic things that they have no clue. Like, for example, one of the main questions I ask the atheists, you know, to explain the existence of the universe itself. And their answer is always, I don't know. But they don't realize that's not really an answer. That's just an appeal to ignorance. Mm -hmm. So imagine this. You went to an examination and every question you have answered, I don't know or I don't know yet. Yes, you will still be getting a fail because yes. the examiner will recognize that's not an answer. Yes. So yes. It's, it's not really. They're just, this will always be an I don't know for them. It is. It is. Well, it is. Welcome, brother Maurice.
I think Maurice, you're right. Nice. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah, you missed a lot uh, of intelligent design, evolution theories, uh, main creationist scientists. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> awesome. Watch, watch the video. <laughs> We're just having a chit chat. <laughs> If you go, yeah. uh, Ashim, if you go to, um, there's a guy called Blocked Atheist. He wrote a comment which which said, being a potato has no evolutionary benefit. It's at 634, right? Okay. I can't see the timing on this. Oh, there uh, it is. Just, it's, it's, it's above that. Uh, yes, yes. yes. There, okay. <clears throat> I just want to say that this is a standard reply that they actually give, right? A standard reply that they actually give. The point here being is the environment can shape the organism in any way that it actually wants because the environment can actually change and you have randomness as a sort it's, it, randomness is if you like the clay and the environment can change in any particular way that actually uh, that she wants. Why is it that um, uh, these atheists don't realize when they make these types of arguments, uh, they are actually referring to an argument which can be used against them. So if a potato has no evolutionary benefit, then how did potatoes evolve in the first place? <laughs> clearly, clearly, there has to be, even from you, some evolutionary trajectory going back, right? And obviously, um, the other element which is important to keep in mind here, sometimes natural selection is, is not there to improve organisms. Sometimes it's simply there to conserve organisms. So, you know, this blocked atheist, I don't know why he's called blocked. Uh, you know, we don't really maybe block, block brain, you know, yeah, maybe block brain. But yeah. a lot of this, you know, uh, Hashim is is uh, ideology, it's not science, it is indeed. Yeah, it's it, this is coming from emotion, so you're just not even thinking it through. I mean, I would ask the same question to any of these atheists, you know, like, okay, what is the evolutionary benefit to be moral, yeah, or to be immoral? What is mm -hmm. the what is the benefit? Why are humans having these traits of both morality and immorality, you know? Yeah. People, if, if it's just survival of the fittest, then you will see chaos in this world, you know, if that was the case. I mean, just remove morality from any society and you can see what the uh, what the outcome of that is. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yes, absolutely. Right. Uh, surely put the, uh, the Q&A link there. Uh, before that, just want to see, Maurice, how are things on your side, bro? I'm not very good. Uh, we had three shahadas in one day. Uh, oh, so I'm yeah. extremely excited. Uh, I also apparently ticked a bunch of people off because I took the cross off the guy's neck. So <laughs> all the Christians jumped on that. Um, but what can I do, man? The guy, you know, alhamdulillah, he was guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come talk to us that day. And he was like, this makes way more sense than what I was taught. So, you know, he accepted it. And oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Why did the Christians get angry? Would they not expect someone who became a Christian, you know? And they had, uh, say, the Om symbol, if he was a Hindu, around his neck. Would they not take that off? Would they not take his Bhagavad Gita from his hand? You know, yeah, why yeah. are they being dumb about such an obvious thing? You know, like if you have adopted a new lifestyle, just forget the old lifestyle. I mean, we are not like these so-called ex-Muslims who like to have the you know, the suffix Muslim in their name all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's X, forget the X. <laughs> you know, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a Mr. Smith and Mrs. Smith. Uh, and if they get divorced, the Mrs. Smith doesn't go around saying, I am X, Mrs. Smith. You know, exactly. unless you really loved Mr. Smith that much. Yeah, subhanAllah. There's a lot of uh, a lot of crazy claims in the comments too. I mean, the way that they just jumped on him and were just like, oh, he never knew Jesus and, you know, things like, oh, it looks like Satan won that day or something like that. And I'm like, dude, and it's crazy because these people, who knows where they're located, right? They're just casting their projections. And all I can think about was all the times that I gave Dawah to Christians and how um, diametrically opposed their family members were from them doing their own research. And that's why I encourage people because we've had, we've had, we had three shahadas that day, but then we had two people that were like this close and they were just like, I, I just need a little bit of time. And I'm like, no problem. You know, there's no compulsion in this religion. Go do your own due diligence. Please come back. Here's my number and get back to me any which way you want. And, um, I see that, um, when those things happen and they start doing their own research, their, their own, 
community will, you know, subhanAllah, like push them out of the community by saying things like, oh, no, no, you don't want to read that stuff or uh, don't go down that path. Don't ask any questions. You know, what are you doing? Think of what your family will say, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, um, it's it just goes to show you that the Internet is, is a projection of what these people really have, like this disease that they have in their hearts for people just wanting to find out the truth. So, you know, subhanAllah. Mashallah. Um, so where, 20, where were these shahadas, uh, Brother Maurice? These were in. Uh, these were at a mall uh, over in California. Okay. So we had. It was usually we have several locations that we put in an application for, and then the place that we typically go to denied us because they said, "Hey, you know what? It's Christmas Eve. Like, you know, you guys are you guys are great people, but just in case if you know we don't want to tick people off, stuff like that." Um, which completely violates the, the free speech and social speech rules that they have within their own policy. So the original place ended up canceling on us in the last minute. And then the new spot was like, yeah, there's no problem at all. Ironically, under like the exact same ownership, right, or the exact same umbrella. Uh, and we went over there and just set up shop for like five and a half, maybe six hours. I was joined by uh, Rumsey from Dawa Redunia. And, you know, they, people just, it was busy. It was really, really, really busy. Um, and alhamdulillah. yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so Ramsey's joined you as well, mashallah. That, uh, yeah. that made it more interesting, alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we have uh, pinned the link uh, for the live. And we have a guest already. Oh. Yeah, so if anybody wants to join, uh, please make sure you... Uh, verify using your camera in the back studio so only myself and Mansoor can see you. Uh, just do it briefly, then switch it off once uh, it's been confirmed, uh, and then we can bring you on the panel. Uh, you don't need to keep your camera on on the panel when you come live if you don't want to, but if you do, you'll be given priority, inshallah. Right, Anders, I'm going to bring you in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you for letting me join join in. Mashallah. Yeah. Yeah. So you are a Muslim, i brother Anders. Alhamdulillah, Okay, Alhamdulillah. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Denmark, actually. Okay, interesting. Okay. That's good. No way, man. My my Danish extent is Bakama Dufra and Ghalqal Mufa. That's it. Say that again. Say that again. And Bakama Dufra. Oh, welcome, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're you're, you're almost Danish. Almost, almost. <laughs> I, I'll call I'll call the queen and ask her for to get you a Danish passport. Then, inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure if he wants one. <laughs> <laughs> That's an, another case. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, what's on your mind, brother Anders? Well, brothers, I have a question uh, regarding my own experiences mm -hmm. in Denmark. Like I uh, have a son with a Christian woman and we are not together anymore. And the Danish laws are like the English laws, like very mother um, appreciative, if I can call it that in a, in a mild way. And the father does, is not regarded like as a parent, but that made me think, how is it in Islam, uh, in our religion, when uh, two people separate uh, or divorce and have kids? How does it function uh, regarding our our Sharia? Okay, that's interesting. I think that does that I don't know come under a fatwa, which uh, to be honest, it's not something that we uh, entertain on these panels because none of us are shuyok here, as you can see. Uh, so I think it's best you ask this question to someone who is a sheikh, someone who's yeah. qualified to answer this. But if anybody on the panel wants to, you know, give their opinion, not a fatwa, then you're welcome, inshallah. I, I was asking for an opinion, actually, because uh, I know in the Arabic countries, they do it culturally. There is no religion in it. So I, I just wondered. I've never a uh, thought about it before, like I went through it. I'm sorry. Right. So, so, for example, in, you know, you mentioned the Arab countries and stuff in Yemen. What do you call it? It's, it's still... Um, done under the sharia but what is it, generally speaking uh, it depends on the age of the child as well mm. 
mm-hmm. as well as many as well as many factors you know the capability of the mother the capability of the father you know who's more suited so usually when the child is an infant and requires more of a you know more of the attention from the, from the mother for you know possibly uh suckling or just early development then usually the uh, the judgment will go for her and if it's a son or for example you know and he's uh, he's reached a certain age of maturity they'll probably say the father's better suited to th- so it really depends on where the child is best placed but again you know because there are so many factors and there's a lot of stuff you know regarding the fiqh of, of it and it is as as brother uh, hashim mentioned it's best to um seek the judgment of a, of a you know and a fatwa from a sheikh who's qualified yeah. yeah yeah if you need help on that um you know <laughs> i have access to some muftis over here um, which are very knowledgeable you can email me the question exactly if you you yourself don't have access to one i'm happy to bridge the gap and put you in contact with him um, i was actually considering uh, asking uh, our brother the muslim lantern is he so mashallah so not knowledgeable yeah so i've just uh, sent you a link in the private chat it's actually from islam qa uh, website which is actually um written by ulamas uh, so it's uh, titled, Who Has More Right to Custody in Islam? Have a look at that, inshallah. It'll give you uh, at least an overview of uh, what the custody rights are for the children in the case of parents divorcing. Inshallah. Yeah, I will, I will, I will read that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I really respect your um, desire to want to find out an answer to this. And you're in a tough spot, bro. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy on you, especially because if your wife is Christian and you're living in a nation who that is I think Denmark is predominantly like secular, right? Like they're not correct, they're not correct. very religious people. Um, you're gonna have a, a double tough time. Uh, one, because your wife may not necessarily say, um, I agree with the Sharia and I wanna follow, follow and respect your teachings. Um, and then two, uh, when it comes to the court process as well, I don't think it's gonna carry much weight over there just because of the nature of it. However, I will say this um, as a parent, you know, just like man to man, you can be as a part of your kid's life on a personal level as much as you want, you know, Um, and I think your wife would definitely appreciate that no matter what her religious position is, given that, you know, you guys can clear the air and have a safe space. Um, So uh, I I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy on you to uh, not only come to an answer, but to come to a good solution for your kid. I mean, inshallah. And I lastly, mean, uh, uh, lastly, you know, it's always best to. Uh, I, I, of course, we appreciate that Maurice has access to a, a faqih. Um, however, it's always best to seek the advice and the uh, and the professional opinion of faqih in uh, in Denmark because he will be no best about the uh, political and the jurisprudence in the country itself to be able to help you on a s- Islamic uh, as well as a secular, you know, so bring that so that you've got the access to your child within the bounds of the country as well as the bounds of the Sharia. SubhanAllah, uh, I, I made Tawbah uh, after uh, <laughs> mar- marrying uh, uh, a Christian. I'll never do that again, inshallah, because that brings a lot with it. Uh, and uh, yeah i've been through a bit but now I, uh, alhamdulillah i'm seeing my son uh, it's really not a lot but it's something and i'm working from there and it, it the answer for for the question would not support me in my case i just want one was curious to know uh about because nobody talks about that issue islamically um I don't know if if it's because it's culture or if it's a taboo or no, it's uh, just, so. it's a lot just, of ulama's yeah. actually do talk about it. Yes, yeah. just we oh, yeah. have to pay attention to them. Subhanallah, so, I have not heard it. Uh, that that's I'm, why I'm. I'm curious yeah. to know. I mean, if there were brothers out there um, or sisters, not sisters actually, sisters can't marry non-Muslims. Mm-hmm. If there are brothers out there who are, who are you know considering mar- marrying Ahl al Kitab. Uh, the women of the Christians and the Jews. What would be your advice to them, brother? Because you obviously have some experience uh, and maybe you want to give your own. It doesn't have to be from your personal, but just a general advice to them. 
A general advice is like we are, by having children, we are putting seeds on Mother Earth. And we need to, uh, as much as possible, have as uh, organic seeds as possible so the fruits can be as nutritious as pos possible. Yeah, interesting. So, uh, so you know, we, my, 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 I'm we sorry. normally say a mother is like the the first school. You know, it doesn't matter umok whether she's umok from umok a Christian. Umok 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 umok. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's from a Christian background, Jewish background, or, or a Muslim background, or any background. Mothers normally are the first school. So if you read your, you know, your, your first Fatiha or your, your duas or something, it's usually the mothers who actually teach them in addition to your alphabets, uh, the language itself, you know, all these things. They play a huge role. So you're, you're giving someone custody of your child, you know, who has full-time access to that child. So you have to think twice before, um, you know, taking that step of marrying yeah. outside um, a, a woman from uh, other than being a Muslim, you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's and, a huge and risk some, things, yeah. some things that didn't have to be a, a problem, for example, name or circumcision or whatever became a an issue. And I had to, like, prove things um regarding to the circumcision uh scientifically before she accepted it okay. and her parents accepted but they they did at last because i provided the scientific proof of why we should do it yeah uh, no so pro so, problem yeah, is or, or, or the thing is if you marry a, a muslim woman it's there's i'm sorry i'm saying do ask the ulamas uh, especially before you get into um, a situation of marriage, you know, which is like a commitment where you commit your time, your life, your children, your future, everything. So a lot, uh, there's a lot at stake here. And I'm not saying that such a woman would be bad for you because the Prophet Sallallahu did marry someone who is outside, um, you, you know, from the Hal Kitab. And this is also um, enshrined in the Quran itself. So I'm not saying go against that. All I'm saying is uh, it's a huge risk you're taking. Uh, so if you yourself, and I'm not talking about Anders here, generally if you yourself are a Muslim who is of weak Iman, you know, your foundation is not strong, you might even leave your religion in that case. So I'm not saying the, the woman will have an impact just on the children, but will have a, a great impact on yourself as well. Of course. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's a risk in itself, yeah. May Allah make it easy for you, brother. Um, I mean, you know, uh, uh, one last one? thing to my Yemeni brother. I've lived in Yemen for a couple of years. And when oh, I saw your ho homepage, I was like smelling myself, uh, asking myself, is that a bad smell or? good. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a lovely yeah, smell. <laughs> but uh, Barakallahu feekum and thank you. Th thank you for, for having me uh, sure. on your live. Be strong, be patient, inshallah. Allah will be Allah uh, Make your da'wah. Dawa for me. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum. Okay. Any new ones that want to bring? It seems like a lot of um Yeah. Uh, so there are some non-Muslims in the back who don't want to switch on their cameras. Uh, look, brothers, yeah. we have the same rule for the Muslims as well. Uh, and for the non-Muslims, it's the same. Just like you are concerned about your safety and privacy, so are we. Because there have been instances in the past where the non-Muslims wouldn't switch on the camera. We let them in and then it was it didn't go well so it's up to you if you don't want to switch on your camera you have the option of writing your question in the private chat and we will take it from there but it's the same rule that applies to everyone everyone has to verify with the camera in the back chat it's only for a few seconds only mansoor and myself can see you nobody else okay so it's up to you guys uh right so who's next i think uh zaid khan has verified Assalamu alaikum, brothers. How are you? Alaikum salam. Okay. First of all, uh, I really appreciate the work that all of you are doing, uh, the entire Dawa Vice team. And uh, I've I've watched I daily watch all the videos. I'm from Pakistan. I'm talking from Karachi right now. And uh, I will, you know, special salams to all of you and brother Mansoor and brother Hashim the way the you carry forward with the Dawa, especially with the non-Muslims. It's, you know, it's a source of inspiration for many other Muslims as well. So may Allah bless you all for that. 
Uh, actually, I just wanted to share my experience and uh, to get your input as well. Uh, uh, you know, just uh, carrying forward what with what Anders was saying as well. Uh, I faced a similar situation in my life also. I, you know, I got married and uh, in a Muslim family, and I, I I got married and took my wife to Saudi Arabia, and uh, we had three kids, but unfortunately, the marriage didn't last long. and uh, we got divorced like after 5 to 6 years and uh, my kids are with her because the courts over here didn't allow me to visit my kids you know or to you know take possession of the kids and let alone the visits because the visits were not allowed by the my my wife side of the family so they are here forcing me that you know i should surrender my rights uh, my entire rights for the kids and they want to take the kids abroad to uk uh, to london so uh, just you know just to get your opinion uh, in that way you know as far as islam is concerned obviously mother has more rights over the children but uh, since they are forcing me you know to give uh, to allow my children to travel over there but i'm fighting uh, i'm taking the case into the court and each and everything you know uh, dealing with the lawyers and you know uh, i have my family to look after my parents as well over here so what should i do in this case should i allow them to go and if i fight would it be right Uh, would it would it be right on my part you know to put forward a fight or should i you know give the custody of my kids because if they go then i don't think i would be uh, having any chance to see them so what does islam say in that matter provided that the mother has more rights over the children i saw the link that brother hashim i think sent uh, and i was just reading and going through it so in that case uh, what is your opinion and what the, what do the ulama say about this that uh, should i you know should i should i bring my case forward in a in a court or should i allow the custody the the thing is okay you know the link that hashim sent um uh, that you that you're reading again it is a very it's a very generic answer because what the ulama can't do on islam qa is give very specific and tailor made responses on a single page every single situation is different so there will be different criteria that need to be examined in different circumstances the age of the children the capability of the parents location laws all of that stuff right all right so this the same advice will come to you as as it was for the uh, for the brother before you um that you should seek a uh, a faqih who is present within the country that you're fighting your case um okay. but of course your wife should not be prohibiting you um from seeing your children and visiting them and spending time with them as uh, she's essentially trying to get you to cut ties with your children which is of course forbidden in islam um mm-hmm. but there may be uh, there may be other reasons that um have not you know, of, of of naturally you wouldn't uh, disclose on a public platform which has mm-hmm. led to certain circumstances uh, for this to happen so inshallah that's the best thing we can advise you Okay, and another thing before I let you guys go is that uh, because because of what the tragedy has happened in my life and what I've been through, it has made me closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala than I was, you know, before when I was with my wife. Because you know, uh, traumas in your life, I think, uh, they come from Allah. It's a form of qadar which we believe that you know everything happens for a reason. So, but the thing is that uh, having through what I've been through and uh, having experienced what I have experienced. though it has brought me closer to allah subhanahu wa taala but sometimes there comes a phase when you know people do feel depressed and uh, uh, anxiety and they go through ptsd or trauma stress disorders and all this so how do you address this i mean i do read the quran each and every day i uh, i i make my salah i make my rozas you know i go for umrah as well mm-hmm. so anything so any suggestion in that case that you know anything i should do to re- reduce that uh, some sort of well, depression Like Rasul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he mentioned very clearly that it's not just the ibadah and stuff that will, you know, cure, uh, cure you from any ailments. Uh, he also said to seek treatment, worldly treatment. So if he if it is affecting you on a uh, on a high level, then it is best to uh, speak to someone. It may be therapy or uh, speak to a close member who can hear you out because. Um, what you you know especially with men you know and I'm speaking from the experience I've had with other people as well as myself mm-hmm. that what we tend to do is because we are so responsible for so much we tend to leave our problems to ourselves and keep them pent up 
and yeah. and it slowly erodes us so it's always best to speak you know maybe to your parents if they are uh, still alive inshallah may allah bless them then you know speak to them they are going to they are always going to give you uh, good advice speak to mashayikh speak to a, a muslim therapist you know yeah. people that can you can offload to and can give you genuine advice that is specifically for you and your situation um okay you know and and just keep making dua to allah keep uh, you know at the end of the day like you said you've become closer to allah because of this trial yeah. and there is no trial that allah gives us except for that trial to bring us closer to him and then obviously it's down to us to move closer to him or move away from him and alhamdulillah you've made the best uh, choice which is to move closer to allah and you know you're not despairing in his mercy you're not despairing um in the fact that he will help you and he will help you inshallah um just be patient um so um you know and may allah grant you all the goodness may allah remove the remove your sins with your patience may he increase your and uh, since may Allah guide your uh, ex-wife to uh, soften her heart towards you and understand that you need to see your kids and may Allah make um, all that is good for you in this world and the next inshallah Thank also I work out man so like working out helps a lot with depression go pump some iron uh, you know go join find a sport or something like that um, uh, yeah. especially things that are like uh, somewhat competitive in nature like you know running on a treadmill is cool and all but um to me yeah the best yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, actually i did join a gym thank you so much for the suggestion i did join a gym recently like two weeks back so i'm trying to find out you know some time as well you know to do all this stuff so that yeah so you know uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran uh, itself that the children and property are fitna which means it's a trial so Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal, uh, which is chapter 64, uh, verse, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, Surah Al-Anfal, which is chapter 8, uh, verse 28, where it says, uh, Yeah, and after saying that, that this, the property and your children are but a yeah. trial, but then Allah says, and with him is a great reward. So if you bear it with patience, that's the most important key word there. The patience is required in all cases, you know, because the whole idea of a trial is that how you come out of it, you know, once you have gone through the trial, how you deal with it. Yes, so absolutely. bear it with patience, you know, as you have already seen the benefits of that, you know, alhamdulillah, you become closer to Allah. Becoming yeah, closer yeah. to Allah means increasing your taqwa, being exceeding in your taqwa you know means immense reward in dunya and in akhirah so yeah alhamdulillah it's it's something which is a trial and you know the prophet sallallahu didn't only separate from his children his children died you know yes, yes. many of his children died you know he had only like one surviving daughter at the end can you imagine yeah. the trial on the prophets uh, on the messengers you know so uh, Consider yourself fortunate, you know, and it, it's there are many people out there who have got a much uh, tougher trial, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So bear it with patience and inshallah, Allah will uh, give you reward and give you something better for what you have lost in this dunya, inshallah. Inshallah, jazakallah khair and thank you and do remember me all in your prayers as well. Yes, so, likewise, brother. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Right, uh, we got uh, Brother Prasun who's been waiting patiently at the back there. How are we doing, Prasun? Hello, right? hello. How are you? Yeah, good. Another late night for you? Uh, no, today's a bit <laughs> early because it's only 12.30 right now. So I'm, I'm glad we, we picked up early today. So yeah. hey, how are you? Oh. That's good. How are you keeping? You okay? Yeah, totally. Nice. Great. Good. Nice to see you. What's in your mind today? Oh well, uh, I mean, uh, I just, I actually, in fact, today I saw your stream from the beginning. So actually, saw you guys dis uh, discussing about uh, <clears throat> creationism versus, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting, that's an interesting topic. Also, we can pick that also. Although, okay, yeah, although last time we had actually stopped at uh, uh, Muhammad had said, did you stop at uh, this discussion? How how do we achieve divinity versus how do you perceive divinity in uh, Islam? Yeah. So that, that's a, that's another thing we could discuss. So either of the two, if you if you remember. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we have dealt with creationism. So how do you, as a Hindu, perceive it? 
yes um so um of course uh, there are there are several uh, explanations given in hinduism as to why would why we will we will never be able to find out the source of creation yeah and there are certain logical arguments given as to why that's not possible uh other than that there are certain theories or models suppose you know put, put do you have something it. similar to the abrahamic faith where we believe like, like the first man was adam he's a special and creation of god the, the the there are certain incidents which match up to that but that's not the story of creation though okay. there is a story of manu and sharda which is similar to adam and eve but that's not how the uh, world universe began it's it's so manu later. is the son of uh, brahma right manu yeah manu like as in rishi manu he's a uh, this is much later though this is not during creation this is much after creation somewhat somewhat similar to noah's ark actually okay somewhat similar so to noah's do you ark. have the concept of the first man or you don't as a hindu uh, no no you don't okay. although although no although yeah we i mean we are all uh, the offspring of rishis so uh, all of us uh, can so if you heard of them gotra uh, like most people have in hindus there's a caste and there's a gotra so the gotra denotes which rishi you can trace back your lineage to so there are seven rishis which we kind of trace back our lineage to Are they, and, uh, are they yeah, rishis? Rishis are human? Yeah, rishis are human. Yeah, rishis are human. Sorry, rishis are stars. Yeah, stars. Same Sorry, stars. they are saptrishis, like the saptrishis, not the, not the not the rishi rishis, the saptrishis. So, are the saptrishi human or not? No, no, these are these are constellations. Constellations. Okay. Constellations, yeah. So, you don't have the concept of the first man. So no. If I were to ask you, uh, where did man come from? What would you mm-hmm. say? So uh <laughs> there are many there are, there are many um stories which have been put forward I mean the many theories which have been put forward I mean from And, your uh, scriptures if, if yeah from from, from So uh, are the Hindu scriptures able to respond to this question where did no, man come from No 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 there is a, there are there are several um now now certain people will uh, try to uh, I, I don't know if, if, if I go, uh, they would try to correlate certain scriptures to certain theories for example there are certain people who would like to correlate the uh, the nine ten of tas of vishnu to the darwinian theory of evolution they, they say it's, it's similar in in the progression and the the, uh, the semantic is similar but i i don't quite follow that because sorry which uh, which uh, story was that again so the the nine of tas of vishnu or the ten of tas of vishnu oh, i see okay yeah yes yes so some people correlate correlate that to the darwinian um, theory of uh, evolution whereby the first the first uh, living being is a fish and then it gradually evolves to an amphibian or a tortoise and then to a wild boar and then a pygmy as in small mm-hmm. smaller forms and then acts then an axe wielding guy neanderthal kind, kind of a person and then gradually more and more uh, sophisticated human beings which uh, come come up come up later now there's yeah, some people who can do that so, sorry to interrupt can i just yes. add something which i because mm-hmm. i'm really interested in speaking to you because Mm-hmm. This topic of early Hinduism and mm-hmm. uh, Darwinism is quite interesting. Hashim, mm-hmm. could you please share my screen? Um, I, okay. There's a professor who, uh, who used to be at Oxford, uh, Monier Monier Williams, mm-hmm. and he's a professor of uh, Sanskrit. Um, he spent mm-hmm. a lot of time uh, studying uh, mm-hmm. Hindu religion and uh, the mm-hmm. early sort of understandings that they had. and he had this very uh, interesting conclusion after spending years studying mm-hmm. um the hindu texts he basically said mm-hmm. that indeed the hindus were darwinians mm-hmm. centuries before the birth of darwin and mm-hmm. evolutionists centuries before the doctrine of evolution had been accepted by the huxleys of our time and before mm-hmm. any word like evolution existed in any language of the world mm-hmm. so one of the theories which and this is just a random a theory which i have right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is that the reason why some hindu philosophers came up with mm-hmm. an idea very similar to the tree of life mm-hmm. is because they were naturalists so even though um they believed in maybe the supernatural they were still naturalists from the perspective that they believed things can be explained naturally right you you don't need Uh, can, um, can into, you please can you please expand uh, expand the naturalism i mean yeah. what is your so what, yeah. naturalism okay so there's two types of naturalism so mm-hmm. the first type of naturalism is what's known as philosophical naturalism which is everything mm-hmm. breaks down to mm-hmm. the physical mm-hmm. that's what it means everything breaks down to the physical okay mm-hmm. uh, the second type of naturalism is methodological naturalism which is when we are doing science we're mm-hmm. going to assume only natural causation Okay. Okay. 
some okay. Hindu philosophers mm -hmm. and Hindu thinkers, interestingly, mm -hmm. were atheists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure yeah, if you knew this. Yeah, some yeah, of them yeah. were atheists. Some of them actually yeah, atheism atheists. is yeah, atheism yeah. is yeah. So what, what the reason I just have this theory is it's, it's not it's, it's it's not something which. Uh, is is uh, hundred percent concrete, but I think it has good good reasons. I have good reasons to believe in this. The Greeks and the Indian uh, in Indus Valley civilization, the ancient ancient, ancient pre Abrahamic civilizations, you, as you yeah, say. yeah, they 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 both came mm -hmm. upon the tree mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. independently, mm -hmm. and the reason why I think they both came upon the tree of life independently mm -hmm. is because if you assume there's no God and you try and mm -hmm. recreate the tree of life. The, how did how did life begin? You will come yeah. up with complexity going back to simplicity, which is why, yes, yes. which is why uh -huh. atheism mm -hmm. is is not something which is a conclusion of Darwin's theory. We can say Darwin's theory is the conclusion of atheism. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, yeah. so so if now if if, uh, if you ask me, uh, evolution, evolution, Darwinian evolution, Darwinian Darwinian evolutionary theory is it's a mathematical probability. It's yeah, not, yeah. yeah, it's just like, you know, if say certain things happen and then who was left over and then out of those remaining people, some some, some more events happened and who was left over out of that and so on and so forth. So just people who uh, who just were left over after a huge bunch of, you know, merge and purge of events. And that's how some people survived at the end of it, and which is us. That's what the Darwinian theory says. <laughs> now, it does not really say what the cause of the events were. I mean the, the macro events, not the not the micro events. The micro events, of course, is explained in the Darwinian theory. It does not explain macro events in the sense it does not say why certain larger set of uh, events occurred. Now Hinduism would, would differ with that so, uh, over there with Darwinism because Hinduism say that even the macro events are a result of our micro uh, actions. Micro events cause macro event changes. So there there is there is a uh, it's not a simple uh, A to B correlation. It's A B versus A back, uh, A again and again B and you know it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's an up and down kind of a correlation between uh, macro and micro events which lead to uh, uh, for example for example we are causing a lot of glo global warming which might cause catastrophic events in future which will eventually lead human beings to you know die out and then some a, a new bunch will remain so it's not only the macro uh, scenario that has changed it's the micro scenario that caused the macro scenario to change. That's that's the, the correlation that Hinduism would draw. That's where Darwinism does not get it perfectly. I, I would I would believe. Yeah, but I think there's also a wider issue, which is people forget that ultimately mm -hmm. Darwin's theory is not mm -hmm. just science. Yes, it's not. There's I mean, a whole uh, philosophy. There's a whole right. philosophy right. which is there before the science. Right, right, right. 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 But right. let let let's bring let's bring it down to a a more common sort of uh, theme here, like the belief in God. Right, mm -hmm. and the belief in God it, it colors the way that you look at reality, which is why if you're a naturalist, mm -hmm. then you look at Darwinism differently to when you're a theist. Mm -hmm. In terms of yourself, do you believe in in God in the classical sense of the word? So, Not, so, uh, so, that, so that's that's what uh, I, we have been discussing with uh, the others uh, on panel earlier. The because the, the term God is actually, if you see, it's a Christian term. It does not really correlate. To the Hindu idea of the divinity, and maybe I don't know how well it correlates to the Muslim idea of divinity. I don't know that, but at least does it, it at least it does not really correlate very well to the Hindu idea of divinity because in in Hinduism, God by itself, you know, it's it's it falls short of several definitions that we that we have for for the ultimate real, ultimate the solo, the ultimate truth, right? Therefore, uh, we um, um, you know there the several states of divinity that we talk of. And there's, there's Brahma, Ishwar, and so on and so forth. That the multiple levels of divinities, and then the then the the terrestrial deities or the devtas, which are most visible to you today, the you know Ram, Krishna, and those kind of people who whom you probably hear, hear of every day, those are more tangible uh, uh, elements of divinity that we talk of. Uh, but uh, if you talk about creation, then there's a there's a whole different chapter. There's a whole prehistory to our history also that we have. So you know the, the, uh, oh, the maybe it'll be easier if you want to talk about God. Like, what what Sanskrit word would you use for Almighty God? Yeah. So yeah. So God, uh, as I, I always say, if you use the term Allah, the closest term that we have to it is Ishwar, which is of that. Okay, of so you said. Yeah. Sorry. 
you use that term if that makes you yes that that is the closest but then again there are a lot of lot of philosophers who do not really um, uh, you know include ishwar in there uh, as you know in our philosophy six schools of philosophy four four schools don't even talk about ishwar there's only yoga and uh, 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 vedans which talk about ishwar so that which is why which is why i always make it a point to say that you know we have to be clear about terms because the wrong usage of terms always leads to a lot of wide speculation a lot of wild wild uh, you know um, and then you know probably you make some other sense out of it i may, that's, that that's a whole problem with yeah. these uh, i mean yeah. I, i do agree to a certain mm. extent because mm. the understanding mm. of god mm-hmm. the term god in um, mm. in the abrahamic faith is quite yeah. different Right. in the case of hinduism because in right. hinduism there are so many different aspects of gods if you want to call right. it you know right like you got to uh, the brahman who is just the universal consciousness uh doesn't interact with the creation whatsoever there's brahma who is created everything but is not the ultimate all powerful yeah. god right. uh, then there's the trimurti you know mm. <laughs> so yeah because we have actually dealt with hinduism the topic yeah. uh, right. that's why we can actually You know, and that, that's that's why at least today we have some yeah. some level of uh, comfort while talking over here exactly, otherwise yeah. We, yeah, yeah 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 so i think uh, was well, uh, sorry so over by you wanted to ask about yeah, I mean, god the, for a reason here yeah, in this the, context the thing is if we, because we were talking about creation mm-hmm. and we're talking about evolution everything depends upon not the data in terms of science but it depends mm-hmm. upon your starting point Right. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that's something that me and uh, Prasun and, and that's that's do. the reason uh, Prasun was Prasun. saying that it's not the same as you would expect in from your yeah. from your understanding of it. For example, this the creator god in Hinduism is called Brahma. Now, Brahma is not the almighty god. In fact, he even dies at one point. After every cycle, he dies and then reemerges. So <laughs> that's why for you to ask this question with your understanding of god mm-hmm. it's not the same for a mm. hindu okay so so let me let me uh, ask prasun a question then uh if me and you when if i was not born in islam and you were not born in hinduism uh but we still had the same temperament we were interested in these theological questions and we happen to be on an island and we're going to be discussing right we don't have any previous information about hinduism or islam what type of god do you think we could theorize upon which we would both commonly agree about what okay 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 so you see uh, there is there's there's already an assumption in the question because the god question comes after a whole lot of debate the god question is not an is not an inherent question the inherent question is how did i come to be here how did things emerge and when we go on debating on that go on debating on that and after a lot of logical thrashing and reaching no points that is when we uh, realize that there has to be a, a god point that because, because the, the god question doesn't emerge just it stayed away it's a very very complicated very very evolved question it's not a it's not a you know we talking about god is not just you know one day's question you know, when, when it when problem. it comes yeah when it comes to the divine there's obviously mm-hmm. a lot of things which are ambiguous a lot of right. things we, we can't pin down right. Right. if i was to say to you my friend prason that i believe mm-hmm. on the minimum mm-hmm. there is a transcendental being there mm-hmm. is a being that's not physical that's not mm-hmm. confined by space time direction and these mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. and there and that this being is not a uh, part of nature this is the source of nature this is the one who created mm-hmm. nature and that being firstly i i i posit the existence of this being <clears throat> ontologically as in this being exists and mm-hmm. the second is where we may disagree is that this being intervenes in the world so on the first point the, the existence just the pure existence of a transcendental being which is not mm-hmm. <laughs> anything like a human being mm-hmm. would you agree about that no no that's <laughs> that's that's exactly what I've come to Sorry? That's exactly what I, that's exactly what, I, what I'm trying to come to. That is not uh, uh, how do I say uh, straight away. I mean, you know, that's not that you uh, that I would or we would agree to something straight away. This is a conclusion that we come to. The the uh, uh, existence of a being beyond nature, which does not or does or does not uh, uh, interact with our creation, 
is a conclusion that we come to. Okay. Because, Wait, hold on. Just pause real quickly. You're saying that the belief of this higher deity is not mm -hmm. innate. No, it's not. It's not, it's not innate. Okay, I'm fine. I, 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 I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you. Okay. As well. No worries. Yeah. So, so the the innate question, or I mean, you know, uh, not I mean, okay, the innate question that I can think of, or what the Hindu philosopher think of, is how did what is the nature of reality? How does how is reality born, or how did reality come to existence, and what is the nature of reality? How do we perceive reality? What are the what are the faculties uh, by which we can judge reality, and what are the uh, the yeah sorry the what are the um, uh, how do I say the the um, <clears throat> yeah so it was the uh, what are the faculties by which we judge reality, and what are the uh, uh, test test of truth that we can have? How do we perceive truth, and how do can we just, I mean, uh, prove that something is something to be true. Those are the uh, uh, fundamental debates that that have gone on in Hinduism for a long time. And judging from that, we uh, we believe in something a uh, uh, flow of cause and effect, whereby things, uh, everything that happens is seen as an effect of something else, something that has pre uh, occurred previously, and that is uh, an effect of some some previous cause and previous cause, and that's how a chain of cause and effects that we talk of in Hinduism. Uh, so yeah, in Islam, of course, you you assume the the primal cause to be a creator god, we say it's undefined, it's undefinable. That's what the difference lies. Okay. Right. Now, I think, um, I, I, I think there is some things we can agree about, even though the de details we can disagree about. So mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. agree, for example, mm -hmm. that nature cannot explain itself. So. Yeah. Before we get to God, we can mm -hmm. we can come to the conclusion mm -hmm. that the fact that there is something rather than nothing needs an explanation. Right, exactly. Right. Okay. Good. Right, of course there's something, right? Now the explanation of nature can mm -hmm. either be something natural. Mm -hmm. Sorry, okay, can can um, uh, sorry. The explanation of something that is natural can either be supernatural. Mm -hmm. Right, or nature can exist for eternity, as in the, there's there's some type of uh, nature which is just there and it and it exists forever. Right, where would you say we would start to disagree? So I don't want to go over every single step all the way to God. Yeah, I understand. But yeah. We, yeah, at which point because I I can see you're very you're a very thoughtful and reasonable person. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where would we disagree? Because I think. Ultimately, if me and you mm -hmm. are sitting there over a long mm -hmm. period of time, we would come to agree to some sort of supernatural deity, uh, which is beyond nature. So I'm trying to see at which point we're going to be disagreeing. Okay, 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 okay. So uh, when we work backwards, I mean, in in our in our philosophy, when we work backwards, we're saying a cause and effect relation. We we uh, kind of. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Sheikh Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum, wa so uh, when we uh, can you hear me? Uh, alaikum, Sheikh Mohammed. Me? Yeah, we can hear Salaam you. Yes. Salaam Salaam okay. okay. Uh, yeah, carry on, guys. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, sorry, so, carry on. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, when we were backwards through uh, the cause and effect relation, um, we. We achieve more and more simplistic reasons of a simplistic, uh, uh, rather more and more simple uh, factors that cause more and more complex outcomes. Okay, for example, we are human beings with highly complex bodies, but you trace it backwards scientifically or so on. You can trace it back to maybe more simple organisms which uh, built more complex, got more and more complex over time. And um, so. Can I can I can I push back against that because yes, yes, I don't, yeah. Yeah. yeah you see if we take something like this bottle right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can break it down to something simpler and easier mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. which is atoms yes right that's pretty simple yes but then when we go one level beneath that and I think you know where I'm going with this yeah the machinery you, that built this bottle no 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 not the machinery. Once we go beyond the uh, uh -huh. atomic level, once we go to the mm -hmm. subatomic sub level, mm -hmm. we're going to get into the crazy world of quantum mechanics. Mm 
Yes, right? Right, which, right. which certainly isn't simple. So it's it, almost like things are fact, getting okay. more complicated okay. as you no, get, no. it's yeah, rather yeah. than simpler, you know? No, no, no. When, okay, so as for quantum point. mechanics, yeah, as for quantum mechanics, actually it is, I mean, you know, uh, if you if you follow the cause and effect uh, uh, the path, it's in, in fact, it's pretty simple because uh, I'll tell you what the Hindu uh, explanation of... Okay, uh, okay. I, I, let me let me just yeah. push back against, against that. Yeah. I don't agree because if I was to ask you, uh, mm -hmm. Prasun, do mm -hmm. you agree with the Copernican or the many worlds or the relational yeah, I, I, or the yeah. horizontal yeah, or, yeah, you yeah, know, like which of these theories of quantum yeah. mechanics right. would you accept? Right. So, so uh, I'm, 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 I'm getting what you're saying. What I mean to say is the physical world, the physical world can be explained in terms of, yes, it exists in atoms and smaller elements and maybe just 105 elements or so on. So on and forth. That, that's one way of breaking it down. But then the other question is, how did the physical world become so complex? If this bottle exists, if a bottle exists in plastic and which is basically petroleum, you know, yes, the material by itself, yes, is, is pretty simple to break down. But then the bigger question would be, how did this bottle come into existence? I mean, you know, what are the, how did it from, turn from some petroleum material, material into, a, into a, you know, hard uh, object? So there's intention. There is a whole lot of uh, 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 an ecosystem of things which uh, helped it to be. So if you break it down into the most basic form, if you break down everything in, around you see into the most basic form, then only two possible things exist. The one of them is intention, pure intention, or which which wants to make things into the way we perceive it. And the second is okay. the set of conditions. Okay, the so set of conditions. Look, yeah, let's yeah. let's go back to. Mm -hmm. Something I think which will be helpful as a distinction. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to mm -hmm. Aristotle's sort of uh, mm -hmm. different levels of causes. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the material cause, but now we're talking mm -hmm. about the efficient cause, right? Yes. We're talking right, about right. different cause. Right. So to make to make things easier, look. Let me uh, here, here's an example which um, uh, you can keep in mind. Um, mm -hmm. So a sh Shakespeare writes mm -hmm. uh, Romeo and Juliet, mm -hmm. and uh, I. Say we have the death uh, scene of Romeo, and Romeo mm. uh, takes the poison, right? Mm. Mm. So, is the cause of Romeo's death the poison, or is it that Shakespeare wrote the play? Which one is it? Well, in fact, Romeo didn't die. Romeo doesn't die. Romeo is just a character. A character cannot live or die. A character no, is no, a, no, no, no. But, but the the, the yeah. point the point of this analogy is mm. to show that mm. both of those levels of explanation are true. Mm. Right. He takes the poison. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. him taking the poison mm -hmm. and Shakespeare writing that, you know, mm -hmm. these are two different levels. So whatever happens within nature is the plot of life. And God as the author of all of mm -hmm. nature is a different explanation, completely different explanation. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what, I, what I think happens and this your line of thinking is kind of similar to how some Darwinists try and try, want to try and push reduction. I mean, we uh, kind of, kind of, it, yeah. Over there, but although yeah, we have, yeah, because yeah. because I don't accept this idea that things get simpler from a material level and therefore there's an impact on the efficient causation. Do you see? Uh, the efficient cause and the material cause are different. Do you agree? May or may not be. May or may not be. Okay, so that's what that's what I subscribe to. I believe. Okay. There's a right. difference between the efficient cause and the uh, okay something something as simple as a mobile phone, right? right. Material right. causes we know sand, yes. oil, yes. glass. Yes. yes, yes, yes. But the efficient cause is whoever makes the mobile phone, whoever comes up with the concept of a mobile phone. Billions right. of dollars in R and D. That's also a that's yeah, also part yeah. of the efficient cause. So yeah. Yeah. Nature. Let me just simplify it. Nature. All mm -hmm. of the happenings of nature. Mm -hmm. All are within one level of a mechanistic explanation. Mm -hmm. But God is a personal explanation. God is an explanation from an intentional point of view, an efficient causation. Yes. Right? These yes. are two different levels, which is why yes. I don't yes. I don't accept the argument, which is, I'm not saying you were going to go down this route, but it sounded like you were, mm -hmm. which is uh, the sort of argument that Richard Dawkins would make, which is things get simpler, organisms get simpler, Therefore, God has to be very simple or... or, or no, no, no. Yeah. no Richard, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're not making yeah, that argument yeah, because yeah. that's what it sounded like. No, no, no I, I understand. I, I heard Richard Dawkins and I kind of 
I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not. The thing is, uh, uh, when when simpler in the sense, of course, he says he can. Uh, he he talks about a, maybe a uh, you know so, or two simple elements, you know, interacting and creating more and more uh, you know complex uh, material around us. Yes, that's what probably the doc, Dawkins kind of view worldview. But uh, yeah, that that totally negates the efficient cause. Dawkins yeah. view totally negates the efficient cause, right? So the efficient cause has to be uh, a lot more complex than we perceive. So uh, the only uh, explanation that is that we have is just the way. Um, uh, um, okay, we have. Um, <clears throat> Simple elements interacting with each other, right? And uh, maybe a, ch a child playing, a child making something, right? A child makes, let's say, a toy or, or of uh, um, uh, you know mud. He takes mud and shapes it into something, right? And therefore, it, this, this this thing has it has got a certain shape. Similarly, the the intention, uh, which you know, which seemingly simple, uh, which seemingly simple to uh, the, the 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 viewer, is. Uh, our uh, interactions are monitored by a faculty which is, you know, infinitely larger than us, infinitely larger than us, which kind of um, uh, sees our... our uh, Prasoon, do you mind if yeah. I just pause you for just yeah. a second, yes, bro? Yeah. 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 With God as my witness and everybody mm -hmm. else that is watching, I love you from the bottom of my heart, man. Okay. Brother, you may, I don't know why, dude. You make me very happy. But I'm about mm -hmm. to tell you something, and I don't want uh, you to be upset, okay? Okay. Yeah. You are someone that I categorize as a dumb smart. You are incredibly <laughs> intelligent, but on mm -hmm. the absolute basic of things, you're just choosing to be a dummy, dude. Tell me, I, tell me. I love you so much, dude. I'm wondering why, in God's mm. name, do you not accept this slam already? The <laughs> reason why... <laughs> I like this. Carry on. I like this. I like this. I like this. Okay. <laughs> the reason why I say that, bro, is because mm. you know so much about, like, you're like a jack of all trades when it comes <laughs> to, like, other people's perspectives, but you mm -hmm. yourself have not picked a position that you believe in. So you have ah. knowledge to talk about what other people have. Ah, okay, okay, said. fine, fine, fine. But, but uh, you know, no, what okay, we're so, trying no, to no, do, have... dude, is we're trying to hug you, man. We're trying to get to know you for <laughs> you, baby. Okay, <laughs> so, okay, okay. I'll, I'll try. I'll try to portray. Uh, okay, uh, so yeah. when he's asking you, when he's asking you about God, or when he's asking mm -hmm. you about the Creator, or how where mm -hmm. things originated from, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. brother, so what if I'm doing any disrespect to you, man? I deeply apologize. No, no, I, I, I actually, I actually like, I like like this uh, direct approach this is okay what because yeah. yeah i think what he's trying to do and what i'm trying to do so i'll speak for myself at least what i'm trying to mm -hmm. do is i'm trying to isolate where your position is so mm -hmm. that way we can help you kind of peel mm -hmm. back the layers to mm -hmm. recognize that no matter what you call this deity mm -hmm. no matter what label you place on whatever is the originator mm -hmm. that deity is supposed to be worshiped and then we're supposed to get an understanding of what you believe that deity to be, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. you believe, what we believe that deity to be, and then you know mm -hmm. where we can help you bridge the gap to help you come mm -hmm. closer to Islam to recognize it as the truth, bro. Okay. Now, um, okay, fine. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm 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 quite overwhelmed, overwhelmed already, but yeah, thank you. So, um, now, uh, the the. See, as I've told you, I personally, I, I wouldn't say I believe in deities because deities are, again, you know, recognize, recognized forces of nature or uh, so on and so forth. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be following those. Uh, that's why I always... Believe, more than one. You believe in no, more no, than no, one? No, no, okay, more than one. Yeah. yeah, that's why That's why I talk about the Brahma state, which is the, the, the unified state of, you know, all is one kind of state that, that we... Um, uh, uh, that we talk about uh, because uh, 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 a certain singularity, uh, one single singularity, which is perceived by us as a, a, a as, as a diverse world. That's Forget what us, just you. I, I yeah, care but, about you. Even okay. I, I would. Yeah. So if you, if you there is a there is a when you see the start seeing the patterns in in, in the universe, uh, in in elements and you know how the, even the tiniest atom is a is a map of probably you know the the entire cosmos or you know those kind of 
the way elements interact within each other and how this it's similar to the interaction of elements at a very large level you uh, start to see the uh, the, uh, the 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 correlation between you know the smallest and the biggest and that's right. what that's what yeah that that is what, okay so like for example in the quran it tells us to look not only on the outside but also to look mm -hmm. on the inside right, right. so and and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us um, mm -hmm. Do they not see our signs? Do they not mm -hmm. see how, like, let's say, for example, we bring mm -hmm. the blessings of rain or the mm -hmm. winds or mm -hmm. uh, give them offspring or mm -hmm. how the sun has its own orbit or how, mm -hmm. you know, so all these things, right? And when I'm hearing you speak, mm -hmm. you're, you're saying that if you look at all of these things and all of mm -hmm. these elements, they should all be pointing to some type of deity, right? No, 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 no. They, okay, so are you they, saying that these elements themselves to, are the deity? No, no, they point to some sort of similarity in 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 in, uh, uh, in operation in the sense. Okay, they, so they, it, they point to some sort of order. They some yeah, and a certain order, right? There's great, a certain, great. Uh, correlation okay. between yeah, yeah, yeah. So our position is, and this is just to kind of help iron you out a little bit. Our position is that there is an entity creating mm -hmm. this order who established this order. Right and keeping everything in a particular order, do you believe in a, in a similar entity that established this order and is maintaining this order? You mean a single a, a, a entity which is creating multiple? Yeah. yeah. No, that's not. Um, how do I say? It? I wouldn't naturally jump to that conclusion. I would. Don't I worry would, about I would, whether you naturally yeah. jump to it. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. where you're at right now in life. Yeah. Right. Right. What I would say is these. All of these various entities are interacting with each other and creating a balance. A balance is created in the way these uh, they interact with each other. Let's say, now, you know... I totally agree with you. I totally yeah, agree right, with you. Right? Right. I agree that there now, is a balance in the universe. I yeah. agree that there is a balance in... in and right. There now, 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 you would suggest that the, uh, the balance is being created by a, it's by a super entity, which which kind of put, puts it all together. That's that's what I'm assuming you would, you would say. That's right? correct. Right. Whereas uh, I would say no, it's not uh, it's not put together by by super entity, but but these are these is the natural expansion of the the function of the of the balance of the uh, of the various elements. The natural uh, way they interact with each other creates the balance, and every time something goes out of balance, a new balance is created by the way the other elements. No rise, problem. So rise. let me let me kind of kind of just help again iron some things out. So. When we say that these elements are interacting with one another, we mm -hmm. believe that both elements were created by this entity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now that balance is a consequence of both of these elements being created by this entity. And now you have a product, right? Which is mm -hmm. that balance, okay? Mm -hmm. So do you believe that because I, the reason why i'm asking this question is the explanation that you're giving me is you're telling me that each element is independent and is no. not no no, no. I'm kind of getting that no, though no no no, no. the, the okay. elements are not independent the elements are not independent independent in, element, in creation or no, independent no, 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 in no, self sustenance no, 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 right no, no, okay no, so no. then you do believe that there is an entity behind these elements that have that has created no, the natural no, qualities no. that it has. No, no, no. I'll give I'll give you a third I'll give you a third option. No. Okay, all right. What <laughs> you got? Yeah. So the so the the uh, the the uh, various entities which interact with each other have risen from a more uh, a smaller size a circle of uh, uh, a, a smaller um, circle of interactions, which yeah. at the initial stage is a much smaller in uh, uh, you know a much smaller circle of interactions. Which grows in nature because of the the complexity the complexity that gradually builds in due to the the, the more and more uh, the, the, the 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 circles interact with each other. There's a larger uh, interaction being created, which thereby growing the overall thereby growing the overall circle of. Uh, I understand. So then, my yeah. question to you is: What mm -hmm. created the absolute initial circle? Yes. Uh, now, if you say that there is one in one creating one efficient cause now the question would be where does this one efficient cause reside if it resides in a in a in a in a state which is different from these separate from these causes therefore mm -hmm. th then it would mean that this this efficient cause 
exists in a universe larger than itself. Because now you're talking about two things, right? You're talking about the efficient cause and these entities which are interacting with each other. So the creator and the created are two different entities which reside in a universe. Since they're separate from each other, they reside in a universe larger than both, the, both of them. That's the that's the uh, you know, logical conclusion that I come to. Uh, larger than both of them? Yeah, right. Are you sure? Obviously. So what is larger than both of them? That's 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 the that's the question is. What that's would what, you call it? That's what my question is. That's that's how that's why I would not agree to the the, the creator. Are you getting my so question? The def, what the definition of a creator is that there mm -hmm. is nothing one of right uh, the characteristics I would say is that there mm -hmm. is nothing larger, nothing more powerful, nothing more um, encapsulating than him. Right? Yes. So, yes. Yes. But but I mean, you see, you. All of these qualities that you have given, they have to be justified. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these are these are these are qualities that we have given to the creator, but they have to be justified. In, you know, in a, in a, for us to like. Accept. Well, it depends, right? So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to disagree with that because I believe these are the qualities that he gave himself and and let us know about it, right? So, like for example, if he gave the quality of absolute oneness, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we have to investigate. Um, the the source of that message and then follow it you know logically if it makes sense for there to be one and you know subhanallah bro but when you're as you're talking to me um <clears throat> ironically i was reading uh just not maybe about five six nights ago i was reading a chapter in the quran call, called surat al-mu'minun which mm -hmm. is the believers and if mm -hmm. you go to um it's chapter 23 of the quran and if you start mm -hmm. from verse um you can start from 79 or 80, mm -hmm. um, but actually you can even start a little bit earlier than that. You can start from 78. If you go from 78 all the way to 92, mm -hmm. um, it'll really encompass the topic that we're trying to iron out with you. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> especially if you go to 91, and I'll just very briefly read it, it says, uh, Allah has never had any offspring, nor are there any gods beside him. Otherwise, each god would have taken away what he created and he would have tried to dominate one another, or they would have tried to dominate one another, glorified as Allah above what they claim, right? So now what, what's happening now is, uh, the reason why this popped into my head is because mm -hmm. you're claiming that God is number one, underneath some type of environment, that there has to be something bigger. No, right? I, I, I didn't say that. I would have said if a creator, if the creator is separate from the creation, that's, fine. Been, that's what I said. Yeah. But then you also said that he, on a, on a certain, if I misunderstood you, you can feel free to correct me, but the way that I understood it was you said that he is in inside his own plane of existence, and that plane of existence is bigger than him because it has to house him. It has to house him and the creation. If the right. So you're saying he's if smaller the, the than the plane of existence, though, yeah, right? Yeah. It has. To, yeah. Right. Right. Which and, is not. Which is which, okay. Okay. Which is not. Which is not what I'm saying. It is. Which is the reason. Which is the point at which we diverge. Uh, Are you getting the point? This. This. This is not. Uh, this is not uh, the way I'm saying it is. I'm saying. If, can I? If, can I say something? Can I say yeah. something here? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I was just listening. There is uh, some kind of. You know. You know. Let, let me tell you something about our perspective as a Muslims. Mm -hmm. We believe that God, God is the one who has created the space. Mm -hmm. That God has created so meaning that mm -hmm. God there is nothing restrict him. That's something which is important for us. There is nothing but bounding him above mm -hmm. him or, or bounding him. So that's why our description of God is the creator of everything, including everything. Yeah, that means when we are talking about God, we are talking about the divine. The mm -hmm. one who has created the universe, the one who has created the space, and even the people who, who says, for example, let's say, for for example, who says uh, about uh, you know the even the people who go who goes with the big bang theory, etc. Mm -hmm. They say mm -hmm. that everything was literally singularity, whatever. But where it was, it was in a space. It was in somewhere. So that's why this doesn't apply to God as as far as Muslims. That's why we say God is the greatest because mm -hmm. there is nothing greater than Him. Do you see the point how 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 we how our perspective about uh, about God about Allah compared mm -hmm. to the others? So that's why it's not about the comparison about 
which is greater than him because we are talking about the greatest he is something mm -hmm. which encompasses everything as Allah affirms in the Quran that he surrounds mm -hmm. everything with knowledge and 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 mercy and that means and uh, and there is nothing well if he don't have that they cannot even surround him in terms of donors they cannot surround him with with anything so the the, the point is that we are, we're talking about that that uh, and and in the same time as well there is another concept that we added to this for us as Muslims, I'm just giving you kind of an insight about that. As well, that for us, that he is uh, as well above his creation. That he is not mixed with them. is not mm -hmm. combined with his creation. You mm -hmm. understand? So it's not, there is no kind of certain, there is no kind of integration or mixing with his creation. Because since he is the greatest, he has mm -hmm. to be above the creation. You see, mm -hmm. this, 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 this is our concept about God. You understand? Uh -huh. Yes, yes, I understand. Yes, I actually, that's, that's, we have, after a lot of uh, interaction with the others on the panel, I've been coming here earlier also, and that's what I've learned to um, yeah. learn from. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's why, one, there are one of the things that, there are, of course, when you are describing God, we are describing God with attributes. So God has attributes. So there are certain attributes that is negated attributes of God, meaning that those attributes, it doesn't befit his majesty and glory. Like, for example, to say God, uh, that, for example, something greater than God, those are, we say, it's a negated attribute to God. So, because it's the greatest, mm -hmm. so there is nothing greater than Him. So, mm -hmm. when you are talking about, for example, even the people who are ascribing God to have a son, mm -hmm. as well, we say this is a negated attribute to God because God doesn't mm -hmm. need to have a son, uh, uh, yes. etc. So, all of these things. So, mm -hmm. the, so this is the, so so, the, so there are some, and for example, or transgressor to describe God to be an oppressor or transgressor. Again, those are negated attributes to God. So God cannot be an oppressor because He is mm -hmm. the one with justice and He is the one with mercy. So all mm -hmm. of these things we have to understand. You know, you know, uh, as us as Muslims, and as well, you have to know what we're, when we are talking about you know the divine in Islam, we're talking about. You know, uh, so we're talking about something that's beyond our comprehension, beyond our understanding, beyond our even mm. imagine, imaginary, you understand? So something mm. that's beyond that. But at the same time, we're talking about this, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the initiator of everything. And that's when Allah as well described himself that he is the creator. As mm. well, Allah said about himself, that he has created, and not just created, but he created in a, in, a, in, in, in the best way, and so on, which means in the, in the best form, in the best functioning form. So that's kind of the tasweeh which God has created, which means that, uh, of course, uh, and the knowledge, of course, that, that precedes all of that, the, you know, uh, before he created the creation, he knows mm -hmm. wa ta'ala, and he is a creator before he has created the creation. Mm -hmm. And so these are the things about that secrets of God. And that's what we are inviting people to Islam. We're inviting people yeah. to this believe in this God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the one who created everything, the one who initiates everything, mm -hmm. So that's, this is, these are the things which we are inviting people to. Sure, sure. Does sure. that I make totally, sense? Does that make it, sense to you? No, I, I totally appreciate what you have said about the past. Like, I, I was literally listening to it very intently, and I totally appreciate that. See, that is, uh, definitely, we have one explanation of the, the origin of the world and divine, and that's when we have. Now, there are, uh, you know, in our text, there are a lot of debates regarding those kind of things. And we have some different kind of uh, explanations of the divine and the origin of the world. And my intention to bring to you was to, to, to present to you the varying, you know, the viewpoints that we have. And then we might not necessarily believe in each other's uh, uh, viewpoints, but at least we are aware of each other's viewpoints. And that makes it easier for us to understand each other's and where we are coming from. And that's the whole intention of me bringing, uh, you know, coming to the uh, the forum and um, talking about my um, uh, our, our, our traditions. So there is no, uh, not, I'm not saying that you're, you know, I'm right and you're wrong. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is this is how, you know, you perceive it and understand that. And this is how we perceive it, and that's how you know we can probably come. Yeah, to by the way, I mean, what's what's your faith? By the way, what's your faith? My faith? oh, I'm Hindu. I'm Hindu. Hindu. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so the, the issue is again, you know, because we have a few a few discussions here and on this platform and other platforms mm -hmm. about certain things in Hinduism. I, mm -hmm. I sometimes I would just I find it just a bit uh, weird, you could say. 
someone who is very, very, uh, in, a very, you can say, intelligent person like yourself and other people, who mm. believe that, for example, this kind of, uh, you know, when you describe God with certain things, that, for mm -hmm. example, these type of, these type of demigods or what do you call it, mm -hmm. or the, the mm -hmm. tomb, you know, those they've, ones they have these, uh, they have this kind of human aspect of them. They plot mm -hmm. against each other, they try to kill each other, they mm -hmm. seduce each other, and all of mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, does that does, does that make sense? I mean, does it, again, we're not talking about God. We're talking about something which so, is, so, yeah, God so, is, right, is, right. is something pure yes. than than right. our our own thinking. Right. Yes. Yes. So, so in Hinduism, we have several uh, levels of uh, divinity, and not all of them are uh, like immediate, the extreme, you know, ultimate God that we talk about. There are different levels of divinity that we talk about. And there, what we are, what you're talking about, uh, we are, we call them devatas, okay, the deities, devatas, okay. and these are the persons. Yeah, as you, may, you might have heard of, you know, Shiva, Brahma, Vishnu, Krishna, and Ganesh, and those kind of people that you might probably you might have heard of. Yeah. These are these are these are devatas. These are not the extreme uh, ultimate god that we're talking about. These are personifications of various forces of nature that lead us to divinity. So yeah, and are and, they gods? Are they gods? Are they gods? Are they gods or part of God? No, they, I mean, see, God, uh, we, the, the term that we use for God is Ishwar. And Ishwar is different I, I, from... I'm, I'm not, no, no, I'm not talking about... I'm talking about this one what you mentioned. Just these, are, these, are, these are, these are, these are, are divine... They, are they gods? Are they gods? Are they these gods? Are, these, are, these are divine... These are divine elements. These are... These are, uh, you know, more... Um, I wouldn't say they are the ultimate god, but they are they are divine elements. They are, they are. So the, the, the let's give them the right description. Are what they gods or non gods? They, they, are they gods? We call them devatas. We call them devatas. We call them devata. So, which means which means god? No, it's like a representation of god. It's like they a representation of god. Eyes. So 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 they are a representation of god. Yes. So they are part of God. We are all we are all part of God. We are all, as in the Hindu theory, we are all part of God. We are all all. all is, the same. Is, yeah. is is God is is God is perfect? Is God is perfect? God, I mean, perfect is a human. It's a it's a. Sheikh, this will be a whole new philosophical yeah. argument. Yeah. Uh, I suggest we don't go down that route. But yeah. uh, brother Prasun, there are a lot of people waiting in the back chat. Yeah, I get it. I think I think we have already overstepped. We can the take it next time. time yeah, but anyway. My, my, my point is, my point is, those ones that you mentioned are imperfect from all aspects. And, and again, uh, because of the imperfectness, I mean, they cannot represent God. Though, so that's what I meant by that. Yeah, I yes, I mean, uh, see, I think... By the way, uh, it was good to talk to you. Yes, anyway. it was. Yeah, yeah. We'll come back on another day and we'll talk regarding this. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks, right. Parsil, man. Yeah, I, I love, love you. I love this yeah, guy so much, man. Yeah. I, I can't wait for this dude to accept the slam. <laughs> Wallahi, I want to be present for his show. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, give me the... Okay, see you soon. See you Big soon. Big Yeah, see you soon. All right, Parsil, take care. Yeah, bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. bye 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 I mean, inshallah. By the way, he was he was respectful on overall. He's he always was, uh, he's, he's always respectful. Always nice so he's, guy. He's one of the so, few the Hindus uh, we to. enjoy having on the stream. <laughs> you know, ma many people who who comes there are, they are rude, but he he's very respectful. I found that he's a respectful person. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, may Allah guide him. You never know. May Allah open his heart to the truth. I mean, yeah. All right. We got uh, Rayu next. Or oh, whatever his okay. friend's name is. I need to. I need to go now. Inshallah, I need to have a, have a show. But as a bit, I I try to take advantage of these moments being with you. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. Okay. 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 Hello, hi. hi there. Thanks very much for this session. My question to you is, what's the difference between a, an Islamic mortgage and a traditional mortgage with a traditional bank? Because I find that the Islamic banks use different terminology, such as admin fees, etc. But I feel that in principle, it's the same thing that you're paying, interest versus an admin fee, etc. Thank you. Okay. Are you a Muslim? No. So why are you worried about Islamic banking? I'm just asking the question. No, but... There's, a, there's more important questions than that. So I, well, I understand 
I understand you were a Muslim and then you left. Yes, I'm just asking a question. That's so that question is a more important question we would be dealing with. Why did okay, you leave well, Islam? Question. Thanks for your time. Bye. <laughs> I Seriously. guess the bank made him leave. I don't understand. No, it's just a question he wants to ask. Waste of time on it. Anyway. Well, I think. Um, I would. I would if, want to know because his dean is at stake. You know, his friend yeah. insisted that we take him, that he joins, mm. and this is a question he had. So, <laughs> Ryu, you know, next time I'm not going to trust you, bro. Okay, but it's. I mean, in, as a general advice, what we suggest is even in if you are UK based in London, at East London Mosque, there are actually someone quite specialising in Islamic finance, and so is our Sheikh Muhammad Tarawna. Okay, mm -hmm. he's doing his specialisation in Islamic finance. So yeah. if you are watching this later, are you with, the, with your friends? You're more than welcome to connect with these specialists who have. In the deep knowledge in Islamic finance as well as the Western finance and financial model. Of course, the problem is, you know, financially in the, in the financial world, how interest is so much um, widespread everywhere in the, you know, Muslim, non Muslim world. There has to be ways and, and means to somehow have this kind of financial system within a broader financial system. So there are opinions as to whether this is actually in a you know, proper sense, technical sense, there is a difference between a sort of Sharia compliant or non-Sharia compliant. I mean, there's a huge discussion going on. And because of the context, it's important to understand how these scholars are actually coming up with this jurisprudent um, legislation, so you wouldn't say, or guidances. So if you're really interested, you know, there are very, very knowledgeable uh, people who are knowledgeable on both sides of Western financial system as well as Islamic finance. So more than uh, you know, you're more than welcome to go and speak to them rather than simply asking someone who has very basic knowledge here in Anapal. We we are not specialists in Islamic finance, neither are we specialists in Islamic jurisprudence. So we can only guide you to where you can find the answer. So if this is something troubling you or has troubled you in the past, which made you to question Islam, I would, uh, like Brother Ustad Hashim was saying, think about the priorities. Because as time changes, as modern day, lots of new things, new challenges will arise. It doesn't mean that Islam doesn't provide solutions to these things. It's how you understand how the solutions are provided. The Islamic um, principle of you know, jurisprudence, the sources are not just only one, two, three, and four, they're actually more than four, which many people don't know. It's not just Quran, Sunnah, Ijma, and Qiyas, they are more than that in terms of Islamic source of Islamic jurisprudence. So maybe this is what maybe have troubled you. So if you think that can be clarified to you by an expert in in Islamic jurisprudence or Islamic finance, and that brings you back to Islam, then let it be then. Uh, we can guide you and direct you to where you can speak to Sheikh Muhammad Tarona, who joined us earlier on, is specializing on this. And there's various others that we, we know of um, in ELM, Eastern and Mosque, that you can speak to, who will link you up, inshallah, with them. So I hope that um, you don't take this as a matter of offense that we didn't directly answer your questions because we're not specialists. But do take the time and the interest to go and find out the differences from people who have specialism on the subject. Right, so we got our next uh, Satya Singh. Hey guys. Hi Satya, how are you doing? Hey. Hi, good, 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 good. Where are you joining from, Satya? Well, I'm joining from Canada. Okay, that's good. I think you, you've been on our panel before, isn't it? Mm, yeah, a long time ago. I think okay. it, it, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. All right, good. What brings you on today? Well, I was just listening to the conversation earlier. This uh, this guy, uh, I don't know why he just uh, all of a sudden. Oh, you mean Prasun? Prasun, the Hindu yeah, guy. Yeah, Prasun. I yeah. I think that 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 I was I was just thinking about the answers, some of the questions that you guys asked him. Is that where is the difference between us and Islam? Is is very simple. We also believe there is one supreme, and everything is his or her, whatever. Because my basically gender is is not for that supreme, right? Is is 
is is his or her expansion you can, you can call it oh, sorry it. sorry are you are you hindu or are you sikh no i'm hindu okay because sikh can also be in sikh that's what i'm asking yeah 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 yeah, sikh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean we right, were so, original sikhs uh, sikhs right you know that yeah. right because sikhs is is, uh, is from the kshatriyas community yeah. so when when guru gobind singh when the 10th guru right when when after the death of his father right he just when he created this 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 clan which is kshatriya clan that's that's when because our job was to fight our duty was to fight and and, and no, protect the community uh, so that's why we're seeing there's a clear difference between the sikhs and the hindus obviously the no, hindus you know, they the believe kshatriyas, in the kshatriyas were like, yeah yeah of course oh no 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 there's 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 not not yeah, the belief in god between, is completely different for them isn't it um so if i, I want to ask of, you do you a lot of politics behind it i don't want to go into politics to be a very honest if i ask honest. a sikh do you believe in many gods goddesses they'll say no see there is no no okay so there's no many gods hindu doesn't believe there are no many gods as i told you there is one god and everything is his ex or her expansion that's it the philosophy yeah, is different uh, So if I were to ask you you know Brahma Vishnu and Shiva yeah are they three separate identities or one identity they are three separate identities okay, but if it's a separate identity but, you cannot but, be the same but but here's the thing the there, are God, separate, there are three separate there's three separate identity of the expansion of the same identity no no expansion of the have, supreme god if it's three separate identities yeah then those three identities are they the same as the supreme identity they are expansion like no no they 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 are, they are the expansion of the supreme uh, supreme uh, lord yeah but that was my question god. my question is is it the same identity as a supreme god yeah the same identity who got like the same identity who divided uh, itself into three parts you can so, say that so the three parts yeah are they the same identity as a supreme identity N no they are not the exactly. same so they're they can't the be the same, same So, no, no. So they are not yeah. the same, but but they are the expansion of his no, no. or her. You see this this As philosophical word, this philosophical no. word, which many people use, manifestation, yeah. expansion, extension. Yeah. It it still implies that once you become a separate identity, yeah, then you cannot be the same. The, the, so so this this is how we look at it. Like this is one of the philosophy, and that's a bit of philosophy that I'm talking about, and that's the so more it's, prominent it's the philosophy. Same. That's what I'm saying. For so, example, no, if I were to ask see, you, what is the name? What is the name of this supreme identity or supreme soul, the Paramatma? What is his name? Yeah, Paramatma, Brahma, Ishwar. You can no, call no, it. No, Brahma. Any, can... Brahman is different Brahma. from Brahma. No, yeah. Bra no, Brahma and Brahma. is two different okay, things yeah. some some, exactly. some people call it brahman some people yeah. call it brahman depends on the language and depends on the part of the reason you are you are you are from india and I mean, some if i were to brahman. ask you are there any temples dedicated to brahma no good are there any temples de dedicated to shiva yeah and to vishnu yeah good why does a supreme god doesn't deserve a temple because they are their expansions because you said but you because said they all they, the same okay no because because they okay so because they okay so they are also are gurus so those the shiva oh, the and vaishnava gurus, okay I'll, i'll tell you i'll tell you so in hinduism right there are there are six different sects in hinduism so one is shiva you switch off your sect? camera because the bandwidth cannot yeah, handle the like audio and the, it'll be easier that way yeah go hello ahead. yeah that's better yeah. yeah hello yeah i can, can you? Yeah, yeah yeah go ahead okay. yeah, yeah so yeah what what i was going to talk to you about so shiva and and vishnu there are guru as well what does that mean that means they have shown the way to reach to our supreme potential and become one with the god and and, and realize the supreme potential within okay. ourselves let me ask you this so, question yes can almighty god or supreme god if you want to call it or supreme entity yeah can he manifest into something immortal 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 if if he wants to be like we don't know so do you think 
How can no, how God. can you speculate about the supreme being? I'm not speculating. I'm asking. That's what I'm saying. If he wants to be, and if he thinks that that's suitable uh, to sustain this planet, he can do it, or she can do it. Okay. Do you have the concept of good and evil in Hinduism? Yeah. Okay. Can God be evil? God be evil? Uh, he might appear to be evil, but 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 ultimately, uh, there is no separate thing except him. Like he is just playing a role of evil. But 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 there's there's like evil. Like if if evil, if you're thinking of about a being which is evil, about any being which is which is living being as an evil, then 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 that every living being on this planet of everything everything on this universe of this cosmos is 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 he himself okay so you're telling me that all you and i you and i like we we believe in aham brahmasmi like i am a god so you you and i are a god so it's just that speak for yourself you know Look, because let of, me ask you this yeah my question was very i'm simple. speaking for can myself god, yeah. can god be evil that was my question i still haven't heard the answer to that God cannot be the pure Brahma cannot be evil, but Why? he can play a character of evil. What what does that even mean? Play the character of evil? Like is he the, the, is he in some sort of a a drama? No, is, the pure Brahma is, is, is nothing. The pure Brahma is not good, not evil. The pure Brahma is not good, not evil. Does he it, doesn't have those does attributes. It, does it have any attributes? No, no attributes, no shape, no attributes. Okay, so something that has no no attributes can it even exist in reality? He is. He is all. 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 All exist. I mean, he's everywhere. He's in every. Like he's, like I'm, I'm I, I don't you, know the can, word in English probably, but but he is in every being. You and me. No, no. My question was: Can something that has no attributes, you know, every entity is defined by its attributes. For example, if I were to tell you a circle, you would know exactly. So if you are giving him an attribute, then then no. if if you're giving him an attribute, maybe maybe I'm maybe you're just restricting restricting him uh, restricting no, no, no. him I'm, with those attributes. Actually, maybe every other attributes is his attributes. You, you, it you, came from him. If you listen to the question again, you might understand the point I'm making. Yeah. So can you think of any entity which has no attributes? So do you think that your 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 brain, which is made of a material, can think of the 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 can 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 realize the Brahman, which is not material? That that's what you are. That's you, that's why you're comparing Brahman with any your material brain. My mind is not material. It's it's yeah. It's not material. So this is this is. It where is I, material. It no, is no, made of mind and soul. soul. The mind and soul are not material. As okay. a Hindu, you should know this. Being a yeah, okay. So person. mind and soul is divine. Yeah. So wait, wait, wait a minute. Mind and soul are not material. Do you agree? No. So your mind is material. Yes. And your soul? My soul, Atma, is not material. Okay. How do you say mind in uh, in Sanskrit? Uh mind is uh, man. It's not the brain. Man. You know, mind and man. Brain are man. Not, man. Mind and man. brain are not the same thing. You do. No, 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 no. Mind and intellect is a different thing. <laughs> Man, brain okay. is not the same as your mind. So, you know? it's, so, it's so we have, spirit. so, so okay, we have this gross body, yeah, yeah. which is made of these elements, right? Which is made of this panchabhuta, which is made of these five basic elements. Then we have okay. sukshma sharir, which is man, buddhi, chit, ahankar. What I meant which by is, mind is a consciousness. Your consciousness. Okay, the consciousness and mind is a two different thing. Mind is not consciousness. I, that's why I asked you what do you call it in Hindi. Maybe it's it's different. So consciousness and your soul yeah. are two different things. Do you agree? Um, hmm. consciousness and and soul. Break like that. Atma. Now we understand. We why don't I mean have, they're different. Look, they. We, we don't everyone, have no. We look, don't have two different words you. for. We every, don't have two different no, words no, for do. consciousness. You do actually. Your consciousness and your soul. Okay. Your soul is your atma. Yeah. Okay? So, for yeah. example, if I were to ask you, is the is the consciousness of Brahman or Brahm, you want to call it the supreme soul, is that yeah. the same as uh, Shiva, for example? Yes. Okay. Is the is your consciousness same as your supreme God? Yes. Okay. So, can you? Can you are you conscious of everything in the universe? No. Why is that? Because because your consciousness we, is the same. 
no 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 because it's the same but it's under the carpet of maya which is material you have to so 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 you have to get pass of your ego ahankar your mind your intellect you have to, so to the, if you try that's why you have to try to still all of these things to realize the supreme god and that's when you can so that's how like all of our uh, all of our like those greats the people that we were talking okay. about those deities all those 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 people who had those attributes and those those, those for us became um, um, a, a, a representation of god okay so i asked you if the consciousness of shiva is the yeah. same as that of brahman yeah what about the consciousness of brahma the creator god yeah is the same yeah yeah okay if it is the same yeah then why did brahma lie to shiva okay so so now now now, now the, here's the thing this is where we come into the good and evil thing. No, no, no. Okay. You earlier. So, 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 no, no. Okay. I, you, you are asking a very good question, but I, I think this is where we mistake. So, you are taking this story from Shiva Puran, I no. guess. That's where you're taking this story from. Yeah. Shiva Puran. Um, no, no, no. Okay. So, so here's the thing. Our Puranas are... Um, before you go to judging the books, let me ask you something. Do you believe? No, 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 no. Wait. Do you believe that Brahma lied to Shiva or not? According to Shiva Puran, yes. No, but do you believe that Shiva Puran? No, no. I, I, I don't know that. I don't see that story as as you are seeing it. So how do you see it? Okay. So, so, so I, I'll tell you what. I, I'll tell you what. The, so, India. So, if you want, so Purana is, is all about stories. It's, there are subtle messages given hit uh, uh, um, uh, hidden in in certain stories and and has been presented uh, um, uh, uh, in in a tale okay, so, so that's how you the, have to read so, okay so let, let, the, me, let me let me let me let me no, i want to know before you go let, what is the me, moral what is the moral story or what is the moral lesson of portraying one of your gods brahma yeah, as a liar yeah. what is the moral story Okay, I, I don't know that story, but I'll give you another you know uh, another example. In fact, you no, told no. me where it is. No, I know, I I, I know the story. Backtrack. No, I, but but I know I don't know the moral of the story because I never no, I never bothered to look, check. Look, logically, see, logically, see, a god cannot see, cannot lie. Do you agree? See, Hashim. Yes. Hashim. Yes, Satya. The thing is, the, 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 you have you have to understand that for us, Puranas are not our reference book where we just Puranas are the stories. But you believe right? it. That's the thing. Okay. See, I first my book that I read every day is Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, but that's not my question. My question no, no, is this: the, so, so What no, is the point? No, no, wait, we wait, do read Satya, that. Satya, wait, but, but, see, what is we the do point read of that. showing any god? But as, Puranas as a has liar. to be what read. Puranas has to be read under the guidance of certain gurus who understand the symbolism of to, India. The point remains: your, one of your god lied to another god. So. So, un so, so understand that. That understand okay. that. Uh, what I'm trying to, what, what I'm trying to say that, like how how the Purana stories can 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 uh, can can be understood in a very different way, can be meant very differently. I will. I'll just exp I'll just explain you okay, one, go with on. one story. Maybe if you give me a, a like like two three minutes. Go so on. Brahma, the Creator God, the Brahma, the the in the, in the Holy Trinity, the the Creator God. The uh, there's a story that he fell in love with his his uh, his uh, his his daughter, which is Saraswati. Wow! Wow! And 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 that's and that's why he is not he is not um, uh, he is not to be worshipped. Now, this is the story. So this is the right? same God which has the same consciousness as your Almighty God, yeah? Yeah. So so understand what so I'm this trying to say. Almighty God fell in love with his own yeah. daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. See the problem here. Yeah, no, I don't see the problem here. So Instance I'll tell you. It's not a problem in Hinduism. No, no, no. I'll okay, tell you. So don't, don't, don't go cousins. there. Don't, don't, don't go there because incest. Islam can, 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 can just do the cousin marriages. So, so I'm not going there. No, but you, let's, you let's, don't do cousin marriages. But you let, let, your gods. Let's incest. understand. Let's understand what's the symbolism. Yeah, go on. And oh, why? What is the moral story. Yeah, what's the moral stories? The, yeah. That's why we were coming at so before you judging. You should ask. You should ask that. I did ask. So, was the moral lesson? No. So you the word, I don't know no, th about this story. I'm talking about. Okay, go on. So the moral story of this lesson was moral lesson of this story. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. Um, so it is that 
that the creator can even fall in love with the creation that what it is and when you fall in love with the creation you are not worth worth uh, uh, worth of worshiping so that's why you no, cannot not, see uh, brahma being worshiped by yeah. hindus Satya, at all do you not you see a problem see. here satya sorry yeah. you, have, you, have, you, have, you have to slow down you have to slow down there's too much yeah. nonsense in yeah. short satya listen yeah. you said brahma and brahman had the same consciousness am i right yeah. Okay. As you have a same no, wait, consciousness. No, no, wait. As wait, Brahma, wait, wait a, a minute, Brahman. Wait a minute. But the thing is, is Brahma one of your god? Is his consciousness um, veiled by his illusion or not? I'm sorry. Is it veiled by illusion, by the Maya? Is he yeah. under Maya? Yeah, of course, and and that's why the gods are under Maya as well. Yes, the 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 Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. They, they 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 have they are not fully independent of maya the brahma vishnu and mahesh are they are not fully independent of maya the only supreme is being not the same as that of the brahman i'm sorry so brahman consciousness this, like as i told you that your consciousness is same as brahman consciousness it is it is just that under the veil of maya but your god on the veil of brahma shiva and mahesh you said they are, they are also, also under the maya. veil of they are also the veil of under okay. maya good now that you have uh, admitted they are all under maya which means they can all sin am i right they can all commit crimes they can all be immoral just like human beings no no they they they're, like see so they are not under maya as we are hmm. oh so, so how many mayas they're, have you got another category because because no no okay so no no understand 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 so so let's let's say anything that you're saying dude you're no 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 understand that they can they can so let, let's understand that so for us um my guru is as as worship as worthy of worship as 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 lord shiva or or lord vishnu really i worship my guru whom does your guru worship he worship lord krishna so Not he doesn't worship Lord Shiva. No, he doesn't. Okay, he is doesn't. he worthy of worship as Lord Krishna? Yes, he is. And then yes. he still worships Lord Krishna, Krishna because yes, because because he himself. So that's what we say. Because you yourself is a supreme soul. As long as as long as you don't realize it, you you don't realize it. So, so once you realize you this, it, when will, you realize it. When will Shiva realize that he is the supreme soul? He he's he's always realized. But you just said that all the three haven't real. They are still under Maya. No, they are under Maya. No, no, they are, are under no, Maya. No. You said it earlier. Now you are saying so, something else. So like they are mind. all under. So no, no, they are all under Maya. Yeah. Just to play a role, if they want no, to no, play a they, role. When you say under Maya, are they affected by the Maya? Like, so so their material body can be affected by the maya if they are material if they, if they if they come on this planet so even even shiva comes on this planet that his body material body can be affected by the maya but his soul cannot be affected by the maya no no but when you say he's affected by the maya it is obviously not his body it is his soul so so you you you, the soul, you your you, body so, is nothing so you 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 meant you meant by the attributes of maya by like calm, no, no, no. like by the last, talking, by when you say by Maya, last, by greed, but all 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 of those things, right? The greed, lust, and all yeah, of these the things. Negativity. No, they are not affected by these. No. Okay, so why does your God co commit incest then, if he's not affected by the negativity? Okay, just on that point, I'm going to be headed off. <laughs> yes. so, so, uh, sorry, sorry. Th this is what I'm saying. Yeah. This, this is this is what I'm saying, Hasim. You have to understand the symbolism of India before reading the Purana. That is it. As you have so, confused yourself. No, no, no. I have not look, confused. One, I am very one, clear. On one level, you told me so, so that their bodies one... are not affected by the Maya. So, but when they come, their bodies the are earth, not. They are affected. Sorry. Yeah, you said the souls are not affected by the Maya, but the bodies are affected by the Maya. So, me, I, 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 no, I, 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 am I told you? No, no. I, I told you that you if they come this. to this planet, they don't live on this planet. So that's why they're, 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 it they don't think. It doesn't matter. They have to be controlled in every of, of their mind and their souls. If they are so, not controlled, so why, they, why Brahma? Why them. Brahma? So for us, Brahma is aging every every uh, every kalpa. You know that, right? He's what about aging Shiva? every kalpa. Is he aging as well? Yes, he is aging as well. So all Vishnu your gods ages are aging, as well. Yeah? Okay, no problem. Vishnu, Vishnu as well ages. Let me ask you but this. But everybody, you... so, so, so here is the thing. Yeah. For everybody, for for everyone, the aging pattern is a different as well. So that's the time. That's the that, that's the different measure of time in Hinduism. You have to go very deep. 
to understand those things yeah. i am you not have... a scholar of hinduism Look, but in my know. way so, so 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 in my thing i will tell you one thing i believe in there is one supreme god right but you don't actually you don't and he he because can for you, he can that supreme god cannot do anything because he has no attributes so he cannot show you mercy a... he cannot reward someone he cannot punish anyone the guy has no mercy sorry no attributes because because we believe in law of karma nothing. we believe in law of karma our karma punishes us we don't believe that lord all being is is there to judge us punish us and reward us no and where did exactly. the law of karma come from it is the law of nature no where did it come from it's a law of nature you don't uh, you don't understand the question if you believe the law of karma is not a conscious entity so obviously the questions you need to ask is whether the law of karma itself made it itself self generated or something yeah, it's, else it's, gave rise it's, to it's it it's nature it's nature generated no no what it's is not nature? generated by by any 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 uh, any any being who's sitting at the top at the seventh what heaven and, and looking at you it, this is, is not at this is not we believe in it you believe nature generated the law we believe that my god what? is right now within me and speaking in uh, satya from within me satya. if he wants to speak and he is also within you satya you said the laws of nature is generated by nature what is nature the nature is god himself so god generated the karma because it's it's the law no god generated the karma because the karma is law yeah you you can say, i mean if you want to put it in that no, way no, i don't want put to put it in that way you tell that me way. you tell us what no because exactly if i slap you believe. what will you do no no you'll slap you me back us, satya you tell us exactly what you believe yeah the laws of karma yeah were they from god or were they independent of god independent of god or like we we don't think anything is independent of god okay everything is god so the karma is from god is that what you're saying are you saying the yeah. karma is god okay so make it easy say yeah. like, like that then instead of saying your karma nature, can be your god yeah because what you're doing is you played with words you said nature and all that just say god if your supreme god is the source of karma does he have control over karma he doesn't control anything so he doesn't have control over karma no he doesn't have control over your karma does he have control over any karma he doesn't have control over any being's karma did any he karma? You actually being you are god, you are independent of do, you are independent to do your own satya, karma satya listen. and based on your karma you get the result that's the satya. law that's his law satya the law that he's put there did he make that law no everything came from him bro so so if everything so, came from him then so, then it's his law you okay. can say that yeah if you want to say that Okay. Or you can say it's a law of nature because it, no, if, no, you, if you're killing somebody, nature, if it came from God, then it's God's law. So this law is operational because God put it there in place. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah. Right. So in so, this, so 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 he, hear me out. So for for you, if the God put it there, it means there is a separate being. Who's putting out separate thing for somebody and and being separate from something? No. We don't understand what you're saying. What we're saying no. is so so. When he, it comes to let me explain to you so you can come and yeah. see whether the understanding is correct or not. So you believe the laws that is operating in the universe, and one of them being the laws of karma. God put it there, and He could easily take this away, because He's the one. who is the source of this law and he can take this law away and put something else in place is that what you're saying see these questions that you're talking about that there is because this if he takes this law away then this universe will will not exist that's not the question if he is the source of law the implementer of the law the one who put the law in place If he wants to, he can change to a different law. He can take this law away. No, 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 no. He cannot, okay. because law so, itself so is, is 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 a reason for for us uh, us uh, for our, our existence. Okay. So he's basically not in control of the law. He is not over the law. He is incapable in your. He is the law. 
I mean, you can say that he is the law. No, but he, wait, wait. That would be an attribute. You said your God has no attributes. No, he is. So, so, so law is not that. He is the law. You can, you can, you can just count it as a noun. It's not a law. He is the law. What does a law mean to you? A set of rules, law. right? It's, it's not just a set of rules. What is it's, it? It's for, 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 our, our, for, for a very reason for us being existing at this moment and talking. What is the definition is, is of for, law for you? Sorry? What is the definition of the law for you? I mean, I haven't looked into the definition, but that's what I'm saying. You know, when you it's, use words, you should know the meaning, right? Yeah, so when, when I'm saying... When you're using the term law, yeah, what does it so mean for me, you? So for, for me, the definition of law for me is the reason for being us, uh, for, for being my reason for, for my existence. That's not law. Yeah. <laughs> that's not law. That's a it purpose. It is a nature's law. That's a it purpose is a nature's of law. existence. That's yeah, not it the is. law. My existence is a nature's... Uh, it, you know, just whether you exist or not, law. the law will exist, right? So what? It's not whether you exist, whether exist or, or not, not, the law yeah. will still exist. So, so you're talking about my body existence no, or you're talking, talking about, about my Atma's use, existence? You use the term law. Do you know what it means? Mm -hmm. No, there are there are there are there are material laws and there are there are spiritual laws. You're talking about uh, the the law for my body, material body, or you're talking about the the, the spiritual law, Any the law, law for my uh, look, for my you, atma. If you're using the term law, you should know what it means. No, I'm talking about that's what, which law for, when you use the atma, term law for my okay. atma, uh, which never dies, Satya, which is you, eternal. When you use the term law, yeah. Which, which law did you mean? I I meant the everything. Spiritual as well as the which uh, law which did I, you mean? Because you said there are two types of law. One is for the spiritual world. One is for the material world. Right? No, I I use the law. I use the law, yeah, which is the law of 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 this um, um this 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 uh what what do you say that? Sorry. Um, you lost yourself again, haven't you? This no, is no, it, man. This is like English is not my native language. So so Bro, that's why I, well I I'm just, you know, mashallah, I would say. Compared Sorry, to many, you're doing quite well in English. It's not the it's no not the English is a thinking. No, 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 no. It's, but but it's a cognition like, which is now. No, 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 no. So besides stretched. eight hours at my work, I I don't I don't uh, speak in English uh, in English, Your and English mostly I, I read no my books in in phone. Hindi and Sanskrit. So Your so English. I'm trying to work on Sanskrit. Okay, I'll tell you what. Sanskrit. What yeah. what would you use the term for law in Hindi? Okay, so <laughs> if your Hindi is that good, tell me. I, what term would okay. you use for law? See, um, <laughs> so you like in India as well now? No, 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 no. So I'm going to language? tell you. Maybe Punjabi. Okay, so, Hamare Sastro ko, like, Deko. We, we, no, no, we just, just give me the definition. Sorry, the, uh, the, the, term law, the law. There is one. Hindi. So, so there is. So, the, the, the law has three meanings in us, for us. Kanun. Bhoti Kanun, Adhyatmi Kanun, and Dhavi Kanun. Kanun is an Arabic that, term. You see, mashallah, these guys are using Arabic words now. So no, that's what that's that's what I'm saying. That's Urdu, by so, the way, it's Urdu actually, and Urdu yeah. comes from Arabic, so you use the same term. What is the term you use? Because you use the term law several times. Yeah, you don't even know what you will use it in Hindi. No, I said that. I I said that when when I meant it, when I'm I, when I meant it, I meant it as a uh, adhyatmik kanun, which is like the the conscious law. Okay, so when you talk, you're talking the about the law, karma. which is cause of our existence. Okay, you're talking about karma, right? Yeah. Okay. So you know you're saying your God doesn't do any actions at all. Doesn't yeah. do doesn't reward you, doesn't punish you. Yeah. Doesn't what is the function of your God? Let me ask you this. What is the what purpose is of your God? Why do we need your supreme God who who does nothing actually? So who says that you need God? Oh, Why you do you need so God? You're a Gnostic now. No, no, you don't, don't you don't need God. <laughs> you just but, said who needs God? <laughs> no, no, no. So, so, no, no, I said no which means that who needs God? Like, if you don't need God, you don't need God. That's why the, in India, the ev, ev, if if you talk about every sect, is 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 why so why why do you have not about others? I mean, do you need God or you don't need God? I just want to so make a I, point. So for me, I am point. I am so I am just, so just I, give for, me a for point, me. Man. Okay, so we when we say, look, we look for we, a God Satya, just to sure to become one with himself to find the ultimate reality. So Mansu wants to say something. Satya, yeah. just a quick point to make, um, just yeah. for you to reflect on. Yeah. Who needs God? Just think about it. Which religion has the most number of gods when they don't yeah. need God? It's Hinduism. The, the the religion that doesn't need God has no, the most no, number no. of so, gods. Still, you're not we, understanding that. No, no, so listen, you, that listen, let me finish my point. I want you to reflect on it. Yeah. The religion, you are saying you don't need God 
And yet, look, the people who say that, they have the most number of gods, hundreds and hundreds of gods, and yet you don't need God. It's, it's a contradictory stance. So that's why, okay, let me just turn the discussion around. I know it's been going on. Other people are waiting. Okay, okay Mansoor, no, 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 just give, wait, give wait. me one minute. No. Please. Wait. One second. Finish. Okay, you got one second. Go on. Okay. Finish. What Thank I you. meant no, no, by finish, who finish. meant God Look, is yeah, who God. need God. I gave you one second. It's gone. So okay. I'll continue oh. now. I, 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 I generously gave you one second. So what I'm mm. saying is, uh, please, br brothers, I mean, he asked for one second. I gave him one second. No, no, that's fine. What that's we, fine. You think it's laughable. It's, it's what fine. We're saying, yeah, what we're saying, Satya, is this. Look. Yeah. Have you considered seriously yeah. to understand Islam and the concept of God in Islam? Yeah. Have you ever thought about it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So why do we say in Islam, God yeah. is the most perfect being, the one who has no flaws, the one who is in control of everything, the one who is uh -huh. self-sufficient. Everything uh -huh. and everyone depends on him and uh -huh. he's totally independent of the, them and these things. Uh -huh. He's uh -huh. totally unique. He uh -huh. is independent and uh -huh. there's nothing like unto this God creator, the originator, mm -hmm. the sustainer of mm -hmm. this universe. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't this concept make mm -hmm. sense to you here? No, it is all good for me. Did I did I say that I'm against Islam? No, I didn't say that. I said, did, does it make sense to you here? Yeah. Good. If that makes sense to you here, can mm -hmm. there be can there be more than one of such a being? No. Good. So there can only be one being who mm -hmm. is the originator and mm -hmm. controller of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now compare this to Sanatan Dharma or mm -hmm. any other religions, any other ideologies mm -hmm. that you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. Does those belief system make any sense when they talk about everything is God or God is everything or God is part yeah. of something? Ab um, absolutely. Absolutely, how, because how that's what we sense? think. That God, everything is God, because nothing is beyond Him and nothing is uh, nothing is above Him. Yeah, but so everything I, is is His is, is, is not His control. That everything is is His and is Him. Yeah, is His is different than is His. Uh, is so him. both we we call it both. Why that? So that's so, so that's why you call it when 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 you call it. So that's why we call it like why? It's it's okay. So why 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 okay so if if you saying that why is, is that then that the, 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 then there's a question comes then then why is there's a separate entity what's the need of a separate entity then because there needs to be one supreme self-sustaining entity that is the originator of everything no what's the need so who created that so if the creation is the create is is, is is the work of a creator then where is the creator came from Do you what, you need to be what you're saying no, that's where the question comes from. I'm asking the question. That's yeah. where the questions come sure, from. Sure. Okay, let's just Please, deal with it. That's where the question Fine. comes from. But yeah, we I'm will a seeker. Answer. We will we will reply. Now, before I reply or any of our panelists reply to your question in inverted quotes, would you mind telling us what are the essential properties of a question? What makes a statement a question? A valid question. People can ask, like, for example, if I say, Satya, how fast does a cow fly? 30 miles per hour or 29 per miles per hour? Is Have I asked you uh, a question that you understood? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's start by answering my question. How fast does a cow yeah, fly? 29 mile per, mile per hour or 30 miles per hour? You tell me, I don't know the answer. I've never seen a uh, cow flying. That's not the question I asked. I didn't ask, does a cow fly? I asked. I don't you. know. I've never seen cow flying, so I don't know. I have never seen him flying. My, you might. So the reason why you were asking that question, so maybe this question has come to your mind. No. You may have. No. You may, may have found that question. Uh, no, no, that, no, that, uh, that. You, you may have seen but cow yeah, flying. It's, it's a not trick question. Let, let me give you a hint. It's a trick question. Yeah. Okay, it's no. not a, it's not a trick question per se. I mean, I'll tell you, it's really giving people to understand what actually a question is. Yeah. Just because you put a question mark at the end of a sentence, it doesn't make you it make it a valid question. So when I say how fast does a cow fly, 
And I gave you two possible answers. So you are only limited and restricted to those answers, not anything beyond. So you have to answer either it's 29 or 30. I haven't left a room for another third alternative. So how would you answer if that question was given in an exam? And I'm sure you've done lots of exams. Let's say this is an exam. Okay, so how fast does a cow fly? 29 miles per hour or 30 miles per hour? Okay, so 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 very 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 good. So when when you say then what's uh, wh wh when when I ask you the question, uh, are you about what's the need of God? What's, are you what's the way, of Satya? I yeah. can't let you go that easily. I want no. you to engage with me. So yeah, I asked you a question. Yeah, to try to get to the bottom of it. So yeah. how fast does a cow fly? Twenty nine. I have never seen a cow flying. No, I I've never seen cow flying. Okay. Question number one: How yeah. fast does a cow fly? Potential answer yeah. is like it's a multiple choice question. Yeah. A twenty nine yeah. miles per hour. B yeah. thirty miles per hour. Which yeah. one are you going to choose? Okay, good. I I would not choose any answer. I would just skip that question. Ah, uh, so basically, yeah. you are skipping that question for a reason, because yeah. I don't because know. Come on, man. You do know. So no. let's think a little bit more. Why I don't do you know. skip that question? I don't know. Because, I, I tell you, because yeah. this question is not a valid question. Yeah. And I'll tell you why it's not valid. A question to be valid, it mm -hmm. must have potential answers, number mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. It must be free from contradictions. Mm -hmm. These are the two essential qualities of any statement to be a question. So if a question mm -hmm. doesn't have any potential answers, it cannot be a question. Mm -hmm. If a question has inherent contradictions, it mm -hmm. cannot be a question. Just like mm -hmm. my question statement says, how fast does a cow fly? The cow mm -hmm. doesn't fly, as you said. Mm -hmm. The cow mm -hmm. doesn't fly. So I cannot make a question by mm -hmm. going something against what's inherently contradictory. Mm -hmm. I cannot mm -hmm. say, how fast does it fly? Mm -hmm. That's why it not, it's not going to be a valid, meaningful question. So mm -hmm. we call these statements mm -hmm. rhetorical statements. These are not mm -hmm. questions. These mm -hmm. are not paradoxes. These are rhetorical mm -hmm. statements which has no answer necessary. Likewise, when mm -hmm. you ask a question like, then who created this creator? It's a rhetorical mm -hmm. statement. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Think about it mm -hmm. now. So I've given you some hints. Now analyze your statement, your and which had a question mark at the end. Why isn't that a valid question instead a rhetorical statement? No, this is how you're perceiving it, and 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 you have all the right to perceive it the way you're perceiving it. I nope, have no, nope, nope, uh, I, I I have no uh, any, I have no judgment. Satya, to be very honest, right? I want you to when you have your, the right to question to that why why God can be a that. creation, so, so Satya, just if you have the right, then I I have the right to ask the question that Satya, why yes, that you, why you we need right a separate to, God then. You you have the you right, have, uh, have the right to ask meaningful questions. For the, for no, the Hindus, good. for the Hindus, it is a meaningful question. I'll tell you why. Because Brahma, who is a creator god, was actually created by Vishnu. Okay? Or sorry, by the Supreme God, Brahman, or, or, or Vishnu, if you want to call it. I think it's Vishnu. So this is where things break down, you know, because we come from the Brahmic faith. We obviously ask and a certain certain things as contradictory, as being non-question, as being illogical from our perspective. But from a Hindu perspective, in defense of Satya, I would say it makes sense to them. Somebody created the creator. But Satya, to answer you from our perspective, which is from the Islamic perspective, yes, we believe in one God who is uncreated and eternal. Now, if someone is uncreated and eternal, the question of who created him doesn't come into play. Do you agree? Doesn't make sense. Yeah. No. So, yeah. so that's so, so unlike so you Brahma, guys, so we don't that's have what a I'm God saying. who's created. No, 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 no. So, Hasim. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much for coming in my defense. Right. Yeah, but so, I haven't come to my I, my response back yet. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, because, because, just because somebody helped you, here's my rebuttal. No, 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 Let me, no, let me you haven't let me answer that. No, yet. no, you are, you just raised your question. No, no, and he just he came and he answered that. Okay, so let that, me reply to Hashim then. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's on. make it fun. Yeah. Okay, so in Hinduism, if you say the concept of creator can have a creator, now I'm going to ask who created that creator. 
And then sure. who created that creator? Who created the creator? And I'm going to go on until you tell me how is it possible to have a creator like Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva when you have an infinite regress of creators? How can you even have that creator? So Go that's on, why we believe, that. that's why we believe, what, what, what's your name, sir, again? Go ahead, uh, Munawar? Mansur. 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 Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Mansur Bhai. What I'm going to tell you is that that's why I was going to, uh, I was telling you guys that we, we, know, we, we know that the creation and creator is no different. It's the same. You know, I'm One being question. is, and, and that's, that, that has been given in our Vedas as well. But I you don't know that, Richard. With all due respect, I think here he, he's talking about the Atma now. I'm no, no, not no, asking you to tell me about your theology. I'm simply asking you when you have a series no. of creators. Our belief comes no, from please, theology. Please listen. When you when you have a concept in which creator can be created, then who created that creator? And a question goes on. It doesn't stop there. Who created that creator? Okay, the universe is a product of Brahma. Who created Brahma? Well, some, someone else. Well, who created that someone else who created that someone else? And I will go on until you tell me, how do you explain rationally, if you're a rationally oriented individual, how do you explain this Brahma's existence, Shiva's existence, or any other thing that you're saying, these are gods or God, when you have an infinite chain of creators with no ending? No. This will not be... In so, reality, Sat ever. Satya, look, I think, I think, look, in your defense, I'm going to rebut again what Mansur said because you need to understand from the Hindu perspective, brother Mansur, yeah, all the souls are eternal, including that God who's eternal. But then the, comes the question: it's not, it's not solve the problem, but basically, it's actually, you know, made the uh, made it more complicated now because he, even though he says that the identities are same, I can assure you the identities of all these different souls. Are different otherwise you will tell me that uh, uh what's that guy's name in uh, in the story in ramayana uh the the one they burn satya remind ravan. me of the... ravan 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 yeah so ravan is supposed to be the evil entity yes and ram is supposed to be the good entity now if you're going to tell me that raman and Ra uh, ram both have the same identity then it's still contradictory isn't it one is good one is evil no, no, no. So, ha Hasim, that's way, what I'm saying. Was I right in saying that all the souls no, no, are no, no. eternal? The, the problem is that that we we haven't, um, including I myself and 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 I said uh, you all the guys, souls are eternal. I did say that. Yes, According eternal. To your belief, all and souls are eternal. Eternal, but they are not different. When you're calling it eternal, they are one. So you're telling me the soul of Ram and the soul of uh, Ravan is the same? Yes. So why is one evil and the other one good? So that's so so that that's where the 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 logical concept of of when we say everything is one is that when we meant Not everything logical. is one is everything is driven by it's one source of good energy. And contradictory. It's one not, source of one. And that energy is a supreme energy that we call it Brahman. You can call it energy, but it's still contradictory. No, 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 no. One is good, that one is bad. No, no. Which I am saying that every being on this planet. That's what we're saying. That's when we call it soul. That atma. When you call it that atma. Yeah. Or soul, that atma has no attribute. What do you mean? Like the master, like so when, the master, the supreme, no, no, the saying, supreme. I'm not saying Hasim, when they are born. I'm not saying when they are born. When they, understand when they grow that. older, do they become good and evil or they don't? No, no. Hasim Bhai, yeah. understand that. Okay. When I'm calling it atma, I'm calling it, let, let's refer it to as a, as a energy A. Right? There is a paramatma which is energy B. So the A is a creation of energy B, right? And 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 so the, the B is created like C, D, E, B. So every creation is a creator, is, is a creator of uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, every creation is created by B. So no, now no, no, everything no. when calling, they dissolve. Are you we, now calling we, are you now calling Brahman a creator? You're giving uh, him an attribute. No, 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 no. So, 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 <laughs> you so, contradict no, no. yourself every time you explain. Do you not realize that? Be because there is okay. The pro the problem the, the problem are uh, the problem is that there is no word to define him. But so since you're okay, talking, use in, a Hindi term. Go on, use a Hindi term. I no, no, uh, no, no. I really love you will to still see contradict yourself. How you're calling a Nirakar? You're calling a Nirakar 
and give him an attribute of creation. Yeah, of we the call ability it, to create, that's what I'm, let's see, I'm not a scholar. Hashim Bhai, I'm not a scholar, I'm a regular guy. I, I I'm just not a scholar, to... really. I'm, I'm a regular. No, no, no. In fact, okay. Hinduism, I'm more regular in Hinduism. No, 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 no. I understand. So just go and, and, and like, if, if, if you really want to know about this, then I will call, go and just read the concept of, of Neti Neti. And then no. you'll understand you why it, I'm Satya? saying that. Have you read it? A little bit, a okay. little bit, and, a and little bit. Even after reading but, it, you're still contradicting yourself. No, you, no, no, no. I'm not contradicting myself. No That's what I'm saying. No, no, I'm not contradicting myself. No and now you're saying he created all the souls. A created so B. That, see, is, but, uh, sorry, he B has no attributes, a. means that every attributes is his attributes. Oh, every now we got, thing, wait, wait. Now you're saying you got multiple attributes. Not just multiple. Every uh, everything that uh, uh, attributes that that can exist is his his attributes. So he has attributes now, but he's also beyond that as well. You're full which of cannot be attributed. Do you not realize that? Which is beyond the attributes. No, you're which is full beyond of, the attributes. I'm not asking about does Brahman so that's have what attributes I meant. or not. So that's what I meant. So that's what I'm saying. You have to go and re read into the philosophy. Well, you have read it. There so are tell so me. many different. So then, so I'm not a scholar of those philosophies. You don't need to be a scholar. You need to at least know the basics. No, no, no. I don't does get Brahman that much of time to read. Or does but he not I have, have the basic understanding that yes, I believe in my God. I pray. I chant. And I believe in my Guru. Does he have Simple attributes? That's a question. Done. What? Sorry. Does Does Nirguna Brahman have attributes? He is he's beyond any attributes. You cannot you, you cannot bind him in with any so attributes. He, so when you say beyond attributes, that means he has attributes or he doesn't have any attributes, attributes that you that that you that you present with love is uh, he he he'll, he'll, he'll just he'll accept it. You know he's all accepting. So, Satya, you know, with all due respect, you yeah. go home. Go home and yeah. rewatch this video. Because oh, yeah. earlier, wait, wait, let me finish, man. Come on. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you insisted Brahman doesn't have any attributes. No, I now, said oh, he's. Let me finish. All... Let me make a statement without you interjecting. Okay. I'll let okay. you finish. Okay. You insisted that Brahman doesn't have attributes, and everybody here heard it. Okay. In fact, you can go and rewind this and you can watch it yourself. Now you're saying all the attributes in the world are his attributes. So, so uh, you know, Ram is his attribute, and so is the evil, who is uh, the, the the enemy of Ram, and Ravan is also his attribute. Am I right? So, good and evil, all all are his attributes now. So, Hitler is his attribute. You know, Stalin, Mussolini, all those dictators, you know, who kill millions of people, like Chairman Mao, who's an atheist. Yeah, all of those people are his attributes. Am I right? According to you. You see, this is where Islam differs from Hinduism. We don't have such contradictions like you. You know, Alhamdulillah, Allah is free from all the evil and all the bad and all the things that you can perceive as immoral. But in Hinduism, everything is his. Whether it's moral, immoral, good, evil, all of his, that's your God. Isn't that full of contradiction? Isn't that the real reason? Even though you claim to be the oldest religion, you're still stuck most of the time in India only. Your religion hasn't gone across the world. Like Islam, within 1400 years, we are a global religion. We are universal, alhamdulillah. Because of the lack of contradiction like in your faith. Because of the lack of understanding of what God is. One minute he has no attributes, next minute he has all the attributes. You know, one minute he is good, next minute he is good and evil both. I Make think we let um, Satya... Um... You know, take some break and and think and reflect on this and and let, make, let me come, answer come that back. briefly and then let me go. No, what we're saying is, what we're saying is, instead of answering briefly, we want you to deeply yeah, come reflect. back next time. Deeply reflect. Yeah. And I, I might not again. get a time, so just give yeah, me no, about a no, couple God minutes. God willing, God willing, God willing. Um, you know, you never know. That yeah, there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, there's make an opportunity time. for you to make think time. and reflect. So, well, giving Mansoor, why? It's not good it's to not... Let, let me go like that without answering what 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 uh, Hashim Bhai taught. Uh, so let me answer is, that. What give you're me, going give to me two minutes, minutes now, please. is going to Come be on. a very quick answer, isn't it? What we'd rather rather want is something no. a deep okay. let me tell you from you, not just quick answer. Something no, Mansoor Bhai. I don't need to defend myself. I know my path is right. I know my Brahma is right. I know what I am. So, so when I said Nirgun Nirakar, what I meant that, uh, and, and sorry uh, for all the audience, uh, that that English is not my native language. Uh, I'm not using this this as an excuse. But when I uh, when I tried to describe Nirgun and Nirakar, it, what I meant is that 
he is beyond any attributes no attributes can bind him and he doesn't need to be uh, to be bind uh, in you, any attributes can you clarify so that that's point? what i meant can you clarify so, the point? We are still confused. Does so, he have attributes? No attributes is, can bind him, but does he possess attributes? We cannot bind him any attributes, but no, no, with love, what, what at, so so that's what does I'm saying. He so possess with love, attributes. What does with, he with say? love? That's what? that's what I'm saying. With love, nope. You know, I'm as a bhakt, uh, as, as a devotee, tell as, me as a worshipper. So, so, here, here's Mansur Bhai. Let me answer that, right? Okay. So as, a, as, a, as a bhakt saying? or as, as a devotee or as, as a devotee of, mm -hmm. of, of, of your Lord, of your Supreme Being, you can give him any attribute and he'll accept no, it. That's what I'm, what I'm asking. Has that's he it. told you that he has attributes? No, he, you know, no, he has not told us that he has any attributes. He doesn't speak. Okay. Doesn't so basically, anything. so basically you believe in an entity that has not communicated with you or communicated with you? What has this God that you yes. believe in? Has yes. this God communicated with you? Yes, His so language of communication uh, is, not, uh, is not is not in, 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 in speech now, has he? He has in, attributes. No, it's 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 an emotion. <laughs> emotion. How can you speak? Yeah. emotion? you know what? How how we, can we let how you can, go? How we can you, you go. describe the God? Satya, sorry, we we'll let you go because um uh, people are actually having um yeah, yeah. So, Satya, come come like back this, next time. We come back again next time you, but, uh, with a deeper again. reflection. Yeah. It, there's nothing that you can imagine, Satya, that is free from attributes. Okay, whatever you're describing, it has attributes. So you can just say because some philosophically minded, you know, Sanatin Dharmi people have mentioned this kind of belief system but you have to make sense out of it if it doesn't make sense you know why are you believing in the first place ask yeah. anyone you know whatever you're describing it demonstrates that this entity does have attributes okay that's something that is obvious and you deny something obvious because of this theological bias and this is what we want to make you to reflect on and say look okay I disagree with my theology and my school and my gurukul, whatever, because it clearly, obviously, he has attributes. We can't say he's nirgun. He has attributes. The fact that you say he has no gun, his nirgun itself, if you think about it, is kind of an attribute. An attribute less is defining something. That's already a quality or you know, a, an attribute itself. Look, I mean, based on his logic, too, if everything is emotional, then my emotion is telling me that he's completely wrong and there's nothing he can do to argue about it, right? Emotion itself is an attribute, you know? Yeah, to, he to said be loving, love, to be, right? to be right. merciful, to be kind. All these are emotions. They themselves are attributes. I don't think they have wrapped their head around because the thing is, every time the Hindus bring in a philosophy, they build on another philosophy without actually solving it. So you just end up with multiple contradictory views and that's the reason within Hinduism they cannot even say Brahman is is the supreme god because none of them worship him none of them build a temple for him when I asked him is there a temple for Brahman he said no because he's not worship he cannot do anything he doesn't play a single role in your existence at all okay let's get to the next guest I think yeah. um, this young chap has been waiting for a while Sheldon okay. Cooper Hopefully, you have reflected um, since our last chat discussions here and there in the comment section. So, what questions do you have in mind? Otherwise, we have some questions for you. Sheldon, you are muted. Unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay, technical difficulties. Please come back. Uh, later, we'll keep you in the back chat, on the backstage. Okay, so those people who haven't verified in the back chat, First Human, Timosha, please do so before we bring you on. Um, I think Hakuna Matata has verified himself. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Lion King. Oh. Oh my day, Hello there. Hi there. Hello. You all Hi right? there. What should, we, what, should we, what shall we call you? Yes, call me Hakuna Matata. I think Brother Yemen... Uh, Calls me Pumba. Pumba. <laughs> yeah, <it's> Pumba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've met before, so he knows a, my name. That's a reference from Lion King, if you guys yeah. are wondering who that is. Yes, yes, oh. yes. Okay, which one do you prefer? Oh, I call me Hakuna Matata. I prefer Hakuna okay. Matata. No problem. What's on your mind today? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. It's a pleasure. Um, I've listened keenly to the discussions that you've been having 
And I think it all boils down to very few issues, I think. It's all about consciousness, knowledge, space and time. And when it's expressed within space and time, where does it come from? What is knowledge? What is space and time? And is God bound by those uh, attributes, knowledge, space and time? Okay, so now, before we answer any of those, uh, do you actually believe in God? Yes, I do believe in God, but my God is a bit controversial. Well, any controversial than the Hindu guy we had earlier? <laughs> yes, because my God is actually God, the God of science. Uh, so who preceded what? Did science oh, come first or did God come first, according to you? Of course, we are in search of this God through science, using the lenses of science. No, but what, what came kind of, first? What, when, you, when, when you say science, would you mind just explaining to us what you mean by science? Oh, I mean falsifiability, you know, verifiability of what we claim. And we also have uh, the observation part of it, you know, repeatability of what we claim and reliability, using the utility available uh, to um, assert certain it's assumptions. Use, it's can it's I carry on? Essentially, you're talking about the scientific method. Yeah, that's what uh, no, no, let, let's 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 hear the full definition um and yemeni can come in inshallah so go ahead hakuna matata just uh, so you were saying about verifiability you're talking about faulty viability you're talking about reliability and you're yes. talking about repeatability uh, carry on i've got and also, uh, and also uh, when we say when, when when i say reliability hmm. i'm saying is it accurate is it utilizable can we have a utility something that we can use on a daily basis or is it just a vague claim, a supernatural claim out there? But, in, okay, this is roughly me. But what I really wanted to speak about today is about what you've been discussing with other guests. It's mostly about the understanding of consciousness, space-time, and where it comes from. And also a surah in the Quran, which roughly points us towards that, that direction, then we can find out if that surah is contradictory. Okay, because before, we we go, before we well, go into this, because you've already put a framework of your thinking, it's a paradigm, and this paradigm seems to be, as uh, Brother Yemeni was talking about, pointing towards the scientific method, which is naturally what we called, you know, by its very nature, it's methodological naturalism it, right it could be ph philosophical as well or philosophical naturalism so basically yes. you've already limited your scope which is there is no supernatural and all we can get within this with this tool is what is within this methodology so you've already limited your search and created a bias okay so now this is pseudoscience Clearly, because when you have when you when you have a defective tool, you cannot get the right answer. If you're searching for an answer, you've limited the the scope of your tool and saying, "Oh, I will only use this tool." If I gave you a mirror, okay, imagine you know this knife does have a mirror, and I said, "Okay, tell me how does your back look like?" You know, you might have to try this and that. You can't because this is not adequate and sufficient tool to look at your back properly. You might need actually two mirrors or more. Okay. If I give you a mirror, which is broken, shattered, or very dusty, and I said, okay, see how you look like with clarity, you won't be able to because this tool is not adequate if there's already a limitation with, with, within the tool, embedded within tool. Okay. So when you bring scientism in to understand the reality, questions about consciousness, questions about space-time and so on, you've already got a defective tool. And that's why we disagree with you to engage with you further in answering any question in search of the truth because we do not agree with a defective tool to start with, to begin with. Now, Yemeni, nice. you're going to say something before before you reply. Yemeni, um, <laughs> go ahead, Yemeni. No, it was just, uh, as he was describing, I, I was going to say essentially what you said, that he's using the scientific method and that will not i mean you claim to believe in a god uh and it sort of circles back to the question that, you, that uh, i think hashim was asking 
um, what came first, God or science? Oh, right. right? No. So if you have Fun. so if you have the scientific method to try and explain God, it's a defective tool because search for God. Can, yeah, well, you can't search for the supernatural with a tool that only measures the natural world. Yeah, and no. anything metaphysical, science mm. is is redundant actually. Mm. I, I, do you do you mean that God is supernatural and you? As a religious person, you must no, use I said your natural. Yeah, I you said you must use, but listen you cannot the, escape. Listen to the point. Metaphysical. Okay. For example, do you believe you have a soul? Yes, I do. Is that but physical or metaphysical? It is metaphysical, but I'm coming there. And any of the scientific method me. which you which you mentioned earlier, yeah. can it verify your soul with that with any of those methods? If you allow me, just one minute. God, I'm allowing you. Okay. Um. As a person who's going to have a supernatural claim, like the Quran claims, you are also going to use your natural, natural intuition and human instinct experience and experimentation and common sense to, to figure out if the Quran is telling the truth. You cannot well, escape, you cannot escape the, the, the scientific method no, so, so when gonna, you are also gone. I can just just to stop you there. When it comes to our claim of the the miraculous nature of the Quran. What makes it a miracle is because any natural explanation is exhausted, right? So we cannot even when you look at all the natural possible natural explanations for how the Quran came to be in the form that it is and the language that it is, um, all the natural possibilities have been exhausted and cannot explain the Quran, hence making it a metaphysical or supernatural. Brother, brother Yemeni, uh, brother Yemeni, thing, look. Yeah? Read for me Surah 52, Ayat no, no, Hold on. Before that, look, I asked Surah you a simple question one. about your soul. Can you yes. use the scientific method or even common sense or whatever to come to an objective understanding of the soul? No, you can use the subjective to, to, assess, to assess the objective. But that's not scientific. Of course it is scientific. You're using the subjective to Give me one scientist who uses assess. subjective understanding as a scientific explanation of anything. Give me one scientist who does that. Who does? Sorry, say that again. Give me any any credible scientist who uses subjective understanding to come to a conclusion to make it an objective uh, understanding of anything in the world. I'm, I'm just going to, if you allow Brother Yemeni to read that for me. I'm no, going no, no. To Before do you do that, answer no, I'm going the question. To do that for you. Because you see, the reason, what I'm trying to make you understand I'll is that. I'll give you an example for that. Hakuna, just one second. Try to right. try to understand the point I'm making here, because it okay. looks like you missed the point. I know and you're yet, asking me. Can I can I repeat your question? You're yeah. asking me. Give me an example of someone that has used a subjective tool to come up with a, an objective answer. True. Yeah. And what's your answer to that? I'm trying. I was trying I, as Brother Yemeni. If Brother Yemeni reads that, I am going to sort of like then tell you, lead you there. To okay. exactly what the, the way, question you're asking. That question, that yeah. question which you just mentioned was a secondary question. Do you remember no, it's, my it's primary question? Up to you. No, yes, no, wait, wait. Yes. But do you remember my primary question? Yes. What the soul. The question? About the soul. What about the soul? You said the soul. I have do you ask me, do I have a soul? I said yes. Can I use the scientific method to measure the soul or to find out more about the soul? And what and what was your answer to that? My answer was we can use the sub a subjective, a subjective view. To come up with an, to assess an objective view, what tool so are you using? Okay. So now you're saying that tool is scientific. Is that what you're saying? They are the scientific using method. a subjective it's tool to, to assess. come to an understanding about assess. something as an okay. objective. Let, let, let's hear him. Okay. So now science is science already. Is all I got. No, no, Hakuna. Scientists yes. are not not aware unaware of this question about the soul. Okay, they know all about yeah. it. Yes. They know. So now, since you're going to use the scientific tools to understand to and to verify the soul, would, not you not the expect, would you not expect that scientists would have done that already? And they would have said, there you go, bingo, we've got no. the answer through science, and now we know the existence of the soul. I just have a feeling no, no, that he's I going didn't. to ask a question with a question from the Quran. Did no. you understand? No. Unless, no. And no. He, un unless and until he considers the Quran chance? as a scientific tool. Give yeah, me a chance, yeah. and then we can go on from okay, there. Okay. So as long as the question Hakuna, with the question. Yeah. So Hakuna, yeah. would we not have expected by now scientists using the scientific method as you are putting it forward 
to understand the soul. They should have already known whether the soul exists or not. You believe the soul exists, okay? So science, using the same tool that you are asking them to use, they would have already done so and got an answer. So what is the answer by the scientist on the existence of the soul? How come it's you got the answer and they failed? No, I did not say I have the answer. I said we are searching for it. Oh, but, so, you don't and have using, so what's and the basis of your belief for a soul then, if you're already searching for an answer? Yes, a belief is something, you accept something to be true without evidence. Oh, okay, so now we faith then, is that what it's saying? Uh -huh. So science then? is obviously, blind faith, blind faith, blind faith. it's not blind faith, it's scientific faith. How can, no. how can scientific be faith? Yeah. Of course, science is so faith. Listen, no, the science, is, science, science faith? method is based on, you've laid, you've laid it out yourself, right? Exactly. Right. It's, you told based, us a scientific it's based on observation, testing, yes. Yes. you know, so these are objective things. When you observe something, and is reliability? It, is it reliable? reliable? Yeah, is, is it? it reliable? So you're, what you've done is lay out a, an objective criteria and then said that it's a, that you're using subjectivity yeah. to recognize that there's a soul. To assess. To assess. Well, Look, I'm, we, we do not, we, Clium does not, uh, science does not claim absolute truth with capital T. They we have, sub, we have we subjective that. truths not with small t. Hence, are you, are you Islam, saying there's Islam, nothing objective? One minute, please. One minute, please. Are you, are you saying Islam, there's no objective truth? There is objective truth. Mathematics how can that is not be certain then? But mathematics is part of a scientific tool, which is an objective tool. Exactly. So, so you're so telling I'm me two plus two is, is not certain question? that the answer is four all the time. It could be something different. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> now that is a very very long process. If I was to try and explain to you, there is a big, there is a book. Yeah, there is a book you could read, which no, no, no. tries to if explain is, look, one plus one is not equal to. But, but do you believe? I'm not gonna but go do there. you believe that book? No. Exactly. So asking me to so read it. Then. You have to change the axioms. <laughs> it's all about the axioms. No, you can't you change. Ju you, look, look. Axiomatic yeah. things cannot just yes. be changed by Thank you. a book or by somebody's opinion. But they a book did is an do opinion, that. They did Unless do that. From God. They did do that, and they, they realized if you if you just play around with the axioms a little bit, like the explanation, like for instance. No, but you don't believe it. So what's the point of us going? No, no, that no, no. I was, I was trying to show you. I was trying to show you that you can use an objective tool within the scientific view. Yeah, with this, well, within the scientific uh, method, you can use an objective tool using your own subjective subjectivity. Okay. But by the way, to, let's, to, to let's go back to my first, you know, the first question I asked you is, yes. if you believed in God and you said yes. Yes. What is the name of your God? Well, my name. The, <laughs> Not your name, your God's okay. name. Okay, let's do you believe this. you're a God. I'm going to give you this answer. Go on. I'll give you this answer. If you oh. just answer one question for me. And oh, this is question more. with a question again. No, 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 no. You haven't even answered any question from me. So I, I have answered any, several questions from no. you. You can, you can watch you the stream. Answered. And you'll see. So, uh, no, tell me this. Look, it's a simple question. If you ask me what's the name of my God, I'll say Allah without hesitating. So okay. why are you hesitating if you're so certain about your God? Because I'm, I'll am i have to go quantum physics on you. I'll have to oh, go have quantum... To, in order to get the name... Yes. Have you Okay, so have you gone through the quantum physics? I don't know. Algebra, you know, trigonometry, whatever you want to go through. Have you come to the... Have you found the solution? We are looking... Look... Before, okay. before you go, okay. sorry I'll, to I'll interrupt. Be, I'll, I'll, let me go there. Sorry, if you sorry. Ask, I I'm apologize to interrupt and interject. It's very important. Um, well. um, what's your educational background on, on quantum physics and quantum mechanics? What level have you studied? Well, I would rather not say that, if you don't mind. Then we should not engage in quantum oh, mechanics. Okay. All right, if you are you. not willing to disclose yeah. your knowledge of quantum mechanics, to what level? Okay, I am, I, am, I, am, I am an amateur. Then there's no point in discussing okay, quantum mechanics with you. Quantum so because, next because next question I'm and next point, and then we'll get the next. Uh, okay. next yes. I'm well read. I'm well read. I'm um, well read. Not interested anymore. Right. Not you interested. should know the name okay. of your God, you know, if you're well read. Okay. It's my, the name of my God is Dark, ma is, dark the, Matter, oh, Quantum yeah, Vacuum. Yeah. And, 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 so your, and so your God energy. is a creation? No, he's not a creation. My God created your God. Tell me, tell me, <laughs> tell me how Dark Matter is a creation. You what do you claim mean? now that dark matter is a creation or dark energy is a creation. Okay, does dark matter exist? Yes. Have you seen it? It's it is testable, yes. How is it testable? We have seen, are, are you actually claiming that dark matter doesn't exist? No, I'm asking you. I'm not making I'm anything. telling you. It's there. It's it's 
it's in the universe. It's so it's testable. Is it, is it, it's been is it eternal? Dark matter. Yeah. Yes. It's eternal. Yeah. On what basis? Based on the fact that we cannot see anything else outside it. That doesn't and make there it is eternal. Just because you can't see something outside of it, it doesn't make it eternal. Okay, okay. Um, Ashim, I want to ask some series of questions. Hakuna, yes. what, are the, angels, what are the angels? What are the current question? Can I just uh, one ask second, one question? Hakuna, you are now yes. on the on, on on a on a on a defense in a way to explain your position. So, what are the models of eternal universes that you are familiar with, and uh, name some of them? No. Do you want us to go through the quantum physics for me to explain my God? No, no, you are an amateur there, so you don't need to go so, through but, because okay. you won't be able no, to. No, Give me some of the names of the models of eternal universe uh, models. Okay, Brother Mansu, can I ask yeah. you a question? Can no. I ask you a question? I no? want. I would like you to tell me the different models that exist in the scientific community. I do not know all about of them. eternal models of the universe. Go ahead. I do. I do not know all of them, and I don't have them in head at the moment. I have G to give me one. one my notes. Give me do one me model. My one model. One um, model. Okay. By the way, do you believe dark matter is matter or it's I, metaphysical? Actually, you're letting him it, go. It's I mean, not, no, no. I'm it's asking one asking. model. Okay, one model. Can't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one model. I'm just around about I'm about to explain to you one model. One of the models. No, no, not explain. Give me the name mm. of one model. And yeah. then the question will come come obviously, as you know, yeah. which yes, scientists yeah. propose that model. Go ahead, oh. without looking into Google. No, I'm not even looking. I'm I don't have my no. notes. No, problem. I don't have my notes. Okay, go ahead. Now, which model? Do you, do you want me to give you yeah, the model? I've been asking of... several times. I can't remember the name. Okay, fair enough. Next guest, please. Thank you. Sorry. He's a waffle, he's a troll. Interesting chap, anyway. I like he's to a have troll. Him. He's a troll, <laughs> wasting our time. I mean, well, people in the back chat are the, losing their brain brother, cells. Uh, brother so I'm going to bring the, this brother now, uh, Brother oh, Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. alaikum. How are you guys? Alhamdulillah. Sheldon can come. I just want to see what the brother's uh, wanting because okay, Sheldon, no yeah. his, uh, he had technical difficulties. Uh, hopefully he's cleared. How, How are you, brother? Guys doing? Good, good, good. How many brain cells did you lose in the last two conversations? Uh, it's hard to follow because it's just, there's no logic. So, Alhamdulillah, God uh, guided us to. I to saw you laughing truth. in the back chat when the Hindu guy was on. <laughs> uh, some of the stuff they say is just, yeah, uh, their definition it's, of it's God is It's interesting. It's good to have uh, some perception right. from a different angle, you know. Of course. And uh, Godwin is yeah. saying, uh, what a book of Kabir, like, like, like. Your God, make him bigger, like you know, enlarge him so that the concept of God has to dominate all the time, right? So it's like when he's saying there's another God created, it's just like even if this newer God defeats the existing God, then it doesn't make the new God a God because <laughs> he has been created. That's it's just, just, I think that's where the problem comes in English with the term God. It's like right. Prashtun, you know, who was here earlier? He said, you, it's, it's actually a, a disservice in Hinduism to use the term God. Because mm. that that doesn't apply to that can apply to many of their different categories of God. But anyway, let's uh, let's come back to yourself. I, I believe you came last time, and you are I don't know what Mansu calls as Quran rejector now. We oh, used to call yeah. you guys. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't realize. Um, uh, have you changed yeah, your yeah, mind he's, already? He's been, he's been no, 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 no. You know, we are, you know, the brothers are waiting there to give you shahada, brother. You know, no, no, have no, you changed no. your mind? I appreciate that. No, I am I am a hadith rejector. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the concept with uh, the, uh, the definition of God, I think the proper shahada would be there is no deity except the God. And they have many deities. And truthfully, there's only one God, the God that created the, the skies in the heaven or the skies in the land. That's God, right? So we're trying to understand God. So, okay, yes. So to our discussion. Yeah, uh, what's in your I, mind? Uh, well, I do believe that uh, the Quran is sufficient for guidance into what the religion is for as a human being. And I do believe that uh, a lot of people in the modern day have fell into a very similar trap to what the Jews and the Christians have been through with the books of Paul the Apostate and the Talmud, where they uh, where they added more concepts to the religion, which confuses people, and it caused more division where the Quran came to unite people. So I think the Hadith is very self-contradictory, and it contradicts the, hadith, uh, the Quran. Okay, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. In the Quran, Allah says, to Allah, to obey Allah. the people who are amongst us in authority. How do you obey them? 
Well, those people are among us and they're in front of us. And when they issue a command, you have to uh, obey. Do we find their commands in the Quran? No, those those are people are among us. So we can we can interact with them, just like how you can okay. interact with the messenger. So let's understand this principle. When Allah says, Allah wa Rasul wa ulil amri minkum. Mm -hmm. So the third categories of the, the class here, the people's, their obedience, how we follow them, their instructions, their teachings, their commands, their guidance is not in the Quran. Yeah? Right. But their but their teaching and what they're instructing us to do is not religious guidance. So they're hang not on. telling us religiously what to do. No, when Allah says obey them, okay. So whatever they say, it needs to be according in line with the Quran at least, right? Correct. Good. So but because it's not in the Quran, but we know it's external to the Quran. Correct. So when he says Atiullah wa Atiur Rasul. Mm -hmm. Obey the messenger. Mm -hmm. Where is his instructions? External or internal? Internal. So I understand your question. No, no, no. You, you don't understand my question. God. So when when the Quran says obey the people amongst you in authority, mm -hmm. you had no difficulty in accepting this is external to the Quran. And if I told you they're internal to the Quran, you'll find difficulty in explaining your position. You will not find their instructions in the Quran. You are happy to accept. Yes, they can have authority outside the Quran. So give me five such authoritative commands from the Prophet ﷺ, which are external to the Quran. Now, to answer your question, to us when God is saying obey God and obey the messenger, the Quran is obeying the messenger. God is much bigger than the Quran. Obeying God. Can you stop waffling, brother? I don't like waffling, waffling in my stream. Yes. So I said, give me five external commands, which are not Absolutely. in the Quran. Respectfully, I, I, I'm not going. I'm not aligning with what your definition is of atiyu rasul is atiyu commands outside of the Quran. To us, the Quran is the rasul. Why did you say? Rasul why did you say the people in amongst authority, among us, the people who are. In authority amongst us, why did you say they're external? Tell me. Because the people of the authority, those are not something that is uh, being discussed within the Quran. People Allah obey, commands them. Allah commands you to follow them. Muscle. Allah commands you people to follow them. One second, one second, one second. I, I understand your question very well, but I'm uh, trying no, to you define don't. to you my interpretations. That's, you that's don't understand. Works. That's why I'm trying to explain to you. So here is again. When Allah says obey Allah, we know Allah's words are the Quran. There's no, no doubt about Allah's it. Allah's words is bigger than that. That's my point. That's why you're not letting me speak. Wait, wait, wait. Allah's words are more than the Quran. That's what I'm saying. Is Allah's word the Quran at least? Allah's words are part of the Quran. They are in the Quran, correct. But those are the words that came Allah, out of the message. We agree. Wait, 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 wait. Allah's words are found in the no, Quran. We, brother, can, can I clarify my position? Are you, so you saying? Are you saying all of the Quran is not Allah's words? No, all of the Quran came from God. But can I clarify my position? No, no. Please? Can you? Can you? Can no? you answer you don't the want question? To clarify? Okay. Then. No, I want you to answer this question directly. I'm answering the question directly, Quran, which is: Is all of the Quran Allah's words? The Quran came from God. I didn't ask you where it's come from. It directly, the word of God. Directly, right? directly it's, means. I asked you a question: Are all the words of Quran from Allah's God, yes. words? From God, yes. No, I didn't ask you from. I never asked you a question about from. Um, if I ask you what's your name, don't say I like banana in my breakfast. Don't behave like others. You're claiming to be a Muslim. So, Khalil, question is direct. Speak. I will. You. I will. I will. The Torah, Only the if you Torah. don't waffle. The original Torah is that the word from God as well. Let me let me help Torah. you. Let me help yes you. Or no? We believe there are many words of Allah. Yep. Allah spoke the Torah. Allah spoke, right? To Musa okay. alayhi salam. So we believe okay. there are words of Allah additional to the Quran. So we Perfect. know that. So now, second, my question to you is, are all the words of Quran Allah's words? Mansoor, it's the exact same thing you said about the Torah. Okay? Answer so the question. The I just did. Last chance. Last chance. I'll Directly. Leave. If you don't want me to talk, if you don't want me to yeah. talk, it's the exact same thing as the, as leave, the Torah. Leave. That's what I'm saying. Before, I, before I say goodbye, you can leave. Go ahead. I appreciate it. Thanks for running. There you go. So I didn't have to um, let him go. He he went himself. So this is the problem with people who are Quran rejectors. They do not engage with you directly. Because this question about Atiullah wa Atiur Rasul wa Awlil Amri Minkum, 
you know, he understands clearly in his mindset that the commands and the guidance and the, you know, prohibitions and so on of the ulil amr, the people in authority among us, is not in the Quran. So he's happy to accept these are external to the Quran. So if you now say, okay, the Prophet ﷺ would also have commands and prohibitions, which will be, will be in line with the Quran, but they're not going to be in the Quran. Because the Quran is not the speech of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu That is what I was trying to establish. The Quran is fully, completely, wholly the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means to find the speech of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have to go external to the Quran. And I asked him to give five commands. But this is what exactly what he was avoiding. This is why he wanted to make it seem like, oh, because the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam relayed the Quran, transmitted the Quran, it's from him somehow. That's why the Quran even really, they need to really, you know, uh, come back to Islam, clearly. I mean, I would even say that, they, they, that their Iman is not complete, faulty, defective. And I'm not making any takfir here, but clearly they need to come back to Islam. As the Quran advises us. So if you want to come to Islam, you have to come to Islam wholeheartedly. And part of that is to accept the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which is external to the Quran, but in line with the Quran. Okay, yeah. so we'll bring back Sheldon, uh, who's been waiting. Samian, you've been verified. Uh, you can switch off the camera if you want. Sheldon, hopefully your camera, um, your, your microphone is working. Yeah. Yes, I, uh, sorry about... Uh, That's okay. That's okay. What's your name, mind, Sheldon? How are you, first of all? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Tell us what's in your mind today. Uh, just the um, the day of the Lord in um, Zechariah 14 says that uh, he will come and he will um, lay his in his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives and it will be split into two. Now, <clears throat> uh, what I like about this is is because in Acts, after Jesus is taken into heaven, uh, angels appear to the disciples and say. This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And this this was on uh, the Mount of Olives. So it's it basically, you know, it's uh, it shows that uh, Zechariah 14 is a prophecy of when Jesus returns. And according to you, who is Jesus in relation to God? Uh... His son. Okay. Is 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 Jesus being the son of God self-sufficient? Uh, elaborate, please. Okay. So if you have God who is self-sufficient and he has children, would they be self-sufficient? Um, like, would they be able to exist without God? Yeah, that's part of it being self-sufficient if you're existing without anyone else. So, yeah, no, I'd say no. Okay, so you have Jesus who is not God because he's not self-sufficient. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, in a way. Okay, so Jesus who is not God, so what is he then if he's not God? Uh, he's the son of God. No, he, he, he has a beginning. As you said, he, he was brought into existence by God. So he is what? Did God give part of him to make him? I mean, I will let this brothers, um, Miris and um, the Yemeni to take further. I mean, if he is not God and he was brought into existence, being dependent on God, what is he? The thing is, it's um, I always ask the question when, when the Christians ask uh, say that he's the son of God, in what capacity do you mean? Because... You're using a Jewish term that's been used throughout the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of the Bible is directed at a Jewish audience, um, mm -hmm. including the people who Jesus is preaching to. And he uses these Jewish terminologies. So when you're when you're saying, OK, Jesus is not God, which Alhamdulillah is a step forward. Um, what in what capacity are you saying he is the son of God? Um. Look, um, he's the he's the begotten son of God. What do you mean by begotten? 
Uh, well, like uh, the Book of John uh, puts it in John 1, he is the only son that came from the Father. So he's, he's the only son that, like, he's the only person that came directly from God, which is why he tells his disciples that he, he is not of this world. So are you saying that he's, uh, because begotten has a very specific connotation to it. Hmm. And in the Greek, that's exactly the connotation that is being used. Mm -hmm. Right. So in the Greek, the term begotten is actually in a physical sense. Hmm. Would you agree with the, what the Bible says? I'm sorry. So in John, for, so for example, in John 3, 16, right, when it speaks of him as being the only begotten son, right? Mm -hmm. The term begotten in the Greek, I forget what the Greek word is, but it means a biological begetting. Mm -hmm. So if you say he's begotten of God, you know, if you were to stick with the Greek, you would have to say that God um, physically acted in the creation of Jesus, not by uh, not by any supernatural supernatural means, which I know you believe that God didn't intervene f physically. However, He created him in the in the womb of Mary. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful in what we say about God and how He interacts and how He creates. So this is what we say to you, and 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 this is why the Quran mentions very clearly. In chapter 3 verse 59 that the similitude of uh, uh jesus is to adam he was created from dust and allah said to him be and he was and interestingly enough this is actually you know the the god's act of creation be and it is right kun for you kun is actually mentioned within the jewish literature okay. so do you think this is this is a better explanation or a, you know something that makes sense that for God to uh, to create Jesus, you know, who's not been created as as the other men, as other men, he has been created in a supernatural being, uh, in a sexual, in a supernatural way, um, in the womb of Mary. Would I agree with that? Yeah. Would you agree with that? Sure. Yeah. I guess I would. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know. And this is this is essentially what we believe about Jesus or Isa Alisa, that he is um, a righteous prophet, and he's mentioned as a prophet in the in the New Testament as well. Uh, um, well he's mentioned by by others, right? Yeah, he's mentioned by others as being a prophet, right? Um, so the people who were around him, who witnessed him, who walked with him, right, who believed in him, they believed him to be a prophet. Now the term "son of God." <laughs> They've always understood that the Jewish people who followed him, um, because there were Gentiles did not follow him uh, when he was still on earth. So the Jews were following him, and they when they referred to him as the Son of God, it was to say that he was close to God, a righteous man. Right? And and as you know, within the biblical literature in general, if you are very righteous, you could even be called a God. You can even be called Elohim. Like we see with Moses when he's been told that you are like Elo, uh, Elohim to uh, Pharaoh. And like in Psalms when uh, it says, um, uh, ye are gods, sons of the most high. Right. So, mm -hmm. but this all denotes people who are very righteous, who are very close to God. And likewise, we would say that that is the capacity in which um, the Jews would have, have referred to um uh, refer to Jesus. Does that make sense in the context of the history and the the way um, the term has been used throughout the Jewish belief? Oh yeah, yeah it makes sense. I, I know, you know, um, to uh, the Jews, the term "son of God" does not necessitate like an actual son of God. You know, like in uh, other beliefs, like a uh, Hercules or something. They exactly. really just, we refer to a man of that you know that that's righteous and stuff like uh david in psalm yeah. uh I, I forgot which psalm it is is uh called the i think psalm seven psalm seven well no psalm two verse seven. Oh yeah uh where he's called the uh the begotten. he's called the begotten if i'm not mistaken 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. He's called the begotten son of God. And we know he wasn't actually begotten by God. Of course. So, so even when even when you refer to John 1 uh, saying that he is the only son of God and John 3, 16 saying that he's the only begotten son of God, this is obviously not true because we have Psalm 2, 7 to state differently. Um so we have to look at the Bible holistically, and you've already agreed that it makes sense in the context of the biblical literature and the history and everything that Jesus cannot be God himself. And even in the capacity of being the son of God, he is a righteous servant and prophet. And this is what Islam has testified to, right? With mm -hmm. that reality that there is no God except Allah, you know? Um, uh, who Jesus referred to as Allah, who the Jews refer to as Eloh, um, among many names, of course. And that Jesus, peace be upon him, is a righteous man, is a prophet of God, is close to God, right? And he's one of the five, in, in Islam, of course, he is one of the five greatest prophets. And that his mother is a, a, a good woman. She's free from the allegations of the Jews that were uh, placed upon her when she bore Jesus, right? Mm. So the question for you is, if you believe this stuff, what's stopping you from accepting Islam? Yeah, I'm curious as well. Mm. Well, mainly because I still uh, like the, well, what the, uh, what Christianity teaches that, you know, Jesus came well, and laid down so, his life. All right. So the, so essentially the crucifixion, Right. That, that's what's that's what's holding you there. Right. So you started off this conversation with the preface of the prophecy of the Mount of Olives and stuff. Now, the ascension of Christ and the and the descent of Christ is within uh, Islamic theology as well. But of course, what what is difference between the difference between you and I is the crucifixion. You believe that he ascended, uh, sorry, rose from the dead and then ascended, whereas we say mm -hmm. he wasn't he was neither killed nor crucified. OK, hmm. now the question for me, instead of going into the history first and all that, the question for, for me would be or for you would be, we claim that the Quran is um, from God himself. Hmm. And therefore, when he says to us that Jesus was neither killed nor crucified, that would make him, of course, being the eternal, the all knowing, he would be the primary witness to the event. Who has never forgotten and who will know exactly what's happened right hmm. so when god is saying to you that jesus was neither killed nor crucified why would you uh, appeal to a scripture that doesn't claim to be from god himself and where the claiming of itself um differs from the I mean, in what way does the, the claim differ from gospel to gospel? Uh, the details. And oh, the, the theology details. And the theology with the, that, uh, the theological problems that arise from those details. So, for example, if I gave you, uh, did the curtain tear before or after his final breath? There is a, a significant theological difference because the, the curtain was there to be a barrier between the people and God, right? You couldn't go past that. If you, if you weren't a priest and you went if you weren't a priest in the temple and you went past the uh the barrier the curtain you could be killed struck down right um and hence why they had a bell attached to the priest's foot um as well so if the curtain tore prior to the last breath of of, of christ um then it, the, the crucifixion doesn't matter right because it doesn't do anything for your sins but if it happened afterwards then the crucifixion sort of has some uh you know meaning to it but as we as you and i have already agreed that christ himself cannot be god so the very concept of the crucifixion and its uh, salvific nature to be that god has died for our sins in of itself crumbles according to what you believe because christ himself is not god he's a righteous prophet oh. Yeah, so the, the thing about what I believe is uh, <clears throat> that, uh, you know, is, is obviously backed up from the scripture that I use, hmm. is that Jesus is God, but he was not God when he was on earth. Okay. So okay. That, the whole idea yeah. that, that God, 
know himself, you know. Yeah. But even yeah. if, even if you were going to say, all right, fine, God, you know, he was God from eternity past, but when he came to earth, he was no longer God. He was merely a man. Still, the crucifixion takes away that salvific nature, right? That sal the, the, the salvation, because now you have a being on the cross who died, without any divinity attached to him so god he has not died for your sin so even if we were to accept this theology of yours it couldn't happen it couldn't be salvific for you so the teaching that you are holding on to cannot work with your current theology but the thing is you know i understand that sometimes it's hard to separate yourself and you know from the theology that you've had for so long but you've already agreed that Christ cannot be God, right? From uh, in 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 any sense whatsoever, whether it's begotten, whether you know, whether it's the terminology of being the Son of God, there is no divinity attached to Him, right? And Christ Himself never taught to be divine at any stage in time, right? Well, I mean, he uses he uses the term "son of man" on himself. The, the Son of Man is a is a is a can only refer to a human being. Well, no, he's referring, when he uses it, he's referring to the Son of Man in the book of Daniel, which is the divine the book, term. Okay. Right, so the book of Daniel, right? Uh, yeah, many, before you go into that, I just yeah. I just want to, and I'm sorry to interrupt, I just want to ask him, because um, I don't want to change the subject, I have a curiosity as to what exactly attracts you to that idea of salvation, that, you know, God came down and, and died for you. Because it seems to me that, um, you know, you have a pretty strong affinity for that, for some reason or another oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so first off again i don't i don't believe that god came literally came down uh, and died for me but the reason why i um i hold on to it is because you know it's it's like what jesus said greater love hath no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends it's okay. an act of love but if there's no salvation attached to it is it really an act of love to lay it down yourself for someone else when there is no benefit for them I'm sorry. So, so it, it, you know, so you're saying, you know, you've quoted this uh, passage where you're saying, you know, there's no greater love than to lay down yourself for someone else. But if Christ laying down his life does not bring you any salvation whatsoever, where is the benefit for you? Well, why, well it does bring me salvation. Why do you say it well, doesn't? The, 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 cross, mm -hmm. the, the act on the cross is the concept of God himself taking a uh, taking sin upon himself not a human being right so yeah, when you that's a kind of concept isn't taught in the bible it's a concept made by people yeah but that's what the cross is is is, is. now the thing is the cross has no salvation attached to it whatsoever even uh, even biblically because christ yeah. did not teach when christ was being asked about salvation how to attain salvation how to attain forgiveness he never once uh cited the crucifixion as being that mean yeah we're trying to figure out bro because you said that you don't believe that jesus is god incarnate you believe that he's the son of god right mm -hmm. and you believe that he is divine because he is the son of god right yes okay so then you're you're saying that a divine being came in and sacrificed himself for the removal of your sin and and you're bridging that saying that it was the most noble act and you quoted the uh, passage that you quoted to lay down your life for your friends right sure well not tell me for if i'm not if i'm mistaken at some point in time because i'm still trying to figure out exactly where you're at with all of this so that way i'll know what question to ask next you know what i'm saying of course yeah no you're, you're a good man good to me okay so then um it, what yemeni is trying to tell you is and what i'm also trying to reinforce is that at no point in time did jesus say that he is going to take your sins on himself and at no point in time did he say that he is a divine being does that make sense Hmm. So when he claims himself to be the son of God, it's no different than being the son of man in in a, in a human being non-divine sense. 
He is trying to say that he is a, a godly person and not of a divine nature. So what we're trying to show you is that if you believe that it requires someone of a divine nature to get sacked on a cross, that actually never transpired is what we're trying to show you. Okay. So, well, uh, so this is the first thing I want to, uh, hang on, hang on. Never mind, continue. No, no, go ahead, bro. Yeah. If you have something that you want to elaborate on, feel free, dude. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> I kind of lost it. Okay. No, no worries, yeah. man. So it either, either it was a non-divine being that was sacrificed, which means that the whole absolution of sin would not happen. The absolvement of sin would not happen. And you just basically had, for lack of a better word, a murder committed. Or uh, that the actual crucifixion in the way that you understand it had never transpired. Does that make sense? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I, I got the, the thing I wanted to touch on is, okay. although, yes, Jesus claims to be the son of God and the Jewish audience of which he speaks to, you know, doesn't, uh, the people at that time wouldn't literally take it as a son of God, but Jesus does say things that differentiate him from everyone else that has claimed uh, to be a son of God. Okay. Can you give me an example of something that he says that differentiates him? Sure. And that would elevate him to that divine status? Sure. So when he's in, in John three, when he's talking to Nicodemus, he says that no one has gone into heaven except for the one that has come down from it. And he's referring to himself. This is um, a call to Proverbs. I think it's uh, Proverbs 30. Hang on. Let me try to find it. Now, is this John saying that Jesus said this? Yeah, it's not, uh, so it's quoting Jesus. Um, the issue here is that Satan has also descended from the heavens, mm -hmm. uh, according to the biblical literature. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> so it's it's quoting Proverbs 30, uh, verse 4. Do yes. Do you want me to read it? Um, go for it. I do have some notes on this, actually. All right, so it says, Who has gone up... To heaven and come down whose hands have gathered up the winds whose hand who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak who has established all the ends of the earth what is his name and what is the name of his son surely you know okay so then so so let's say for example if i while yemeni's looking up his notes while we have um a claim that prophet muhammad went to the heavens and we have the, that night's journey, right? How would, and, and we now don't take him as a form of any form of divine, right? Mm -hmm. what, how now is it all of a sudden that if somebody, are you saying that if somebody were to go to the heavens or come from the heavens, that now all of a sudden they're divine? No, I'm saying that Jesus is divine because he is calling himself the only one that has ever done that like written in the book of Proverbs. And again, in Proverbs 30, Jesus fulfills everything in, in verse four. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm just not seeing how, okay, so like if I were to tell you I'm divine and it's in the book of Morris, right. right? Like, I don't understand how you're, you're just accepting it for it to be you know, for face value. I just, I'm not seeing how you're, you're bridging that connection and just like, you know, to me, that's like blindly accepting something, right? Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Okay, so, um, oh, I don't know if I can share my screen. What's all, can, can I do that? Share screen. Where is it, where is it? Right. Can, um, can we, Put this up, inshallah. Uh, let me know when it's up. It's I up. see it. You can see it? Yeah. Right. So this is a presentation that I've made a couple of years ago, and it highlights what you were saying. So we, we see here, 
John 6, 41 to 42 on the right-hand side. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him and because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, it is, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? And we see it in John 3, 13. No one has ever gone into heaven except mm -hmm. the one who came from heaven, the son of man. Mm -hmm. So we, the, there is a, a, you know, Jewish literature, as we can see here on the Sanhedrin regarding this. But the son of man, according to the evidence that throughout the presentation, the son of man, because in the Aramaic, which is where we see it in Daniel, is referred to as uh, Ben Adam. Yeah. So it can only have a human connotation. Hence why it is not a divine being or person, which is why three verses later in 316 means that God so loved the world that he sent a non-divine being, right, to die for the sins of mankind. But oh, yeah, of course, okay. But yeah, right. I said so. No, but for, just let me finish, because Sorry. the thing is, this statement that no one has ever gone to heaven except the one who came from heaven, you got in Luke ch chapter 10, verse 18, where it says, I, I saw... Uh, Satan for fall like lightning from heaven. So Satan himself is, um, you know, has come, has descended from heaven as well. And you have it even in the pulpit commentary. The Lord's words here were prophetic rather than descriptive of what had taken place or was then taking place, right? So the the biblical commentators are understanding that this is not uh, being, it's not stating that Jesus actually came from heaven as a divine uh, being right that this was a prophetic thing right in essentially speaking about the point where um uh sorry i lost my trailer for i my i lost i lost the trailer thought my apologies okay. yeah and then you have it in um uh, Mark 4 verses uh, 11 to 13 the parables mentioned uh, do not point to Jesus as the son of man as shown isn't divine as uh, Trinitarians believe but you know because there's a lot here um, that I've covered on I also want to touch up on one more point too while you're collecting yourself um, you know you had said that laying down your life would be the most noble thing that you could do for a friend right yes the most loving thing the most loving thing right so like let's say if, if, but if if i were to do that for one of my friends um that doesn't elevate me to a divine status and now i know what you're probably thinking you're you're gonna say something to the extent of well there was other things that jesus kind of said or did that could potentially elevate him to that particular status right well yeah first i, I don't believe jesus being crucified makes him divine no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. You're uh, you're saying that the crucifixion had to have taken place in order for you attain to attain salvation, though, right? No. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's well, a. Yeah. If it's no, then you're you're not a Christian, right? I mean, it's, yes. Okay, so it's yeah, and you're firm on that, right? Like, I just want to get that kind of stamped in that you're pretty firm on that well uh, see, the thing is i'm not the most knowledgeable person and i'm always learning new things uh, the more i look into things I so I'm not, I'm not firm on i'm not firm 100 percent on anything that i believe because that's you know, fair the only reason why i ask you and i appreciate your honesty i uh, really appreciate the sincerity as well the only reason why i ask you is because you've chosen to identify as a christian right Yes, but I, I don't believe uh, things that common Christians believe, like the Trinity. So, Right. So are you a Unitarian? So meaning you believe that there's only one deity worthy of worship? Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Okay. And now do you believe that that deity, again, just trying to iron it out, had sent or, or had any type of offspring? Well, the thing is, I wouldn't really like call jesus like offspring of god more so like a, a part of him you know okay so um so now what's happening is you're encroaching on a heresy which is called partialism mm -hmm. um and again that's just to educate you so that means that you you you're not necessarily like a mainstream christian type thing you're now running into 
um, some new innovation slash heretical stance, right? Um, when you say that there that Jesus is a part of him, what kind of comes to mind? Like what makes him a part of him? Well, I guess uh, the main two things that uh, would support that being is like, you know, he's called the, uh, the word of God. And he's, he said that he is the, or, and it's written in the book of John that he is the only son that came from God. Yeah. Let's, let's assume that I never picked up a Bible and you never picked up a Bible, right? You just, you, you heard this story of this man that, or this being, right. That was miraculously born. And how would you now associate or link that to being a part of God? Well, I mean, if you just hear about a person being miraculously born without any extra context or anything of the such, it'd be, be a pretty wide stretch to come to the conclusion that he's in any way related to God. Right. So uh, you would just kind of think of it as a wonder of God, right? Like a, a very wondrous thing that has happened in the world. Well, that depends because you said if I never picked up a Bible, um, thing, if I never picked up a Bible, then I would have never even believed in God in the first place. The thing so is, think of it as children, a miraculous thing. Children, we touched on, we touched on uh, so, sorry, Marius, to interrupt. Uh, no, it's quite all right. Because um, we, we were touching on John uh, 3 and, you know, you said that what we've made, what we said to you makes sense that God is God and Jesus is, you know, is a human being and stuff. But you, you sort of held on to the crucifixion. Now, John three, when we're looking at sixteen, it actually says that, you know, uh, that whoever so who uh, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, this is in belief in Jesus as as you know, the Son of Man. You know, or the Son of God, the the prophets, as the people believes in Him, right? I I would rather just say it's belief in Him. Put your face. Yeah, in but him. in what capacity? Again, belief in Him in well, what capacity? Because I can't really say the capacity because right, capacity because when you look at when yeah. you look at the when you look at His mission, and when you look at what the people have been receiving from Him, what they've been saying about Him, they've received Him in the capacity of a prophet as a righteous man, as the son of God and the son of man, right? These are the terms they, they would use to him or the son of David, right? They would never refer to him as, as God, right? And, he, and this is reinforced because when we flip to the next chapter, chapter 4, verses 19 to 26, um, uh, Jesus is speaking to the Samaritan woman, right? And what does he wow. testify to her? He says to her, you do not know what you, what you, uh, who you worship, but we know who we worship, and that is the Father. Right, I'll, I'll read the passage for you. Let me just bring it up. Um, chapter 4, verses 19, uh, 19 to 26, right? So um, it says, uh, Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus, a woman. Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and, and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. So notice Jesus, this is coming from Jesus, and he's being very explicit here that the only person, sorry, the only deity uh, that is to be worshipped is who they have recognized being the Father, right? God Almighty. And mm -hmm. those are the only worshippers that God seeks. Those are the ones that only worship him, not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit, just the Father. Um and he said there will come a time where they will not worship on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Right. So in a, and he continues, God is his spirit and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I, I am he. So Jesus is now identifying uh, himself as the Messiah, not as the not as God. Um not in divine in any way, the Messiah, who the Jews 
expected to be a human being right now you can we can go into whether he's messiah ben yusuf or messiah ben david that's another story but regardless whether you take him as messiah ben yusuf or messiah ben david both are human beings never divine mm -hmm. so this is the testimony this is the testimony of jesus so when we call you to islam and mm -hmm. say to you believe that allah who is referred to as the father in the bible is the only uh, deity worthy of worship we are reiterating what jesus has said when mm -hmm. we say to you believe and accept that um uh, jesus peace be upon him is the prophet of god and the messiah this is what the samaritan woman claimed about him being a prophet and he testified being the messiah all right mm -hmm. this is it's not a far cry maurice you were going to say something didn't you? Yeah, Sheldon, I was going to ask you just very briefly, how much about Islam do you actually know? Well, you know, I um, I look into it as like a little bit of like a side thing, but I do know, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know what Islam fully encompasses, but from my knowledge, I would say I have a pretty good idea of it. Okay, so let's say if I were just to give you a side by side, and if you are approaching both religions um, without any formal knowledge or any, you know, haven't picked up a single book. So on one side, on the Christian side, um, I, I'm going to tell you that there is a deity that was uh, incarnated in the world. And this deity um, uh, was basically killed by his creation in order to absolve the sins of the very creation that he created. So in short, um, you can think of it as uh, God uh, sent God uh, to kill God in order to please God, okay? Um, and that's your that's your path to salvation, okay? Mm -hmm. On the on the other side, uh, the Islamic narrative is that there's only one deity worthy of worship who's self-sustaining, self-sufficient, uh, is in need of no one or no thing. He has the capacity to forgive your sins at will without the need for payment. Um, and all that he's asking for you to do is to approach him with sincerity. Okay. On the Christian side, you have a complete denial of um, messengers that God had sent, mainly being Prophet Muhammad Sallam. On the Islamic side, you have a complete acceptance of every single messenger with the um, uh, knowledge in the Quran that was shared with us that all of them were Muslims and what a Muslim is is just to be a submitter an active submitter to this one deity worthy of worship of course so um, if I were just to give you those two comparisons logically speaking and and also just through basic reflection which one would sound more appropriate to you well, obviously, being as I'm a human, uh, like most humans, I am drawn to symbolism. So I would obviously aim and uh, look towards Islam more. Right. And that is, you know, um, ironically, I was uh, reading the Quran. I think it was last morning. Um, I was also reading it this morning, alhamdulillah. But uh, last morning, I came across a verse, and I think this was in Surah al -Rum. It was either in Surah al-Rum or Surah an kabut which is the 29th and 30th chapter of the Quran. And it says that the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the belief in a deity is innate, right? So you have an innate disposition to go towards this divine being. And what we're proposing is a path that is not controversial, not um, contradicting, that makes complete and absolute sense, offers you a game plan in life in order to uh, earn the mercy of this deity and ultimately enter into paradise uh, and for you to be held accountable for your own actions and your own deeds uh, going forward. So uh, I would like to invite you to accept Islam for those just fundamental reasons alone. The things that we have in common with Christianity are things like the belief of an afterlife. We have the commonality of belief in angels, uh, belief in messengers, belief in a message, 
being sent down, belief in a, a divine deity, right? So somewhere along the line of the invention of Christianity by people and more, more predominantly by organizations, they went astray for reasons that were just their own. Oh, and what course. I mean by that is if you were just to read the Bible and if you paid attention to what Jesus actually says, he himself claims that he has a God and he himself sure. worships that God. It wasn't until external organizations, mainly the councils, predominantly the Council of Nicaea in 325, that actually had an argument with two opposing sides in order to determine what was doctrine and what was not, what was dogma and what was not. So I know that you're not a Trinitarian, but at one point in time, Christianity was just a two divine uh, uh, person religion. And that was in 325, where they just labeled the father and the son as being divine, and there was no Holy Spirit at the time. And then later, their doctrine evolved. So what I'm trying to kind of illustrate to you is that you either have a choice of something that is from the beginning of time unchanged, meaning there was always a belief in one deity with no partner, right? Course. And then you have something on the other end of the spectrum, which was factually changed, and it was done so through an organization that determined what is canonical and what is not, which means the very Bible that you are reading, not only is it a copy of a copy, but even the first copy that went out into mass production went through such a ridiculous filtration process in order to for, uh, establish and reinforce the doctrine that Christianity believes in. And to me, I would encourage you to consider that as a great risk because now you are not placing your salvation in God. You are placing your salvation in men that have clearly and, and unequivocally manipulated and altered the word of God. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard this before. I feel, I feel where you're coming from. Yeah, and I, if, if you don't see that as a red flag or as a form of danger, then that's not okay. And if I did not bring that to your attention, um, that wouldn't be okay. So just recognize that every single one of us here, including yourself, wants the things that's best for you, and we have no skin in the game apart from pleasing that deity uh, that is worthy of worship, which we believe to be God, the only God, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't really, I, I don't want to bore you with, you know, some crazy lecture or this, that, and, and I hold the position that the Bible itself is completely unreliable simply because we're going off of those copies from copies. And I would encourage you to come over to the fold of Islam, which Truth be told, man, I've seen you around quite a bit, and I think you fundamentally are a Muslim. I just think you haven't professed it yet. The, the reason why I say you're for sure not a Christian is because everything that you said even just today alone would take you out of the fold of Christianity, guaranteed. And they would try to reel you back and try to um, say, no, you have to believe in, in the Trinity and you have to do this and you have to do that when you yourself know in your heart that it's not true. So you actually align more with Islam without even knowing uh, things to a great detail. And this is the promise within the Quran. This is that intrinsic, that fitrah, that nature that, that to worship that one deity. Now, I'm not telling you, you, you know, hey, you have to take your shahada today, although I would love for you to. Uh, everybody is on their own journey and it has to be solid in your heart that this is exactly what you believe first before you profess it with your limbs. But what I would encourage you to do is to actually pick up a copy of the Quran if you haven't done so already, which I, I think you may have a copy. Um, I'm happy to mail one out to you if you need one. But um, I think you're pretty much right there, bro. Um, and I, I'm not really quite sure what's holding you back unless you open up to us exactly what is preventing you from accepting Islam 
if it's something that's emotional, such as, you know, I really like the idea of uh, Jesus dying away or passing away from my sins uh, because that's a very noble act. I would encourage you to really reflect on what it means to be noble back, because if this is someone that um, you truly love and respect, and there is a way, meaning the true way, where somebody would not have to pass away for your sins, yet you could just absolve them through forgiveness, and you have a deity that is capable of doing that, then you you really got to kind of sit with yourself and say you know not only does this make more sense but i have to let go of my emotional attachment to whatever concept i really feel comfortable with so let me give you a um, and I'll, I'll kind of finish with this and let the other brothers take over but let's say for example um that and and this is not the case but let's say for example that the true religion in the world said there is no afterlife and we have proof that god spoke to us saying there is no afterlife you're just going to live this life that's it right now that again is not the case but if it if that was the truth i would have to believe it i would have to believe it because i would again follow my own faculties of reason to determine is this message in fact from God and did he actually say this? I would use all of my reasoning faculties and everything given to me, but that's his decree, right? If it does turn out to be true, then that is his decree. What I'm trying to get at with that is if you're so stuck on something that is untrue, which is the crucifixion being your salvation and you're emotionally drawn to it, it's not going to benefit you in any way, shape or form, bro. And I just don't want that. I don't want your efforts to go to waste because I see you as such a sincere person. So I'm just going to end with that, bro. And uh, I make draw that a lost panat that I continues to guide you and all of us, man. So, um, you know, if the other brothers want to jump in here at any point, feel free. But the thing is, in, in the new year, inshallah, at some point, I will be doing a series of streams on the crucifixion in of itself because I've always stated to Christians that the bible rejects crucifixion despite explicitly saying it's happened he actually admits to the fact that it couldn't have happened despite saying it has happened uh because of the prophecies the um the, just the theology within the bible of, in of itself but that's for the new year inshallah but if you are looking you, uh, just could you could you you know maybe elaborate on that just just so, like, so if i give you an example uh jesus like uh, Okay. No, so for example, you know, so for example, Jesus uh, mentions um, that what do you call it when he's uh, in Matthew four uh, when he's speaking to Satan. Um, Satan challenges him and quotes uh, one of the Psalms. If, uh, can't remember Psalms ninety one, Psalm ninety one, right? Psalm ninety one. And what do you call it? He says to Jesus that um, oh, what do you call it? It doesn't matter if you. Essentially, it doesn't matter if you throw yourself, you know, the angels will save you because it's prophesied in Psalm 91 that not even, uh, you know, that the Messiah will not essentially will not be hurt even with a stone. Right. Even if you strike your foot with a stone or something, the angels will descend and, and protect you. Something along the lines of that. I don't know. Like, Let me see. Yeah. yeah. No, see, so, the problem with that, though, is I, I've, I've refuted this argument a couple of times. Is Psalm 91 is not actually a prophecy about Jesus. And the, uh, no. I'll, I'll give a couple of reasons. First off, the first word of Psalm 91 is whoever. So that means the entirety of the psalm is not speaking about a singular person. Second, say, Satan is a liar, and he is the only one to ever point to the fact that Psalm 91 could be speaking about Jesus. And third, uh, Psalm 91 in a way could to, could be uh, could could be about Jesus in a way, because if you look at the Son of Man from a or the Son of God from a Jewish way of viewing it, it means uh you know a well revered person, someone that you know like is is well with God. Now the whole point of Psalm ninety one is to show how well protected the people who find shelter in God will be. So if Jesus really was you know. 
um, a great follower of God, then yes, in a way, Psalm 91 would apply to him. The things right. written in Psalm 91 but would the, apply to him. But the, but the, but the, the Yemeni and God. Sheldon, um, so to interject here, um, oh. I would like to leave this back and forth on this subject matter for the new year when you're going to do yeah, your streams course. and you're going to talk yeah. about it, inshallah. But what I want to ask before we let Sheldon go and reflect on this, unless, um, because from, from it becomes obvious that he's not ready to, to embrace the the new path of Islam yet, um, but what I would request Sheldon is to deeply reflect, deeply reflect on what Brother Muris has said. I mean, he has said some profound words, and I mean, you've been listening, and I've been listening, and I think it's very important that you really give a serious thought what he has said and assess yourself where you are in your position how much do you agree and how much do you disagree if you disagree that's fine if you agree that's fine but what we are saying is you want to have to be in a position where the truth leads you so remember when we're talking about journey to accept the truth is having that intentional sincerity where we would be ready to accept it wherever it leads us to so if Islam is where it's leading you to, just be ready for it. You know, don't make into an obstacle. You know what Brother Morris is saying again and again. Don't make into an obstacle. You know, to prevent you from accepting what the truth is there. If the truth is there, accept it. Look, if the truth was in nothingism, if there was such a word where there's nothing, right? We should be ready for it. We should feel feel that okay, this is the most sincerest in in people can do with their integrity intact. And this is what we're requesting you to do. You've heard the explanations in terms of Islam, what we believe, our relationship with other religious ideas and so on. We would just ask you kindly to just be sincerely reflecting. And after your deep reflection, you make sure that you're choosing the right path. No one's going to force you on this. Remember, right. belief in your heart needs to be one of submission by your own self. It cannot be forced by anyone. It needs to be internalized by your own submission and surrender to the truth. And when we say the ultimate submission and surrender, of course, is God, who's the source of all truth. This is what our aim and objective is. So, you know, what whatever we've said, just think about it, okay? Wake up in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, when no one is there listening to you, no one's there to trouble you, no one's there to distract you. Okay. Just in that time, just seriously give it a think and look about it. You know, think about it. The ideas and the beliefs of Christianity and prior to that of Judaism and prior to that with other religious belief system and where are things that make sense to you in terms of the existence of the creator, how many there can be in terms of the absoluteness of the creator, the self-sufficiency and the independence of the creator. If you think about like this nature, you will see there's only one option left. And this is what we want you to do independently by your own free will. So Sheldon, it's been a pleasure having you here. Okay. Um, I'm sure you've enjoyed the discussion with our panelists, uh, Yemeni and Brother Muris. Um, do come back again. Let us know Tell us uh, when you come back how it went, how you reflected, and we will take it from there. Okay. Can, the one, the one can, next thing I just want to say is every day I, I do see myself coming closer to uh, Islam. So, thank you. Um, and like I said, if you need a copy of the Quran or anything, or if you want to talk in private, I'm happy to chat with you at any time, bro. Anytime. Okay. We'll let you go. You thank take you. care. You know, you be too. good. Look after yourself and your mind and the intellect, because this is very important in your journey. Okay? Take care. You as well. See you, Sheldon. So. Okay, you can bring Sami in next, um, Hashim. Um, I'll be back shortly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's an entrance, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So the entrance or an exit? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. <laughs> no, mate. Sammy, are you ready or you want to come back later? 
Yeah, yeah, I got you. Okay, good. I've been waiting, and, and, and now I'm writing. I'm still here. Cool. I was just like, yeah. Okay, so what's up? I mean, that's why I'm with Lakeham. Oh, I'm All right. Uh, yeah, so we've been talking about Yashua for a while. And the soda and the Tanakh. So I guess I could just go ahead and ask you something about that. Um, thank you. So there's that verse. I don't know what verse it is, but Yahshua is supposed to be like in the Quran. He's going to come back and just whatever it means exactly, it's going to be knowledge of the hour. Um, and then there's a verse that says in the Quran, like, don't follow things that are not specified in this book. And that's not specified. And then it goes on after that, that the, uh, after Prophet Ahmed, when they took over, they changed that um, back to basically what Paul wrote and everyone else. They said, oh, well, no, we have the specifications. It didn't come directly from all law. Uh, to any of our messengers in the criteria, like the Quran, like as the end of it, the final criteria. So there's a contradiction. So you guys want to tell me about that? I, I didn't, the, I didn't, I didn't, that's, that's yeah, I didn't quite catch what he said either. <clears throat> Can you try, um, try turning off your video, bro? Because there's a pretty right. big delay you're talking. And then see oh, if okay. you can get, yeah. Maybe if you get another spot, a little bit of a better spot with cleaner Wi-Fi or something, maybe. All right. So basically, in the Quran, there's the verse, Yahshua will be knowledge of the hour. And Chapter also in the Quran. 4361. Okay. Sorry, who didn't know the hour according to what he just said there, Simeon? Yeah, it would be, I guess, you know, Yahshua is going to be knowledge of the hour. Like, I'm just saying the verse. Did you see Yahshua? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's referring to him as oh, Yahshua. Um, ah, I see, okay. So do you read the Quran in English, in Arabic, or in Hebrew? In, in English. So in your English translation, it actually says... Yeshua. Oh uh, no, no. It says why, Jesus. why would he say Yeshua then? I don't understand. Okay, anyway, so yeah, Isa didn't know the hour, and what? So where is the contradiction? No, no, no. The the, the verse says, "Wa'inhu So oh, he I see. Only is, Allah has the, the hour. No, no, no. So he is a sign of the hour or knowledge of the hour. Okay. So where is the contradiction? Uh, so you remember that verse that way, Hisham? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you're sure that you remember, yeah. All right. So what's the second verse? Because you um, said there were two verses. You cited um, the first one, three, seven. which is. Sorry. Three seven. Three seven. Yeah. Three seven. All right. Let me bring that one up. I don't know. What I just can't remember the first one, first verse. I actually don't know the number of it. Is it 61 or something? What did you say that the verse 7 states? Uh, are you sure that is the verse you're verse referring to? Chapter 3, verse 7. Yeah, are, you sure, are you sure that's the verse you're referring to? Yeah, because that's... That's nothing to do with Isa yeah. salam. Of course, it does. that's that chapter. The these titles, family of Imran, anyway. Yeah, that's not. But uh, okay, so yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Okay, so uh, what is the contradiction? So chapter. What is the? So that was forty three sixty one. Who's talking? Who, who is that talking? Me. He said he keeps interrupting. I, I don't know who that is. Let me just know your name. Yemeni. Mahatu? Yemeni? Oh, hi. Yeah. Okay, so you, you just... 
you just like if one of you you or one of you guys can you tell me the, the other verse of that is said he'll be knowledge what, what chapter is that and what verse yeah that's that's what i was trying to say to you it's chapter 43 verse 61 Oh, 4361. Yeah. So basically in 4361, you have to connect that to 37. Why? What is the point you're trying to make? Let's get to that first. Are you saying there's a contradiction oh, or something right. else? So, yeah. Yeah. So what exactly is a contradiction? Yeah, I'm saying there's a contradiction. No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a Muslim. I believe in the whole Quran. I'm saying there's a contradiction in the Quran and the Hadith is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, regardless of the that, same contradiction. If, you can just, if you can just specify the contradiction, maybe we can get to it quicker. Right. So the contradiction is uh, it's just, they're supposed to follow things that are specific in the Quran. That's chapter three seven. Like, can you can you get that? Like, um, but that's I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. But you get what I'm saying? No, but that's not what it no, no says. Bad. Okay, well, tell me what it says in Arabic, please, if you will. Since I'm saying I'm Muslim, I can share that with you. You don't need to. You don't well, need well, what to. What does it say then? Because I know what it says in English. It'd be right, easy so if you tell us what the contradiction is, so we can get to the bottom of it. Because unless and until yeah, you make the point from the what's written, in it. yeah, yeah, I already did make the point earlier, but I'll try. Well, you just again. told us to read two different passages, uh, so but you haven't told us what your. I know what point I said. Is. Hey, hey, I know what I said. Oh, yeah, I remember exactly what I said. Remember, you had the so day the thing is, though, is video, and we pulled up lot. So just give us the cur Be charitable with us. As a fellow brother in Islam, and give us whatever the contradiction, the meaning, or wherever you're hung up on, so we could do a better job of being of service. Does yeah, that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So don't interrupt me anymore, so I can do it, please. Please. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So chapter forty-three sixty-one. That's the thing. Yes. Okay. The contradiction is somewhere in the hadith. And in the Basora, I mean, sorry, the, the gospel, because you don't want to use the Hebrew name. So the gospel and the Quran and the Hadith. Now, listen, please. Like, I'm not I, I, I know. I know what I'm saying. Please, like, just understand. OK, it's very simple. Now, in the gospel, there is a verse. We all know this. And it's been said a few times in the gospel that Jesus is going to descend from the heavens. Now, that has been disproved in the Quran. The Quran is the criteria. This book in the, the Quran says, do not follow things that are not specified. This verse does not, I mean, this book, the Quran, does not, not specify Jesus descending. It only says that he ascended. And you're not supposed to assume either anything. Like, well, I assume just because he ascended that, of course, he's going to descend after that. No. Okay, you're if you're okay, that. so why are you following the gospel? If if why are you not following the Quran? Then that's my question to you. No, no, it's the other. No, one. no, no, that's that's not the thing. That yeah, the yeah. point he's making is that um, the thing is the second verse. He's not. He hasn't cited. He's saying it's in chapter three, verse seven, but it's not there. That's not what it says. He's I, basically... What he's, trying to, what he's trying to say is that because the Quran is the Muhammad over the Injil, yeah. mm -hmm. so because the Quran doesn't testify to the descent of Isa, Islam, why do we have that in the Hadith literature? So, Samir, let me ask that, you this. That's do perfect. You, that's perfect. Do you believe... Let me just say that. That's what I was saying. I said that the first time, but he's better at explaining it. Thanks. Yeah. So do you... I mean, I mean... Uh, uh, shukran, shukran, lock. Do you reject uh, hadith? That's that's the thing is that I do not reject the entire hadith. Just like all of us as Muslims do not reject the entire gospel, we basically reject. I mean, not pretty. You know, if you're really a Muslim, you read this book, you know that we're not supposed to just accept. But then, the gospel. Okay. Uh, just one second, the, Doris. Oh, not so, all the Samian, just want to ask a quick question. You're right, we don't reject 
everything in the Gospels. Uh, we use the Quran as the Muhammad as a criterion. Muhammad. How do you reject? How do you accept or reject the Hadith? Do you use, do you use the same methodology? Yes, pretty much. So if it's not mentioned in the Quran, you reject the Hadith. Is that what you're saying? Um, I'm sorry, that's not exactly what it is. It's basically that I'm not rejecting every single narration of the followers. That's not my no, no, no. Just what, rejecting how them. do you reject the hadith? Because I would reject the hadith based on it being a fabricated hadith, for example. I reject that. Because the ulama, the scholars who know the science of hadith, they have come to the conclusion this particular hadith is fabricated. What is your criteria for rejecting a hadith? Is it the Quran? Yes, number one, yes, yeah. What else? Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing, pretty much. Okay, so that's, 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 not how, that's not how we accept and reject the hadith. Because there are many things the Prophet ﷺ told us which are not in the Quran, like the second coming of Isa alayhi salam, which I believe is what you're alluding to based on your contradiction. Yeah. Yeah? So that's not how we accept and reject the hadith. So if you, I don't know where you got that criteria from. Was it self-taught or did someone tell you this? Uh, it was self-realized. Uh, okay, good. Let me ask you this. Do you? How many times a day do you pray? Uh, once in the morning and once at night. And you got that from where? In the Quran, the two ends of the okay. day, I have to pray. That's fine, okay. And how do you pray? How many rakats in the morning? How many in the evening? Or night? Uh, Is it night? Like... That's all. I don't. I just pray. I prostrate to Allah. That's it. I don't want to get like with the details, but I do what Allah knows that I do, and it's just about what I can do. I'm not praying the same way as you are. But to, yeah, but I, I gathered yeah, that because you don't follow the hadith, so I gathered mm -hmm. that. Now, let me ask you this: In the Quran, in Surah Al Jumah, which is which we call Friday, uh -huh. there's you know there's a chapter called Jumah. Yeah, yeah. Are you aware of that? Yes. What is Juma? It's one of the the end chapters, I think. Right. No, no, not one of. I'm not Close asking which chapter it is. I'm asking you, if you if if it's somebody did not tell you that Juma means Friday, how would you come to the what? conclusion it is on a Friday? Well, it says it right there anyway. It says Juma, and then, you know. It doesn't say Friday in the Quran, does it? It says Juma. So if in somebody did not tell you what Juma means, how would you come to the conclusion it's Friday? You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Here. So you could be praying any day of the week, right? Um, you're saying that my, my Friday prayer is supposed to be uh, evolved from now on after what you're saying? i got to do something more. No, I'm saying the cool. Friday. If somebody did not tell you Juma means Friday, then you would be praying any day of the week because you wouldn't come to the conclusion it's Friday unless you heard it from someone and that is not the prophet, that is not the hadith, that is not the companions. So you would rely on a source external to the Quran because you don't read Arabic. You 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 confirm that. I, I read some Arabic. No, you confirmed that last time when we asked you. You said you rely on the English translations. So going further, in Surah Al-Jum'ah, yeah. it talks about when you hear the call of prayer, proceed to pray Juma. Proceed to the to the masjid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, How there's also identify... a verse. Oh, no, no, let's deal sorry. with one point at a time. How would you identify the call for prayer? That's not mentioned. The call for prayer is not mentioned in the Quran. That's it. I am agreeing with the Quran. Sure. No, no. The call for prayer. How would you identify the call for prayer? Oh, uh, like you just said. No, I heard you. Like, okay. So what's your answer? Well, my answer is that there's also the verse in the Quran that says, you know, be careful what what call to prayer you go to after this book, man, after they take over at the Prophet Ahmed. No, I'm referring to Surah al Juma, where Allah instructs you. In fact, Allah commands you that okay. put your trading okay. aside, whatever you're doing, put it aside, and proceed uh, to prayers. But before that, okay. Allah says about the call for prayers. How would you identify the call 
for prayer to Jum'ah if the call is not mentioned in the Quran? How would you identify it? The, the, it's mentioned as Jumu'ah, and we know what day that is, and we do that if we do it, if we're able to. Yeah. Period. I've, we have moved on now. Same yeah. We have moved on to the call for prayer now. How yeah, would that. you identify the call for prayer? Oh, well, can you tell me, is it bells or is someone calling you or what? We don't have bells, no, bro. <laughs> That's the church. <laughs> someone calls, right? Like, Where did you uh, get that? No, I've heard it. I've heard it. I know what it sounds like, yeah. Okay. What the van sounds like? Yeah. Yeah. How does what does it sound like? Well, someone would be like, "Oh, who Akbar?" And I hear someone start calling, right? Yes, that's good. That's good. Mashallah. But the thing is, that is not mentioned in the Quran anywhere. What? So how would you know that is a call for prayer? <laughs> well, someone would tell you, probably. <laughs> You see what I mean? This is where you're headed, my brother. You you will be someone not will even you. following the Quran without someone. the hadith. You'll be lost. You'll be lost. Someone will tell you. What do you mean, someone? It could be anyone. So it could be any call for prayer, and you would just proceed for prayer for Juma. No, if it's the right one. How would you know that? That's a question. Well, if you know all along, then you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah? It's not mentioned in the Quran because, you see, I'm I'm going based on your criteria. You said your criteria is the Quran. Now, if yeah. the if Allah commands you to follow the uh, to to follow uh, to to proceed to prayers when you hear the call for uh, for prayers, but the call for mm -hmm. prayers is not mentioned in the Quran, then you are in a uh, <laughs> you are uh, you are in a in a in a tough position, isn't it, right now? Because the, you, your criteria is the Quran. The Quran doesn't tell you what the, the call criteria. for prayer is, but the Quran commands you to follow the call for prayers and proceed to prayers. Sorry, but just yeah. just to chime in for a second, yeah, the the issue is that he believes that the Quran is not just stating that it's the criteria. He believes that it's stating that you don't take anything else outside the book. Yeah, that verse does not exist. Where it says okay. where, there is no verse, there is no verse that says, "Do not take anything outside this book, do not take anything outside this revelation." No such verse exists. Yes, the Quran is the criterion, but it's a criterion over the other scriptures. It is not stating that there is an additional revelation to follow. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I just said that whatever is not specified in it. If no, it's but, the but that's not what the Quran is saying. But, but that, that, that's your fundamental misunderstanding here. The Quran doesn't say, um, what do you call it, that whatever is not specified in the Quran, you don't take, or you, you know, even if it's from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Because right now, what's happened okay, because of this misunderstanding? So, because of this misunderstanding, what you are starting to fall into is the rejection of the Quran and of itself, because the Quran states to follow and obey the Prophet, peace be upon him. And that is found within the Hadith lit literature. And as, as uh, Hashim mentioned, that the Hadith literature is authenticated so that we are sure that when we are taken from the Prophet, peace be upon him, it is uh, correctly and accurately attributed to him. So there is a criterion within that in of itself. So the contradiction that you think you have, uh, that you think exists, is based upon a fundamental misunderstanding of what the Quran is actually saying to you. It's saying that the Quran is a muhaymin, is a criterion over the other scripture. It is not saying that that is the only thing you abide by, because even the Quran actually mentions. Uh, you mentioned chapter 3, verse 7, even though it's not the verse that you were trying to reference because uh, the Muhammad, it's in another chapter. I can't remember the, the number. But um, the chapter 3, oh, verse 7 know. actually says to you that the Quran has, what do you call it, uh, clear mm -hmm. verses and it has ambiguous verses. So and ambiguous verses need interpretation. And it mentions also within the Quran that the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, explains the Quran. So yes, obviously we don't. But that, that verse, though, I've heard that verse. Mm. I know what that is. Yeah. So, but this is the thing. I already know there, what it is. So there is that's authentic. The I mean, that's the Quran. 
you know, yeah, you keep but, saying uh, all you guys no, are like, that, this, this. Yeah, but same oh, here. Same here. Oh, okay. Just for a second. I'll, I'll keep waiting. All right. Okay. Just, all right. Just for a second, yeah. The Quran is actually directing you to the Hadith tradition, right? Because when it's saying that the Quran, uh, that the uh, obey the Prophet, peace be upon him, and that he explains the Quran, think, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is these things are found within the hadith tradition. Um, so when we see about the descent of of Isa of Isa alayhi when we see the descent of Jesus within the hadith tradition, it is authentically attributed to the Prophet peace be upon him. So therefore, um, the Prophet peace be upon him is explaining how the how uh, jesus uh, peace be upon him is a sign of the hour when he descends you know and then the the scholars have taken this information and you know given us a uh, an understanding of uh the signs of the hour and jesus peace be upon him his descent is is one of them and that's what chapter 43 verse 61 means and you see this within the books of tafsir the books uh, the exege uh, exegetical works but because the Quran and the Hadith tradition go hand in hand, right? We won't understand because remember, chapter 43, verse 61 doesn't say Jesus is the sign of the hour. It simply says, and he is the sign of the hour. But how do we understand that? There is context bef before that. that like, wait a minute, you know, wait a minute. Well, well, it, 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 so it does say that in Arabic. No, it says, it says in, no, in Arabic it says, innahu li'ilmun li It doesn't say, wa isa. It doesn't say that, right? So it says, and he okay, is... Okay, wait, 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 hold on. It says, this book says, do not conceal the truth while you know it. Tell your brother, me, as a Muslim, yes. what this means, please. Thank you. You can translate that verse. No, no, I have, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, but essentially what you're saying... Because if I have the wrong verse and I don't know Arabic yet, then it's your duty to, to tell me. No, of, it's, it's of course, I'm, and I'm explaining to you. So, yeah, sure, yeah. I'm just saying, okay, okay, all right. Sorry. No problem. What do you call it? So the it is saying, and he is a sign of the hour. Now the preceding verses gives us the context of who it's talking about, and that's how we know it's uh, uh, speaking about Jesus. However, in what capacity is he the sign of the hour? It doesn't actually expand on that in the Quran. So we go back to the other verse where it says that the Prophet peace be upon him is uh, uh, explains the Quran to us, right? So and then that's what he did. He he explained to us in what capacity Jesus, peace be upon him, is a sign of the hour or, or knowledge of the hour. And that is when he descends upon the white minaret. Right. And, and this is not. And the thing is, even the um, even the uh, the hadith about the descent of Isa Islam contradicts the. um contradicts the gospel narrative because the gospel narrative is that he will descend on the mountain uh, the, uh, on, on the mountain of olives in jerusalem right but that's not what peace be uh, the prophet peace be upon him is saying he's saying he's going to descend upon the white minaret in the east of damascus right and that he will kill uh kill uh, the swine break the cross christianity doesn't believe any on any of that so this is revelation from allah uh, to the Prophet, peace be upon him, outside the Quran, in order to explain the Quran. So, so this this verse that you're talking about, like, okay, do you not see that uh, we have given you a messenger? Um, it, this is what it says in English, okay? And we have given him, and he is teaching the people in the book and the wisdom. I don't know what you're talking what, about. What's, the book is the Quran. He's teaching yeah, them the Quran, right? and he's teaching yeah. them the wisdom of the Quran. And I heard everything that you were saying, but like this is basically yes. the whole thing you're talking about. You guys need to say, obey right. Allah and obey the messenger, but you cannot obey the messenger because that verse also says, bring your concerns to the messenger physically, literally. This are some, there's some verses that are only for people who were following the messenger at that time. Another verse would be when the, to relate to that and correlate is like when he was talking about, oh, you know, whoever says that their wives or like their moms or something, who, who's doing that? Damn, those people that were with Muhammad. He's not talking to you. Just to go get this other book, like the New Age Arabic Talmud version. That's already happened. Are we going to repeat what happened in the past again? But they did, no. did the same thing happened with the Jews. They just wrote another book. You, you don't add a book to all those books. They already got in major trouble for that. 
hold on, bro. You're, 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 what you're doing is you're saying that not only are you rejecting it entirely, but you're also saying that there's no lesson to be learned. And that's no, no, just, no, no, no. But I'm not rejecting it entirely. Sorry. To interrupt. No, okay. I'm, not. I'm just saying the generalistic idea of it is a, is a repetition of something that was bad in the past. That's what I'm saying. No, I, don't, I like I, already said, I don't deny it. And I think it's actually good. To see, like, the, the narration. Well, Samian, Samian, the thing is, look, yeah. we, we believe that Allah has preserved the message, right? It's there within the Quran, right? In yeah. chapter 15, verse 9, right? That Allah will preserve his word. I know someone yeah. got their hands so, on that. Yeah. Okay. No, I know, I know. But the thing is, in order to preserve the Quran, the hadith in of itself, the explanation of the Quran would have to be preserved as well, so that it cannot be corrupted in any way, shape or form, because when you're talking about the lessons of the people of the book and how they've corrupted the, the scriptures, they corrupted it in, in the words themselves, as well as the meaning, right, the tahrir. Without, without, without Moses, basically. So right. Yeah, but without no, Moses. For, for whatever Moses... That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, this is a better version of it, but it's still no. But here's the thing. No, it's not a. It's not yeah. a better version. It's it's foolproof because as uh, as we said right. previous. No, as we said. Wait, hold on. As as we said previously, we already know that people have tried to fabricate a hadith. Right. We know this because we have uh, entire libraries dedicated to the fabric to fabricated hadith. But we know which ones are fabricated because of the authentication criteria, right? That has been uh, put in place. And Allah has preserved the authentic sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, in order for us to follow him, in order for us to explain, uh, to understand the meaning of the Quran. So what we are saying to you um, is when there is an authentic hadith, something that has been authenticated to be uh, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, himself, there should be no objection from you to accept. You guys, please, like, can, I, can I say something, please? Like, you know, we, we have these verses like floating around here, like planets orbiting, and it's like, look, like, let me just go to the to the other verse then, okay? Because I'm just gonna have to take. Uh, can you cite time. the Can you cite the verses as well? Like, what what chapter? What verse? Just so we can have a look at them with you. Uh, I'm kind of poor. Like, I don't have good technology. I don't even have a book. So, like, I can't do it. But I can tell you that there's a book that says, you know, don't divide Islam, you know, into Sunni and uh, Shia. And basically, you know, that's what you guys believe is that he's going to descend. Jesus is going to descend the Sunnis. And that's the same thing. And they're divided. And that's what the Christians believe. So, it's like, you know, there I, I have more firepower on my side of this argument. Quote, Unquote, using alliteration metaphorically. Okay. No, but the, the the division the division in in the sects that was prophesized by the prophet peace be upon him anyway. I, the Quran warns <laughs> us not <laughs> to do so. Yeah. So, no, 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 so you're wasting your time unless unless you really think that we can come to a conclusion because you probably have other people in the back we've been talking for like twenty minutes. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's not a waste of time. Look, what we're saying to you is that okay. the Prophet, peace be upon him, is already... Well, the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us not to divide, right? Yeah, this is because obviously unity is better than division, right? He's telling us not to divide. This is what's best for us. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, has prophesied that, that it will happen regardless, right? Because we will not heed the warning of Allah. He tells us not to divide, but then we go off and divide, right? Um, right. So there's there's a, there's a difference between the command of Allah and what will happen, right? And a, and a prophecy. That, so we, we don't want to conflate the two. Um, is that verse that three chapter three verse seven? Part of the verse says those who disbelieve will follow what is unspecific in this book. Does it say that at all? Like I mean, yeah. So inside. Yeah, so essentially... Yeah, that's not, see, that's what I'm saying. In this book, it says Jesus is knowledge of the hour. Unspecified. No descending, no ascending, nothing. Maybe, maybe not. No, 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 it's no. unspecified, so don't follow it. Is what this other verse says. No, so when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the, you know, uh, that people will be following conjecture, right, and an ambigu ambiguity, it's because they, they're not interested in what is clear. So even with the hadith of the descent of Isa, Islam, that is clear. We understand that. There is no ambiguity about it. But then you'll have people that will try to, uh, in order to disbelieve, 
they will try and attach themselves to ambiguous statements, whether it's in the Quran or in the Ahadith, right? Like you mentioned the Shia. The Shia will try to uh, uh, profess their uh, sect as being correct by attaching themselves to ambiguous things, not clarity, because then when, when the Muslims present clear and explicit verses, as mentioned in chapter 3, verse 7, the Shia don't, can't deal with it. Right, so they because they need to attach themselves to what is ambiguous. That's the warning. It's not to say you can't take anything outside the book or you can't take anything that's ambiguous. Yeah, there are uh, what Allah is saying is don't prioritize ambiguity over clarity, over what is explicit, because explicit things explain ambig ambiguous things, not the other way around. Um, so. so clear, clear, and unclear. I mean, mm -hmm. That is what the surah chapter three is referring to. Well, for example, you know, oh, for, for example, if you take the harful mukattaat, you know, like alif lam mim, yeah, mm -hmm. very beginning of surah al-Baqarah, what does it mean? What me? Oh, yes. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm asking I'm you. Yeah. Asking yeah, and well, neither do we. So Allah um, is telling you there are certain things which are very clear and others which are not. Well, it uh, technically it doesn't fall within the Mutashabihat because Allah, he goes on to say, and there are those things that only Allah knows. So that's that yeah. category. The Muqattaat will follow in, fall into that category. But uh, speaking about the Muqattaat, it reminded me there was a, a Christian that was speaking to us and he uh, tried to insist that one of the Muqattaat uh, noon meant that you know uh, what do you call it the world is is sitting on a whale's back Let's but this is ambiguous <laughs> but it's, a, it's it's so ambiguous yeah. but he was attached to it yeah and this is the warning that allah has given us in this verse so do that's you know what, what happens you know when you come up with all these different mm. subjective understandings and mm. you don't have a definite you... understanding of things which are important even you know like even if it's not the uh, the disjointed letters, there are so many things which needs extra explanation. Yeah. And that's where the hadith comes in, you know, many times. It, it tells you that, like, for example, you know, you ended up praying at the beginning and the end of the days. Yeah. And there are many ayats yeah. in the Quran which actually refer to the timing of the salah. So which yeah, timing just... will you go to? Allah says very clearly, in the salah that can it all mean kitab and maukuta. So Allah is ordained for you to pray at appointed times. And what time do you pray? Do you know, you don't even know the adhan. Like, where would you hear the adhan? <laughs> you wouldn't even identify it because it's not in the Quran. So you you you're going to rely on others to tell you all these things, but you instead of relying on the Prophet peace be upon him and his Authentic hadith, you would rely yeah, on other right, people. Right, yeah. <clears throat> huh? what? You see what I mean? So anyway, uh, brother, I think there's a lot to to oh, unpack here. Uh, we have already extended more than we can oh. on this uh, stream. So, Did you have a link for him on the private chat? I'm going to put it. Um, it's from yeah. Brother Muhammad Ali. And he goes into great oh, detail. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it's um, it's called the Muslim Lantern, his channel name. Yeah, he goes into great detail about uh, rejecting a hadith and um, why you should not do that. Uh, and he gives incredible examples. Um, so uh, the other thing I want to mention, definitely take a look at the video. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you, bro, is I really think you got to work on your fundamentals before you start trying to get an interpretation of the Quran or making these claims and just be mindful of some of the books that you're reading. Um, because I follow the, the principle that everybody should follow, which is a little bit of knowledge is, is dangerous. Um, so you got to know how no, to. But I have knowledge. I have not. I just don't know like these things that you know. And there's some things that I know that you yeah, do not know. That's, that's my point, bro. It's like when you say I have knowledge. <laughs> But I don't know follows, then that means yeah. that your knowledge is not quite. No, that's not what it means. You're just symbolizing what I said. I said what I said clearly. I know what I said. I also know what you said too, because you said it, and I heard what you said. And I'm as a as a brother in, in in Islam, I'm trying to stop you from doing something that you are not equipped to do. 
uh, because it's going to cause confusion to you and it's going to be a trial for you when it's completely unnecessary. So I want you to really try to sit there and focus on the fundamentals, which is your salah, reading the Quran. And um, then when it comes into the deeper things, you're welcome to explore them, bro. But I really think that you need to take the proper steps when exploring those things. So I'm not telling you, hey, you know, abandon all hope. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I'm just telling you that the road that you're taking in the manner that you're taking it right now is very, very dangerous. And that's what led to the confusions that you have. Okay. Most yeah, confusions. I, look, brother, he's, okay. he's, uh, brother Maurice is being very charitable, you know, Alhamdulillah. He's, he, as a brother, he's advising you. Uh, and it is, it is not only advice for yeah, us, thanks, advice for uh, all of us. Maurice, we, Maurice, we want the best uh, for you. It's not like we're trying to okay. trap you or trying to put you in a, Position. I'm just saying, like, I'm intellectual. You won't be surprised, no, no. but you know, I'm even, really smart even an intellectual person needs someone to study uh, from. Will, okay, every okay. intellectual person out there had a teacher. I'm certain about that. This, you know, just okay, self study well, by yourself, brother, it's something which is which is quite right. dangerous, brother. Okay, everyone, even Musa yeah. alayhi salam, needed a teacher. Remember in the Quran, in Surah Al Kahf, yeah. chapter 18. Yeah. Go and see because about, Moses thought Jesus? that he was he, he was the most knowledgeable person on earth. Did, did, you know? did Jesus have a teacher? Of course, they are prophets of God, you know. Of course, they are our teachers. But we take no, no, but I'm saying, did, did, we, we take that information did. from the Quran well, well, and from the Sunnah, not from the gospels. Well, did Jesus you know? have a teacher? I'm asking you, did, did Jesus have a teacher? You said Moses had a yeah, Jesus have a teacher. Yeah. Where do you think yeah, Jesus well, well, learned the Torah from? Okay, his teacher was God. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes, just like the Prophet yeah. peace be upon him. Do you think he learned the Quran himself? No, his teacher was also a God, Allah, the same God who revealed the Quran to. Uh, and, and, then, and then, and then, Jesus also after revealed all the, all the, the angel to Isa alayhi salam and the Torah to Musa alayhi salam. So this is God is the teacher, but you see, for us, we don't have you that mean, connection. Allah. The prophets have. That, that teaches us directly. We have to rely on books like uh, like the revelations. And we have to have teachers who interpret those revelations for us. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. You know, people uh, like myself and others who don't even know Arabic fully are trying to somehow try to say, okay, we are better than the others who have studied like almost all their life trying to understand the Quran, trying to understand the depth okay, of so it, that's trying upsetting. to read the that's that, that makes It takes upset. a lot of effort, brother. Yeah? Just because I and you know how to read English doesn't mean we can go pick up a medical book on how to, you know, perform a small surgery like, um, I don't know, <laughs> like, for example, a minor surgery even. Do you think anybody would allow us to do that just by reading a book? No, you need proper teachers to teach you those things. So if the knowledge of this dunya, of this world, requires teachers, then do you think the knowledge of the akhirah, the knowledge of the spiritual knowledge that comes from Allah doesn't require teachers? Okay, so let's let's all be humble. Let's try to learn to the best of our ability. And please, uh, if you consider the hadith, really. if you consider the hadith, then do not consider me. that the Quran is going to be the criteria to accept or reject the hadith. In fact, there's a there's a hadith about that itself, that a time will come when people will be reclining on the sofa and say, this is not from the Quran, so we reject uh, what the Prophet Sallallahu is saying. We reject the hadith. We reject yeah, the say that in the Quran. Uh, which is exactly what the hadith is saying. You see what I mean? You're, nah, you're actually dude, doing exactly what the hadith problem, is saying. And this was 1,400 years ago. Right, Prophet right, right. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam predicted this would happen. Change, that a time would come when people like you would say, oh, it's not in the Quran. That's exactly what the hadith is saying. Uh, but then I'm the bad guy here, right? No, 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 no. Then, you're uh, you're, you're just not learned enough yet. Corrected, Sam? Are you open to being corrected at all, bud? Mm -hmm. Are you open to being corrected at all? Because it's getting to a point yeah. where you have three people telling you that of what you need to do and you're just completely just swatting us away like flies that's yeah. just not right oh, okay. well, i don't know like you're just telling me to join this thing that has pedophilia involved in it but i'm not going to do that this guy's 100 percent troll dude anyway look brother go and uh go look at uh the the reference sorry the 
the video that Brother Maurice posted in the private chat. Um, look through it and then tell us what your thoughts are maybe on Brother Muhammad Ali's channel or maybe over here, inshallah. I, I suggest you go and visit uh, Brother Muhammad Ali's channel because he does have a QA and a like this one. And inshallah, he will be able to give you some more, um, you know, some, some more information which might help you, inshallah. All right, you take care there. Uh, we yes. have to go okay. All right, bye bye. All right. Salam. All right, uh, fierce llama. I don't know if you have so much time, but uh, let's keep it short, brother. <laughs> yeah, very short. I need to go in a couple of minutes anyway. Yeah, guys, I've been watching this for the full four hours. Oh, have you? you know, yeah. That giant bookshelf behind you, man. I hope that you honored what you told me <laughs> post about a year and a half ago. If you were going to go pick up the uh, seat of the Prophet, they saw the slam. Did he? Oh, you really? Know. I got the digital version. I'm actually in a different house, so uh, that's a different library. I have, I have a digital book. Right. Uh, somebody yeah. else's books. <laughs> okay, so from the four and a half hours, so uh, which one was your favorite? <laughs> Oh boy, my favorite was prob probably that uh, your know, dismantling of that Hindu dude. Um, okay. The yeah, the random good. souls, and the, what what were you saying that the deity bringing in mischief? And he's like, yeah, you can't question the deity. So. <laughs> no, no, Hin That's Hinduism hilarious. is a, it's, yeah. it's a tough cookie. If you haven't learned it, you'll find it uh, quite. I I I I was born in Hyderabad, so uh, I left India in '97, so I'm quite acquainted okay. with. Hinduism, but yeah, oh, no, good, good good job with that. That I have you, have you had any streams on your channel on Hinduism? No, oh, no. Okay. I it it's so it's so left field. I just can't be bothered. Okay, um, <laughs> any of the Eastern religions. Right, I uh, take it you're a Christian. Yeah, we've discussed before. I've I've come uh, on the show before. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah. Yeah. How things? How how are you? You're right. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I hope yeah. uh, you guys have a good New Year's ahead. Yes, yes, hopefully. Uh, uh, what's, uh, sorry, where are you calling from? Australia. Australia, that's good. Oh, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's early morning there, isn't it? I don't it's know. currently 10 in the morning. Yeah, it's, it's early, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Uh, go ahead, brother. What's on your mind? Uh, a number of things. I think I have a few questions for Re Rehat uh, yeah, Lara. Yeah. Yemeni, yeah. Yemeni. Yeah, Let's okay. make it just one question because of the shortage of time. I suppose yeah. just to you could always come back next time. Yeah, yeah. I we do this on Thursday. I found something interesting in Surah twelve, one twelve. He is God, one God, the Eternal. Uh, he has not begotten and was not begotten. Surah the Lekhlas. Yeah. Yeah. What right. The question, of, the question of begotten. Yeah, so my question is, I, I find this quite intriguing with relation to the Nicene Creed or the Athanasian Creed, because you have Athanasius's formulation of not just the Father, but also the Son of the Holy Spirit. But the Nicene Creed truncates it, uh, begotten, not made. Um, yeah. But the Quran says it the, the reverse. He's made, not begotten. Mm. Um, Who's made? made? Yeah, oh, Jesus. Jesus. So, yeah, but this is the thing. The Quran has always uh, been very um, uh, concise in its refutation of of previous beliefs. So Allah is making it very clear that the one to be worshipped is not begotten. He will, you know, he doesn't beget, nor is he begotten, because you know, as uh, as it even says in Psalms, right? As I mentioned in Psalm two seven, that God says that He has begotten David, right? essentially and in john 3 16 it says that jesus is begotten so allah is making is refuting both of those he doesn't beget nor is he begotten so but this is where my question is just to keep it short uh okay. monogamous the greek word that you brought up that's it that you were saying that that speaks about begetting in the physical sense yeah right yeah but monogamous uh, in John's literature, the Johannine literature, especially in the context of the church discussions with Arius, is precisely because of the, the notion that it's a uniqueness associated with the individual rather than a begetting. Well, no, so it's not, it's not monogonao, it's monogonase. He's one of a kind. 
it's not it does there's no ganao in the in the term right but the thing is that change has occurred because the church realized that they couldn't really attribute that to god it was a problem for them so hence why they had to sort of switch it up a little to make it fit that there was a whole po point of the uh, the ecumen ecumenical uh, councils to sort these theological issues so and and because of the the greek actually being very clear in being in the physical sense yes the church tried to you know make it work somehow so that it's not physical they didn't want to believe that god physically interacted with mary yeah okay so what right. what in sticking with john because i'm thinking of like say hebrews to which of the angels did god say you're my son basically none of them yeah but sticking with john what's your understanding of chapter 1 verse 18. chapter 1 verse 18 let me just bring it up uh right so it says uh no one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who Himself is God. And uh, let me bring the Greek. Uh, John. But the Nicene Creed does mention Jesus is begotten, right? Uh, yeah. The Athenian, the Athenian Creed mentions. No, but, that. but yeah, but begotten, not made, right? Um, it's, yeah. Like I said, uh, like I said, it's the way they've changed it because it's uh, mono. Get a monogenes in the Greek, the monogenes. Church, monogenes in the Greek, mm -hmm. they changed it to monoge or, or is that am I pronouncing it correctly? I uh, mo uh, mon monogonao, is... monogonao, right? Is, yeah. is that they what changed, is that? Yeah, does that they, translate they to it. begotten? Yeah, but not in the same sense. So mono, mono, monogenes, yeah is in the physical sense that's that's what he means and i'm i'm asking uh uh oh, rob, rob. rob you I'm can call me rob yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so rob uh, i'm going to call you fierce am i <laughs> 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 you're not that fierce okay so rob do you believe jesus it's, was it's an oxymoron term by the way there's no such thing as a fierce llama right so this is uh, yeah, uh you don't yeah. want me to call you either fierce or a llama <laughs> you can call me llama yeah okay. <laughs> rob is okay so what is your understanding of the term begotten in English? Uh, begotten in English, you know, begetting uh, an outcome uh, or something that is produced from an entity. Uh, if you're talking bi biological, you apply the term biologically as okay, a transition, so something that comes from something. Like for example, to sire a child, would that be begotten? Right, so something yeah. that emerges from something. Okay, yeah. so do you believe Jesus emerged from something or someone? Yeah, so so in the context of the... So, for example, Morris was talking about those two deities, so to speak, the two powers concept of Judaism. So for the early Christians, Jesus is known as the wisdom of God, right? So, so Proverbs eight gets into this. He emerges from. He's he's begotten from the from God as the Word, the Logos. It's not that he's generated, like created. Yeah, but that's an emergence. From, but that but that sort of stems from the Kabbalist mysticism aspect, where you have the second, um, well, the, the the sun. It was it was molded into. So within the two powers, you have. The second power also having its root in Kabbalist mysticism, to some degree, where you have the uh, the uh, the wisdom, because yeah. then uh, so the Sophia the or the or the wisdom, yeah, wisdom. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you wisdom. so are you yeah. saying are you saying that if the son was the wisdom, did the father also have wisdom? The, the son is the wisdom of the father, according That's to the early Christian argument. Yeah, but. The father is not the son, right? No, it's not a Christian argument, yeah. though, is it? Yeah. So, is the, does the father have wisdom? Yes. Yeah. And that, and that is not the son. No. 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 <laughs> so, does it? So this this goes into this unity uh, argument and the hypostasis argument of the two. Well, we'll about the two different. We, we have identified two different persons: the father and the son. There's mm -hmm. no dispute there, right? Yeah. There's a father who is distinct from the son. As a person, does the father have his own wisdom? 
which is uh, not, which is not the sun. Yeah. So remember now. Now listen carefully to this. What Jesus says in John's Gospel specifically: this notion of the Father is in me, I am in the Father. That unification communicates a hypostasis of that wisdom element. So Jesus is called the Logos of the Father. And then you have this very peculiar paradoxical argumentation that whatever the Father knows, the Son knows, and whether the Son knows, the Father knows. So here's your, the father, well, which is it? And the, the answer is The Father knew the yes. hour, the Son oh. did not know the hour. So we know that their knowledge is also different. Okay, so look, no. unless you want to get into the Nestorian her heresy, where they yeah. considered them Jesus to be two persons. Hashem, okay. can you can you share this? Yeah, but but don't conflate Mark thirteen and Matthew twenty four, which is the Olivet discourse, with what is happening prior to the New Testament context. Uh, so hold on, hold Second on. Temple, you, which is saying, by the way, just quickly, the Kabbalah is far removed from Second Temple. Yeah, two powers let's, concept. let's not get into no, no. the cabal, cabal thing. Just, just one second. So, are you saying Mark thirteen thirty two? Did Jesus know the hour, or did he not know the hour? I would say he knows the hour in in hindsight of Acts chapter one, where he clarifies and says, "Don't worry about the times and seasons that the Father has fixed according to His authority." Uh, but then he communicates and says, "The Holy Spirit will come on to you as I promised." Reminding them of John 14 that he discussed the comfort of the paraclete to come and so on. So you have you, you have consistent Trinitarian language. No, no, hold on. Was Jesus telling a lie in Mark 13 32 that he didn't no, know the because, hour? Because because earlier. He, no, no, hear me out. He says very clearly, only the Father knows. Now, when he says when he points to one person, the Father, and we have already agreed the Father is not the Son. So either Jesus was telling a lie. Or you're telling a lie. I don't know which one. Because you cannot no. reconcile the two in Mark 13, 32. In Mark 13, 32, if he said that he knows the hour, but he cannot tell you now, then you would have a point. But Jesus was asked this question about the last hour. He says, not the angels in heaven, not the son, meaning himself, except the father in heaven. So unless yeah, but you're no, telling me that just, Jesus but, is telling a lie, it's quite just, explicit. Just notice these are descriptions and terms that you as a Muslim would disagree with. So Mark 13, just to give you clarification, is yeah. about the 70 destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans. No, Mark 13. He actually is about accurately the last lays hour. out what's going to happen chronologically. It's about the last hour, the very clear. Let's not get no, confused. No, that, that's to do with when it says the heavens and earth pass away, it's talking about the temple. Okay, let's let's the bring up the verse. Hold on, let's pick up the verse. I'll, I'll just and, and we'll see if the, if the mention the of temple is there. It's talking about you're reading it's only into talking it about from, from your it's only talking about the Roman Trinitarian lenses. You're ignoring the gospel, you're you're reading it using your Trinitarian lenses. Jesus was clearly asked, Do you know the last hour? And he points only to the Father. Why would he point only to the Father when yeah, he knew it? But where does he put so what does he say in verse 31? So the, the prior verses to verse 32, then what does he, where does he place himself in relative to humans, angels, and the Father? And then why does he go out of his way to say that he is the Son, which is what's, in Mark and scholarship, it's what's called an intercalation. Mark chapter 1 starts with, this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And now the Son theme plays right throughout Mark's gospel. And if Mark's the first gospel written, here you have a high Christology argument in Mark's gospel well before John's gospel that communicates no, Jesus it's not. as the Actually, Son of God. Actually, it's the other way around. Mark 13, 32 is pointing to the Father only who knows, who has knowledge of the hour. You're clearly yeah, but he mentioned that son. He mentioned son. Yes. There are many but sons you don't in the believe, Bible. You don't believe Jesus is the son of Allah. Well, do you believe Adam is the son of God? No. Well, it says so in the in the uh, Gospel no, of Luke. No, it doesn't. Yes. No, Open Luke, Adam. Uh, sorry, Adam, the son of God. Luke yeah. three thirty-two. It doesn't. Okay, it doesn't yeah. Yeah. Read it for him, someone, because the guy has to be taught the Bible. <laughs> Honestly, he yeah, has I, to, because I, I, if he doesn't know, you have to teach him where it is. Open I've Luke got, chapter I've three. I'm pretty. I'm quite certain I've read Luke three, and it doesn't say I, that. One thing you have. Today might be your first day. The Muslims are educating you something from your gospel. Yeah, I'm curious. So you're you're still on the notion that they shared knowledge. Did Jesus know that he was going to be willed into existence? 
So Luke 3.38, it mentions the son of Enosh, the son of Seth. 38, yeah, that's right. Luke 3.38. Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. It's right yeah. there, it's the end of the... Uh, so you're going to worship Adam as son of yeah. God now? No, 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 wait, wait. So okay. go back up to verse... Notice, so I've, op I've opened Luke 3. Notice yeah. you have... Um, Verse 22, you have this notion of Jedediah or David, the, the, the beloved one, the son whom I love. So the father saying, this is the son whom I love at the baptism. Just after the baptism, verse 23, Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was, so it was thought, the son of Joseph, the son of Eli. So notice who it's speaking about. It's Jesus is the son of, the son of, the son of. So then finally, Jesus is the son of Adam. Jesus is the Son and, of God. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. No, no. Are you, are you, are you that's, telling that's me? What, that's what, what the genealogy is. Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying you Jesus, who doesn't have a biological father, actually has a genealogy? Why? Yeah, his humanity, his humanity. His humanity goes back to Adam. He didn't have a biological his, son. Sorry, biological father. So father, how can yeah. you have a human genealogy? But Luke's argument is that Jesus is the Son of God based on that genealogy. No, 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 no. You're too That's stupid because you realize That's what that the Greek Jesus... says. You Look, can't ask against the Greek. I'm looking at the Greek. That's not what the Greek says. Yes. Son so, of Adam, the son of God. Yeah. It's not, the Greek is not saying Adam is the son of God. It's literally the chain. There's a chain here. He's the son of Joseph, son of Heli, son of Matha, no. son of Levi. No, he actually mentions. These are the father's Theo. names. Do you not realize that? To yeah. fail. These are the father's name. So who would be the father of Adam? Let me ask you that. Uh, so I obviously hold to humans before Adam. And, okay. and we who, don't know the names of the humans. Who is Adam's father then? A type of Adam in Genesis 1. So you don't believe Adam, Adam, Adam first, Genesis you, don't believe you guys Adam have to understand where Rob is coming from. Rob comes from a naturalistic explanation of everything. Am I correct? I hold to Adam? human evolution, for example. I don't believe uh, Adam came from so heaven. Or all if, those you, things. if you ask him, Rob... Did Moses part the sea miraculously? You no. would say. Oh, I see. Okay. He's, uh, and well, the Quran yeah. says the Pharaoh drowned, but there's no evidence <laughs> no, of the Pharaoh drowned. No, that's right? not going to help you. So do you believe? Do Which you believe Pharaoh drowned? No, that's fine. That's his belief. We, we, we don't do that. that. That's fine. Uh, Rob, do you believe in heaven and hell? Sure. You do. But he believes in his naturalistic. <laughs> that are naturalistic. That's not naturalistic. <laughs> heaven and hell? Yes. Well, you're stuck yeah. there now. Yeah, they're supernatural entities. And, oh, or so you do believe something other than oh, the natural world. Literally, so in that, you you have to deal with argument, the fact. Yeah, but you have to deal argument, with the fact that they're living have... in a natural world, though. No, but look. What we perceive as natural. Yeah, but according to the Christians, Eden was on on Earth, right? Yeah. 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 Yes, and. And you I, know, and I can pinpoint geographically based on the details. So you believe in the truth. story of Eden, but not the story of Adam being the first man. The Genesis text doesn't say Adam was the first man. Well, it says uh, about... Uh, Genesis 5 verse 2 says Eve is called Adam. Hold on. Hachin, Adam. Let, me, let me ask him one real quick. Do you believe that God is supernatural? Yeah, he transcends this natural reality, yes. Okay, was Jesus cr created supernaturally or was he created naturalistically? I believe he was... Uh, so, so, for example, Paul and the author of Luke, does something quite interesting with the hovering language of the Spirit in relation to the creation narrative. So when it says that the Spirit hovers over the waters, the Hebrew term is rare and the Greek term is rare to, to connotate a, a creating of life like an ex nihilo creation. I got you. I'm talking so, in prophets past. So like, remember, you're, you're, because your initial position was, hey, uh, God and, and uh, Jesus share the same knowledge because they're part of this trinity, right? Mm -hmm. So now when Jesus was willed into existence at that point in Providence past, was he willed into existence supernaturally or naturally? His body was brought into existence, I would argue, supernaturally. His existence and willed into existence. Not, no not, body. not the not the monogamous theos, not the not the second power. The second power incarnates into that body 
I that get is it. biologically and connected I'm saying to before Perry's that, mind. I'm saying before the incarnation. Before that. So I'm, I'm just, because my, my, my next question is going to be, how about the Holy Spirit? Is that something that is supernatural or is it, or is it purely naturalistic? Yeah, remember, I would say, you, I would say it's supernatural. Okay, so then now because you're it's, changing it's, worldviews. It's, on, it's ontology in the Trinitarian formula. It's ontology is part of Yahweh. Right, but you're changing worldviews. Do you see how difficult it is for us to just kind of isolate where your position? No. How, how so, am I changing? I'm talking about it, events in natural space-time, and you're talking about you transcendental. God is in natural space-time. You're talking about God who transcends space-time. Right, and so are you. You're saying Jesus, the the prov providential past version of Jesus, the non-incarnate version of Jesus, who shares the same knowledge as God that transcends space and time, is also outside of space and time. Yes. Right. And and now your worldview has changed from having a naturalistic explanation to a supernatural explanation. Uh I've always had a, I always, if I'm a Christian and I believe in the resurrection, why do you, do you honestly think I'm a, I'm only a naturalist? Is that what you think? No, I, the way that you explained it to me was that you think that there are naturalistic explanations for everything. That's how you explained it. To there me. are naturalistic explanations for what's going on in the text with certain events that transpire in human history. The one time that is that the one time that you have a genuine out of this world scenario this this grand what is known as the evangelion right the virgin births you know mm -hmm. what about uh, the paul says at the right time god sent his son born by a woman born under the law this is galatians 4 it's very what, specific what about the resurrection of jesus yeah so i think the resurrection is the vital explanation, if it did happen in human history, it's a vital explanation and a model for how death and the grave is defeated. No, no, because you here you have the divine ontology of Yahweh himself defeating the grave in that incarnation. Do you believe it's supernatural? Yes. But you said supernatural doesn't apply to our space and time. Reality. I No. I, yes, you said that. No. I, no, it's I did on, not say that. Camera. It's on camera. Did, man. It's on you, camera. You really did. That's why Those exact problem. words. Well, not space and time. Yes. You said in this, in our reality. Real, yeah. Those exact you, words. You make a, okay, yeah. I'll tell oh, you what. You why didn't you tell us? I literally why? just said no, no, wait, this, wait, the wait. one I, I time where him, God actually acts in human history supernaturally, the virgin okay. birth, for example. Yeah, I know. You said only one, the virgin birth. That's the reason I pointed to the resurrection, because that is also supernatural. I'm not denying any of that. But do you okay? Once again, why you don't believe uh, miracles can happen in this world? Uh, I I never I'm not denying any of that. Okay, I'm so saying what Moses I'm saying splitting is, the Red Sea is okay. So what I'm, okay, what I'm okay saying with you or is, not? when you see events transpire, like say the the flood of Noah or yeah. the the you know the uh, the Exodus, those are events that you can actually explain naturalistically. Now, if you wanted to go into the God mode, you can speak about a type of maybe hypernatural or providential yeah, arrangement of things. So but there's saying, no force of miraculous nature of these, what no, is just, clearly natural events. No, but the thing is, Rob, the, the issue you have here is you're speaking about the flood and, and, the, and the exodus as having possible naturalistic explanations, which is why you'd go through with them. But the resurrection is the same thing. The swoon theory was created in, in the 19th century in order to give the resurrection a naturalistic explanation that he swooned, uh, he, he fainted, he actually survived the crucifixion, he was transported to the tomb, healed somehow, and what do you call it, and yeah. and appeared to, the, to his disciples, and that's why the resurrection seemed to be what it was. There was a naturalistic explanation put forward. And I'm sure you're aware of that. I'm sure you're aware of the swoon thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah Yemenite front. Put yourself in my shoes. Hmm. Would Noah's flood and the Exodus and so on, would they involve an incarnated, so would they involve God kenosis, a God kenosing himself, incarnating into those particular events? I would say no. No, of course not. Yeah, no, of course right. not. Right. But the kenosis is now, in the kenosis context of the Logos 
in you know incarnating and in hyper the hypostatic union of yeah, but these the all cosmic stardust of his body and his ontological divine nature. That now having a genuine nexus link. Now you're talking about a blend of the natural and the supernatural in that union. Oh, okay, really? hold on. You have any word not with the flood, not with the Exodus. No, but the wow. thing is, are you all saying after Jesus, the incarnation is possible to have? No, but the thing is, the Jesus and the historicism. Wait, there's, there's, there's too many people. Oh, I, I, I don't want to lose them here. Are okay, you saying that the, that now Jesus has two uh, constructs, if you will? He has a divine and a human construct in 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 one, and it's and that's. It's a con I didn't I missed the term that you used. It was either a conduit or a or a, yeah, a nexus. A nexus. Okay. So now are you familiar with Eutychianism? Yeah. That you just committed a heresy then. No, bro. no, that's no, I'm not blending the two. I use the term hypostasis, hypostatic union. It's not the blending of the two or the separation of two. A hypostasis is that they're one and yet distinct. So which the whole so point of John's letters, then, like when he says a little antichrist running around, those are the docetists who deny the humanity of Christ. John clarifies in 1 John 4 that Jesus has not only become human, he remains human. He remains fleshy, even in his glorified theosis state post-resurrection. And that then argues for, so when you as Muslims believe in the resurrection and you, that you'll see Allah's face, the Christian says we have a, a mediator that can actually demonstrate that perfectly. So Jesus is still the second person of the Trinity, but now has blended the human condition the because to we're not God on, so that us conform to his image, existence. we can also experience that. You can't use that as an analogy because in our worldview, we are not going to be on in, in this form. We're going to have an entirely different form with an entirely different landscape, with an entirely different way on how we, our senses it's are going to be different. It's a different yeah, reality. So, so a different will reality. we have two eyes? Well, we'll have, we have a different body. Fingers? It doesn't matter. We'll have a different body. No, no, body. We, don't, we don't. We don't. We, in we fact, you not, believe that as well. You believe the same yeah. thing. You'll have a different body when you resurrect. It won't be the same body. No. Right? Ancient Orthodox Christians don't believe that. They no, believe in the fit. Your analogy is still no good, no matter horrifying. what they believe, because what you just did was a false comparison, right? You can't do that. That's why I'm it's trying to tell you. It's a false equivalence. Don't... Okay, then what form? Then what form will you have then in Islam? No, no, we will have a we will have a body which is different to our body. It'll be like like the Hadith says, you know, sixty cubits tall. Can you imagine that? You can't for a human being. The thing is, everything in Jannah will be different. Will be big. But uh, I'm just curious to understand from your point of view. Let's say you make it to this Christian heaven, paradise, whatever you want to call it. Will you see three persons sitting there or will you see one person, Jesus, sitting there? Uh, I, would, I would venture to say you'd see three the way, for example, Stephen or even John communicates where they, they looked up into heaven. They see the, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit dwelling them. Okay, so you'll see three persons. Yeah. Right, so Jesus becoming a man and having the divine nature really doesn't matter because you'll just see all three of them anyway. Well, it's 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 a beautiful arrangement because, like Hebrews two. By the way, says, that is you you will see you know that is a polytheistic understanding. You see not three not gods. necessarily because well, you see three gods. You just said it. Is that, what, what, allow me to answer. What's curious is that at the end of Zephaniah, for example, you have the promise of Yahweh singing on behalf of his people. He actually sings on behalf of those who've come into his fold, into his congregation, his divine counsel, as I'm pretty sure Yemenite front will be aware of, like Psalm 82. Mm -hmm. So the God that stands in El's counsel of Psalm 82 verse 1, who judges the other gods. Now Christians believe that if you conform to Christ, who is the monogamous theos, the second power, mm -hmm. Hebrews 2 says that he stands in the congregation. He quotes from Psalm 22, and sings and, and declares, here I am with the children you've given me. So yeah, you have a discussion between the father and son. And because if I put my faith in Christ and I'm conformed to his ontology in that faith, I, I stand rest assured that I will be in paradise with Christ as brother before the father. That's the, that's the connection. You have just repeated yourself saying that you are like a polytheist, like a Hindu, maybe with less gods. You end up with three gods. 
No, because I'm worshiping Christ the same way I'd worship the Father. Yeah, I would be a. Yes. By the way, Hashem, which is I would exactly what they do. Let me, let me clarify. Worship I would gods. be. I would be a polytheist in this sense. The the Christian guy that came on that denied the Trinity. So like Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons who deny the, the equality of the Son to the Father. No, no, I'm not saying you're denying it. I would it. then be a polytheist in that model. I'm not saying you're denying it. All I'm saying is based on what you told us, that you'll see three different persons, means you, means you are believing in a polytheistic God. doesn't no, matter how you spin no. it. There's, so I'm worshipping Jesus as Jehovah or Yahweh, the Father as Jehovah and Yahweh, and the Holy Spirit as Jehovah and Yahweh. Matter how we the worship three are one and yet the same. Bro, it's the same thing. If, if you listen to the Hindu who came earlier, yeah. he it's believed the that they thing, all bro. are one. They Did worshiped. You know, they worshiped. Did you not hear him say that? Is it they all, yep. In fact, he even says you and I are gods, and yeah. we all yeah, are one into this Brahman. What's yeah, what's the model of salvation with the three? Number one, they go with. Uh, it's not about Vishnu the model of salvation. One, they it's go the model with of what you Yeah, but how do those three operate for our salvation's sake? It doesn't matter. You worship it does all matter. of them. It's you not about the salvation. You worship all three. That's the thing, and you will see the three over there, which is polytheistic. Doesn't matter how you spin it. <laughs> so the four eyes I've been I've been hearing guys discuss. It's 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 interesting that you go through the process with these guys, you know, to to break down their models. But here I'm trying to give you a model as to, you know, explain to you what I find to be rational on how we get to heaven, how that's even rationally possible, the mechanism for that's, that. That's a different topic. But then you're immediately going, no, 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 it, this no, is no, no different no. to Hindu. How, no. I'm not asking you about salvation. I'm asking, how will you perceive God in heaven? You said you will. But that is persons. part of the wait, topic wait, wait, of wait. salvation. Yeah, I'll let you talk. Let me talk, please. Okay. When you ask a Muslim these questions, okay, will you see Allah in heaven? We say yes. And we will all, all the Muslims, regardless of which denomination they belong to, they will all say you will see one Allah. When I ask okay, a question like, like you, like? brother, let me finish. When I ask what a Christian like you like? and other Christians, they all say the same thing which you told me. They will see three persons in heaven, which is clearly polytheistic. Doesn't matter how you frame it, what I don't know what terminology you you have to use for you to actually make it more explicit than three persons. It's not monotheistic right, gonna, belief. It is a polytheistic belief. I'll ask, it is, I'll ask it is just front. cloaked in monotheistic. All right. Okay. That's all. Okay. 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 So I'll ask Yemenite front this question. You're familiar with the two powers concept of Judaism before it became a heresy in the second, third century AD. Yeah. Um, Orthodox Jews who believe in two powers, were they polytheists? Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is they've recognized the problem themselves and that's why they tried to melt, uh, sort of blend it together to essentially create what became known as binitarianism. If anything, the book of Daniel uh, explores that heavily with the uh, with the cloud rider. That's where it you you see it happening because they actually went into polytheism. Uh, uh, the, the cloud rider and um, and the ancient of days. They were too distinct, but they needed to bring them into one. So they had to do something there. And they and, and they couldn't. It wasn't seamless. And even Daniel Boyerin uh, mentions this in his book. So yes, they they recognized the polytheistic nature of the two powers, but they and because they wanted to maintain monotheism, they had to make a blending, and that's the that's the word you used for the hypostasis, a blending, to to create what was a binitarian uh, theology. All right. So can I clarify something with you? Um, this is not so much Alan Siegel, although he was great in the 70s, but yeah. the more recent Michael Siegel, mm. uh, you know, written, writing on Daniel in 2016, dreams, riddles, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, he argues that the Son of Man, Cloud Rider figure of Daniel 7 is Yahweh. Now, but this is how he makes the argument. Mm -hmm. Scholars now are going more so into the ancient Near Eastern Babylonian situation, the polemics okay. involved in Daniel 7. So what's called the Baal cycle. Yes, now, are right. you familiar with the Baal cycle? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Baal cycle, you have El in slot 1, Baal in slot 2, and Asherah and the Malachim in, in the lower slots. Mm -hmm. The Israelite, polemically, the, this is, again, the two powers argument. 
is that oh Yahweh is all so you know L is also a term that's borrowed like a loan word to apply to the God of Israel. So so Yahweh is L and Yahweh is also Baal. Uh, yeah. But Yahweh can't be in a lower slot. I'm gonna modify slot two and bring it up to slot one. So now you have slot one and two as basically equaling each other. And then the the response yeah. by the polytheist is you're telling me Yahweh is in two slots at the same time, two different slots, and you've put this one up at the same time to the slot number one position. And the Jew goes, yes, because, and then the, the Greek term they would use, like Philo, yeah. a deuterotheos is in hypostasis. Mm -hmm. A second god is in hypostasis. Yeah, but it's still a, cre it's still, first and foremost, it's not revelation. It is something that, you know, L, the L, the bowel cycle is, a, it, uh, originally a Canaanite, a pagan Canaanite tradition, which the Jews... Yeah, it's, it's because yeah. in Babylon. Has to, yeah. Daniel has to engage in the Babylon in place. Well, exactly. Yeah. But, the, but this is the thing. The belief of this and what they have taken, they've taken a pagan tradition and tried to mold, uh, mold it into the monotheism that was given to them by the prophets. And, and what's that's, wrong with that? Well, because now they've taken what? a pagan what? ideology. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't have any issues with that. Why? No, but the thing is, it's not. Look, look, it's not from God, all right. And it's clearly the Jews have taken something which is pagan by origin and tried to mold it. And like I said, because they had, because they understood that it was pagan, that it was polytheistic, they had trouble with it. Hence, why they had to adjust things within the Canaanite theology of the Baal cycle in order to bring it and and declare it as their own to declare it as no 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 what you're doing is, what you believe in is not correct is actually referring to yahweh and this is what it actually means they were tr essentially trying to speak to the people and make it sound like that their tradition is a corruption of the understanding of yahweh wherein it was actually the other way around the jews were corrupting the understanding of yahweh by molding it with a pagan tradition so I, you, you're aware that Christians classically and even Jews classically hold to a progressive revelation. Agreed, but we know that this right. is not, a, so, it's not revelation. No, it it is no, because it's interpretation because if Daniel you if, fit the mold, bro, that's what he's trying no, to tell. No, you. no, no, no. Wait, wait. Because this this is actually key to this whole debate, and this is why I don't. The thing is, the, the Quran. The no, but the thing is, these scholars also accept the scholars that speak about daniel they also accept that daniel is not the author of that yeah of yeah no that's fine okay. in fact if you wait, one sec if you go with the maccabean hypothesis hmm. that proves all the more the, the more powerful two powers polemic with respect to antiochus epiphanies and that whole hmm. scenario that i obviously i push it back i have good evidence to push it back to the sixth century but hmm. notice that each book of the bible is not there's no monolithic blend. It each book is associated with a certain culture, a certain language. Like Abraham didn't speak Hebrew. He was speaking a type of Sumerian mm. Akkadian dialect, right? Yeah. Uh Moses in Egypt. That's not again Hebrew. Mm. Now notice Exodus 6:3, where God says, I was known by El Shaddai, but by my name Jehovah, I was not known. Why? Because no. Jehovah is a Hebrew term that could not be applied to Abraham. So you have this progress. Now, Daniel. When he gives the list of the kingdoms, well, guess mm. what? If Nebuchadnezzar is to say the head of gold and it breaks it down to Greece and then Rome, yeah. how interesting when Greece and Rome come on the scene, it's the exact language that's required to bring about concepts like logos and hypostasis. So then Hebrews chapter one says, in, yeah. in, in the past, God revealed himself in various fragmentary ways, keyword fragmentary ways, but now, in the most complete, fullest sense, he's revealed himself through his son. So if Jesus is the end of this grand cosmic narrative, how can then Muhammad, how can you claim Muhammad is the seal of the prophets when Jesus, according to the Christian argument, is the seal of the prophets? Because the Christian well, argument is wrong. That's well, what we're trying to explain to you. Right? Not, the thing it's is... Sure. Go, go, just, I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. But I find a lot of errors in the Quran. That's why I don't believe in the Quran. Here's what blows <laughs> my mind about you, Rob. You read so much, and you're such an intellectual guy, but you're trying to literally fit like a, a square into a circle, man. So, yeah, I know this book. 
I do know about that one. The, yeah. the crazy thing is, dude. I don't have it, but I know about it. You're trying so hard That's to good. make it work that it just keeps sounding sillier and sillier the more that I talk to you. And I'm, I'm trying to tell you that with all due respect, dude. Yeah. Because we've known each other now for quite some time. And By the way, this book cites the Quran. And this dude, book says dude, that the Quran plagiarized learn, Gnostic literature. You're, you're taking the knowledge of men. You're this taking is not the knowledge, knowledge of men. This men. is scholarship. No, I... So mad. Wrong <laughs> scholarship, bro. Yeah, just dude, that's so scholarship. <laughs> Let me read this. The scholars are not meant for you, <laughs> dude. Just what? <laughs> you, you, like bro. I can't express this enough to you. Come to the simplicity of Islam, bro. You're 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 so tired. I can see the bags under your eyes for how much you're reading. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's just been a long season. That's all. <laughs> Uh, thing, by the way, the before is, I, I think we should wrap up now. Just wanted to ask uh, mm -hmm. one final question. Maybe you could respond to that. Uh, what is your understanding of uh, self-existence within the Trinity? Do you believe the Father and the Son are equally self-existent? Yeah, I think uh, I, I'm going to be I'm going to be not blunt with like if I'm just going to be raw and blunt with how I view the Trinity in, in a very short way. Basically, I think the Trinity, so I, I hold the Athanasian Creed. Yeah. I think the Athanasian Creed gives a very beautiful summarization of the Trinity. Now, that being said, based on what I just said about that progressive revelation, I think the Trinity model is probably the best way God can show how he functions in the most efficient way to bring about salvation. So therefore, the Trinity could be, and I'm open to this, could be a glimpse like like a shadow or the model itself could be like the best that the human mind could perceive, though it be paradoxical, of how much more paradoxical this deity actually is. Now, if it ends up to be the three persons that's described, okay, all well and good. But if there's more to learn in the next life, I'm open to that as well. Uh, so oh. self-existence is yeah. that Asadi sort of context. Yes. Again, the father is in me. I'm the father. Like you have this consistent. I'm not asking you where they are. It, I'm asking you if the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit are self-existent, or is it just one of them who's self-existent? No, they're self-existent in unification. That wasn't my question. Are they all? They're not. They can't be. The, the or, son can't or, be self-existent by himself. Okay, so. You mentioned Athanasian Creed, which is quite quite uh, important here, because mm -hmm. in the Athanasian Creed, which is right in front of me, correct me if uh, yep. it's, it's a wrong translation, it says the Father is made of none, neither created nor begotten. The Son is of the Father alone, not made, not created, but begotten. So the Father is not begotten, the Son is begotten. The Holy Ghost is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. Are you forming a picture now? Yep. The Father neither mm -hmm. begets nor proceeds nor created, none. The Son is begotten, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the both of them. The source is the Father. Because in order to beget, you need a source. You can't self-beget. In order to proceed, again, you need a source. You can't just proceed by, by yourself. So, aseity belongs only to the Father. Hence, the Father alone is self-existing. Are you, I'm just wondering, are you reading Philip Schaff's translation of the Latin? I don't know. You tell me. I just got so, it off the internet. So, let me just, I'll I got just it off read. the internet. Okay. This the is the uh, same. Regardless of the translation, what he's saying is accurate. Well, yeah. I'll just, I'll read, I'll read this, but tell me, I want your reaction to this. So, Is it from the, the Athanasian Creed? Yeah, this is the Ath I'm reading Athanasian Creed. Okay. Read, the the same read the same passage about the Father, the Son, and the What's Holy the Spirit. About well, this is just after because that is the main thing. That's the main. This thing. is just after he mentions Catholic faith. So this is in line five. So he goes that we worship one God in Trinity, that, and the Trinity in unity, neither blending their persons nor dividing their essence. For the person of the Father is a distinct person, the person of the Son is another, and that of the Holy Spirit still another. But the divinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one. Their glory equal, their majesty co-eternal. What, the, what quality the Father has, the Son has, and the Holy Spirit has. That's got nothing to do with my question. That's not the creed. That's not the creed itself. 
Any, that is anybody if it was? No, no, but it was. That's the Athanasian Creed. That is a summarization of the creed, right? But the creed no, that is the creed. I'm reading from the creed. Oh, no, it's not. You're no. not reading the creed itself. Yeah. No, that is the. I'm reading the creed. My bro. Okay, so the, the creed the starts. Creed starts like Whoever desires to be saved should above all hold to the Catholic faith. No, no, no. Now this is the Catholic faith. That's the explanation. I think the creed starts with Correct. that we worship one God in Trinity. And Trinity in unity, neither confounding the persons nor yeah, confounding the is an old English term to mean blending. So I'm reading a, a okay. So you're, a you're modern, reading, yeah, that's fine. I'm but reading the thing a is, modern translation of yeah, the creed. Look, my question was about the existence. Okay, do you acknowledge that the Father is the only one who is a say here? Yes. So if the Father the is the only is one, the, lady, the Holy Spirit is a no, say. No, 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 no. They, they, they are begotten and proceed from the Father. You can't call them aseity. That doesn't apply to self-existing here. Only the Father uh, is self-existing. Well, well, I'll I'll read. I'll keep reading the creed. The Father is uncreated. The Son is uncreated. The Holy Spirit is uncreated. The Father is immeasurable. The Son is immeasurable. The Holy Spirit is immeasurable. The Father is eternal. The Son is eternal. The Holy Spirit is eternal. And yet there are not begotten, three eternal beings. Begotten notice that. The, notice the creed clarifies. There are not three no, no, eternal look, beings. There is but you know one why, eternal you being. You know why you're reading all this? Because you cannot acknowledge the fact that only the Father has the attribute of aseity, which means self-existing and self-sufficient in his existence. So you're choosing... The fact, the, no, you're, until, you're debating the creed. <laughs> Bro, you're I'm not. Me. I'm using the creed against you. Yeah, have you not realized what? that? Yes. Not the fair, Father no. is not the begotten. The Son is begotten. The Father where doesn't does, proceed. The Son, the Holy does, Spirit proceeds. I'm using the creed against you. I'm, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to read the creed at the end. The creed says the Why Father would need the bit a which I'm no, 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 no. This is, is, is for that? okay. It's going to come. It's going to come full circle to why I brought up Surah 112. Oh, okay, God. But it says Allah's. You know, like I'll read it again. It says, Allah is neither, um, He neither begets nor He has neither not begets. begotten and was not begotten. So now the creed says, The Father was neither made nor created nor begotten from anyone. Oh, yeah, that agrees with that ayah there, right? Yeah, it does actually. You're right. Really? Well, right. Now, now go to the sun. Now, now, wait, wait, wait. The very <laughs> next line goes, The sun was neither made nor created nor begotten. Right? No, Why did not, you leave that not, bit out? No, but it says, But begotten. But, About the sun, it says, But begotten. No, no, no. He, no, he left the bit right. out. He left the bit, nor be he was I'm begotten. I'm going to keep reading. Okay, go on, read it. He was begotten from the Father alone. Thank you. Right. The Holy Spirit was neither made, nor created, nor begotten. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. Thank you. Do you not do you not realize that? Both of them no, have wait, a source. No, which wait, is the wait, Father. wait, wait, wait. So I'm going to read the, the last stanza here. Okay. Accordingly, because there's a clarification. Accordingly, there is one Father, not three fathers. There is one Son, not three sons. There is one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. Nothing in this Trinity is before or after. Nothing is greater or smaller. In the entirety, the three persons are co-eternal, co-equal with each other. This is a church. That's... About... No, okay. okay, look. look just... If you want to call it co-eternal, that's okay. But they are not self-existing. Yeah, so yeah, eternally, just quickly, eternally, just quickly. Wait, wait. I'm, bringing it back, I'm bringing it back to the Quran. No, the no, reason why I asked the question... Clear, brother. You got... Yeah. You got nothing against the Quran. The reason, the re you, wait, you the reason why I'm bringing back to the, the Quran creed in order to make all three okay, of one them. Second. My as question is, my question is, the Quran yeah. that apparently comes from Allah Himself says yeah. He has not begotten and was not begotten. He neither begets. No, nor is he, begotten. he says He never begets nor is begotten. I don't know which which translation are you reading. I'm reading from. Oh, it's an Oxford translation course. from the guy's name is. Let me get it. It's a 2013 translation. He doesn't beget, nor is he begotten. Um, one second. Let's let's send him a good translation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I buy him whatever book he wants, man. I, I did. I want it. It. So, okay, it's age AJ Drudge, um, and Oxford. No, it's a 2013 Oxford Quran translation. Is he a Muslim? Uh, he's a critical scholar under Gabriel, Re like Gabriel Reynolds, for example, endorsed his translation. Is he a Muslim? No. Okay. Why would you read a so, Muslim translation? But he's translated as he has not begotten and was not begotten. Yeah, How but is that, that different makes... to your translation? Because it... he neither begets 
nor was he begotten. Begets means he himself doesn't have any children, yeah. nor was he himself begotten from any parents. Yeah. You know, yeah, so that, that's that's the same yeah. as he has not begotten and was no, not begotten. Lem Yelid. Lem oh. Yelid. See, what his error is in the translation is he thinks he's saying uh, Lem Weled. Yeah. Welem Yuled, which is which is not correct. It's Lem Yelid. Yeah. Welem Yuled. Anyway, right, so, well, so in other words, to clarify, in other words, in other words, when you hear something like he has not begotten, it means there's a potential he could beget. But what your translation is saying, oh, he oh, never oh. begets. He never. Neither never begets. Yeah, yeah right. Begotten. Either no. way, the, either way, the reason why I'm bringing this up is when I notice this, I'm then going, wow, this is the Quran's response to the Athanasian Creed because it agrees with the first part, the father has never been begotten, right? Yeah, but when the creed then says, "But he does beget the son," in that monogamous context, mm -hmm. that is rejected. How yeah. interesting that the Quran is responding to a creed in the common era period. Well, naturally, because it came yes. also in the, in the Middle East. Look, well, then, the Middle then the Quran is in time, not from an eternal tablet in heaven. No, no but, but, <laughs> but before Prophet Muhammad well, sees the one again, so, so you're telling me obviously it's going to respond all eternity. Then Allah he... responded to the Athanasian Creed for all eternity. Before yeah, he knew he, it, he knew it since eternity. Yes. No, not Absolutely. just the Athanasian Creed. The thing is, it, <laughs> he's, it's, he's responding to those who worship Mary. Yeah. Allah, Allah yeah. is responding to those who worship. Uh, yeah, his, for example, the Mary the worship, by the way, comes from the Gnostics. No, no, man. No, the Quran, worship, yeah, the Quran, so why so is the Quran, Quran responding, the Quran to, the is responding to all kinds of Christians? I don't worship Mary. All kind of Jews, all kind of pagans. You name it, bro. It's a universal book. Yeah, alhamdulillah. It's but kind of but, but I think, look, I, I think check. one thing is certain, Rob. You have to admit that Jesus was begotten, not self-existing. And the Holy Spirit he is, is proceeding, not self-existing. Both of them have the source as the Father. Even if you want to call it since eternity, the source is still the Father. Then, then have Ye Yemenite Front right now clarify to you what John 1.18 is saying. Because you're my front, you brought up the verse. You're go, you're basically what is monogamous? What is the term next to monogamous? What's the, the very next term? Creed, and I responded based on, based on the Athenian Creed. Bro, Sorry? Need it's not son. It's my not son. It's theos. Yeah, I need the creed. We don't yeah, need the what creeds, man. Right. That you've got. So, so only creed. begotten God in John 1.18 at the Father's side? Like no one has seen God. So what does John mean by yeah, but, the monogamous no, at the father's side has exegeted no, no, him? Is, what is that? What is he trying to say there? No, but Rob, here's the thing. Right? You're saying this is what John is saying. You're well read. You are, you are well read. And you know that the prologue of John is not original to John. So okay, John let's just go not, along. That's not original. No, I don't, no, no, no. I, let's go, it is, let's go down full are, liberal critical scholarship. Let's go there. What does the text say? I don't want to go there for the no. brevity of time. What I'm curious is it's, why do you care what John says, bro? You should be caring whether or not the Quran no, no, is indeed a revelation. Hold on, hold on, Dude, hold on, you need to hold on, you need to iron out the problems I have with the Quran no, first I mean, before, before I come to I think you need, the Quran is you, true. You need to understand that, like like Brother Yamani said, then it wasn't you written. have to also faithfully argue and and and, and understand what say John or the text is saying. No, no the don't. text is no, no, saying no. Jesus is Rob, not created. He's Rob, not. A, Rob. He's not. A, he's not like the Jehovah's Witnesses, like he, Rob. like the Logos is a created thing. Yeah. Rob, by the when, way, when, John when, John one eighteen doesn't actually nullify the fact that Jesus had a relationship with the Father. Okay, and you know that the Father is a God of Jesus, right? Because in John twenty seventeen it says, "I go to my Father and your Father, my God and your God." So let's yes. put things in context. The relationship which mentions in John 1.18 is the fact that Jesus has a God. Yes, and that's completely fine. In so your God has a God, powers. and that's completely fine. No, no, fine. no, no, no. That's completely fine in the context of the two powers in heaven. In wow. John 20. So how many gods have you got now? No, no, no. Because, because no. Hebrews 1 quotes Psalm 45 as God, your God. It's the same... No, no, wait, wait. In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter one, verse eight, you have the like the author of Hebrews, yeah. who I believe is a woman, Priscilla. She mm -hmm. quotes Psalm forty-five and applies it to the Son about and the Son. Does, the Father says, "What does Hebrews God, one nine say?" Have you read Hebrews one nine? Because it answers yeah. the question in there. 
Yes, yeah, your and, God. And, it says your God in there. Yes. The God of Jesus. Do you agree again? Yes. Jesus as a God. Yeah, sorry, verse go. 9. It, it's in verse 9. Yes, now, what Hebrews is verse 10, nine, That's what I said. Now, what, Hebrews but what nine, is verse 10, sir? No, no, Hebrews 1, 9 says Jesus Yes, I know God. verse 9 wait, wait, says so God, you, your God. Wait, wait, do you agree with us now that Jesus has a God? Yes. So your God has a God? The second power and the Does first God power are in relation. Yes. Does your God that, have a God? That That is... The term Elohim is just a, a, a can, being, can a supernatural God, being. Can Almighty God no. ever have a God? Not, <laughs> not uh, if you're a Jehovah's Witness. This you are worse than a Jehovah's Witness. At least a Jehovah's Witness Joe is Whit clear you, about it. These are questions for a Jehovah's Witness. No, no, not, you are worse than Jehovah's Witness. Shall I tell you why? At least they admit they don't believe Jesus is God. You believe Jesus is God, and then you say he has a God. Right, and then so you, answer and then you me. Go okay, you your since God you're in Hebrews 1, Hashem. Please. I think you're, be, bro, you're like, done. I'm, I'm trying to be respectful here. Yeah. Yeah. Making yourself go the very next verse in actually, verse ten. Hush, right. please go to Hebrews to. one Look, ten. I can just, I can instead of you appealing to all the other people in Hush the Bible, him. go Rob, to the very next verse in Hebrews one. It doesn't matter. Like, Look, Hebrews verse one. 10, is, Hebrews and John. Answer me this. Just answer me this I've, question, I think please. you have already answered my question. Your Go God to God. verse 10 of Hebrews 1 and tell me who's speaking in, in verse 10. Whoever is speaking, does your God have a God? Just <laughs> read the verse, see, please. Right. The, and reason, the reason he cannot answer this now is because he pro the penny has dropped and he has realized that God cannot no. have a God. I'm yes. fine with the verse. It but says, you just, God, you're God. So what so why does the you, very next why didn't verse you, say? Why didn't you say that you are a polytheist who believes that you're God I'm not a, a polytheist. What does the very next verse say? Okay, it Yemenite front, please read hold the on. very next verse. Oh, yeah, verse yeah, 10. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please. You're just digging right. yourself in a hole now. No, no I'm not. Is, the thing is, I want to go back Okay, Okay, bit. I'll answer it. I'll answer it since you're not one to read it. It's Jehovah the Huh? Like, in verse yeah. 10, calling the son Jehovah. Oh, in verse we, 10. You know, it's and not the first time that's happened. You created the heavens and the earth. The word Jehovah the doesn't exist the Jehovah in the in New Testament. 10. Stop lying. The word Jehovah or Yahweh doesn't exist in the entire New Testament. I don't know which one uh, you're reading. Yes, it does in verse 10. Show me the Greek. So. Wait, wait. Show me what? the Greek. Because you just yes, lied now. Yes. Okay, yes, let's see the I'll Greek show, now. I'll show it if to the you. Greek doesn't say, will you admit you you lied deliberately? Uh, I will admit I lied if the Greek doesn't say it. Okay, okay. let's open Greek. Let's see the word Yahweh right. in there. While he's oh, looking, man, up, this guy dug, a, just, dug okay. himself in a hole deeper than he can. I just down. want to say this, bro. What's not okay is when you're pulling two concepts from here, two concepts from here, two concepts from here, and you're building this model, bro. You just can't do that. And then the last thing I want to say is. Pick up a different copy of the Quran. I sent you a link in the private chat so you can um, so you can get a copy of it. If you need for me to order it for you, I'm happy to do it once again. But dude, you gotta stop doing this whole trying to build a this one yeah. universal bridge between all these different models that you're creating and linking it to Islam and then validating this that. We don't need the Bible to prove Islam to be true, bro. Actually, he wasn't. He wasn't doing that. He was dismantling Christianity just now. No, he by, by claiming oh God as a God. I should be a little bit more charitable. <laughs> anyway, I want to say salam alaikum warahmatullah. Thank you for having me on. I gotta go take care of some stuff. That's Rob, okay, bro. We are going to close as soon as he realizes it's not in the Greek. <laughs> All right, All right Dude, bro, it's care. in the Greek because he's quoting the Septuagint of Psalm 102. That's the point. So show I didn't me the lie. Greek. Go on, show me the Greek. Let's see. Do you want me to share my, yes, my screen? Yes. Share your screen. All right. All right. Show All me right. the term Yahweh in there. Okay, okay. I'll show it to you. Let me share my screen. Is it the Hebrew version you got? Well, that's that's the point. I so see. the Masoretic so, text. So now you're going to translate it. No, 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 no. I'm not dodging. I'm going to show you okay. what's going on. God. Let me just bring it up. I was meant to have five minutes and then go to sleep because yeah. I got work in the morning. Guys, it's not been an hour. What is it? Hebrews? <laughs> was it Hebrews one ten? You said one ten. One ten. No, Hebrews one o two. What verse? Whoa, uh, to 26. No, it doesn't matter. Go on. Sorry, Hebrews right. what? Hebrews 102. Hebrews yeah, that... 102. Where do you get that from? That's not from the... So, 
Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10, yeah. quotes Psalm 102, verse no, no, 26. Not, wait, 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 wait. So you're going to Psalms now, not Hebrews. The, I'm not asking you for the cross Hebrews, reference. Okay, let me, hold let, on, me, hold let, on. me share my, let me share what my screen. What you're doing now so you is you're it. going to cross reference Psalms. Is that what you're saying? That's what the author's doing of, of Hebrews. No, but in Hebrews, I said, is there the term Yahweh in the entire New Testament? And you said yes. So you lied on camera. No, I did not. Watch the video again. Once again, I'm asking you the question. Before you post that or bring that uh, screen, is the term Yahweh mentioned anywhere One in second, the New my, Testament? One second. Just give me a moment. Oh, man. This is... While he's looking, to verse what, for you. The thing is, while he's looking for it, he's going um, to bring in the Old Testament because it's a cross reference. Yeah, but because I, that's my what question the to him was doing. very All right, specific. Here we go. It's worse than that because he was, you know, he was talking to, he was talking yeah. about progressive revelation. Right. Okay. And so then, before you, before I bring the screen up, let answer this question: Is yep. the term Yahweh anywhere in the New Testament? Uh, it appears very briefly in James. In is James the term well. Yahweh there? It's a sub sub oath. Yeah, the Tetragrammaton sub oath. No, no, no. So the Tetragrammaton is there. But but the Tetragrammaton becomes the Greek kurios, kurios in the Septuagint. I didn't ask you what it becomes. I asked you, do you have any evidence, any manuscript, so, which, wait, wait, which uses the term Yahweh anywhere in the New Testament? It's a simple question. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about to I didn't ask you, you whether... This, whether it became this curious, is in Hebrews chapter one verse yeah, ten. Whether it becomes curious or whatever it became, I'm not I'm not concerned with that. Cu curious, I'm, ask, I'm asking. Curious you, is the does, translation the of the Tetragrammaton itself. Does it appear anywhere in the New Testament? N no. Thank you. It's not. Finally, it finally. becomes a, no. It becomes a transliteration in James. I didn't ask you for that. Do you know a difference between transliteration and translation? Yes, I do. I know what's the Tetragrammaton as well. Yeah, so it's a Semitic Hebrew term that just is I am, I am in the first person or third, third person is Yahweh, Yahweh. That is Yahweh. not the tetragrammaton. I am is not a tetragrammaton. I asked you specifically yeah. for the term Yahweh. The tetragrammaton, yes. the tetragrammaton is a nonsense term from I am, I am in Exodus no, 3. No, that, that'll be Ehyeh, Asher, Ehyeh, yeah. not yes, Yahweh. Yes, that's, that's how you say it in the first person. If you're speaking in the third person, you say Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh is that's not even a term. It's a tetragrammaton. You're adding vowels to it. The Yahweh's tradition is something. Oh, uh, my God. Okay, okay. look, as anyway. long as you have admitted that the tetragrammaton is that, not there in any New Testament, I'm okay with that. But earlier you said it is there. And no. That's why I was, oh I was my goodness. challenging Hashem, you. please show some charity here. Like, I'm not lying in, in any why of this. You I mean, you're admitting video. I'm well read and I'm appealing to the Bro, scholarship. Just because you're well read doesn't mean. And then mean, for you to say the term you... is not in the New Testament, the term is in the New Testament through the what? Septuagint. The, the Tetragrammaton is there in the New Testament. Well, why do the Jehovah's Witnesses translate Kurios as Jehovah? Are you a Jehovah's Witness? Obviously not. If so I hold why are you using the argument theory. now? I don't understand. <laughs> because I, even all over they the understand that Kurios like, means no, no. Jehovah. For the Jehovah's Witnesses, they have changed the Bible. Do you know that? They don't rely on your uh, on your translations. Oh they have got their own Just watchtower share the to deal with so it. So I can show you what's going on in Hebrews chapter 1. Yeah, you can show me, but you have already admitted that the term tetragrammaton is not there. It. The, for it to be there, you'd have to have it in like a, a, a consonantal Hebrew script in Greek, in the Greek majuscule text. Why? Suddenly you shove in these Hebrew Semitic Why? terms. You have got lots of Hebrew terms in the New Testament. You know that. Like the term Moses. No, the they're Aaron. transliterated into Greek. No, Like when are, Jesus speaks Aramaic, it's yeah. still in Greek. It's not, it's not Aramaic terms appearing in the text. You know, they have, they have Aramaic in there. So why can't they have Hebrew in there? You know when Jesus they was on the cross, and he show says, me a manuscript that has says, Aramaic terms in well, there. When he says "Ilahi, Ilahi," yeah, and in, and what's the Greek? What does the Greek look like? What is? I think they transliterated it. Oh, that's what I just said. <laughs> okay, so if if you don't have the term Allah in your English translation, and it the Arabic term Allah, but you have it transliterated in Arabic, sorry, in English. Then I will accept that. 
But you don't even have that in the New, Tra New Testament. That's what I'm telling you. You don't but have that, why. That's an anachronism. That's an anachronistic no, argument. No, you don't have Y H W H even in the English translation of the New Testament. Unless you're reading one of those Jehovah's Witnesses altered think, version from the Watchtower. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think no, Yemeni yeah. Front <laughs> understands what I'm trying to say over here. Yeah. Anyway, look, say, let's take but... it up next time. But yeah. uh, bring, I think, you said uh, I'll, you, I'll, you're going to allow me to bring up the screen? Yeah, but the screen doesn't mention Yahweh, does it? I'm going to show you. It's a quotation of Psalm 102. In Psalm 102, yeah, the Psalm Septuagint is, translator the puts kurios in verse yeah. 26, which I is know. applying Jehovah Psalm there. It's not the and then the author, of the, Psalm, uh, the author of Hebrews quotes that Psalm and says, the father speaks to the son as quoting Psalm 102 and saying, Jehovah the son creates heaven and earth. Yeah, so that's the, what the author of Hebrews 1 is saying. Okay, so, so therefore the, the son is Jehovah according to Hebrews okay, what 1. What translation is this, by the way? This is the ISV. You can read the ESV, you can read the NIV, NASV, any okay. translation. K, KJV will say all oh, of this. Which, sorry, which verse is it again? Hebrews? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. Hebrews 1, 10. And you're yes. saying the term Yahweh is in there? Yes. Okay, good. Let's bring it up. No problem. So I'll bring up your, your screen. Is that the ESV you said it is, yeah? Well, this is the ISV, but the same translators for the ESV worked on the ISV. Okay, where is Yahweh? So, here is verse 8 and 9, which we just discussed. Notice you have a footnote. So, about the son, he says, and it's a quotation of an Old Testament passage. The footnote will say Psalm 45. The footnote. Yeah, footnote 8. The footnote so that, is not, this it's not part this of the a, New Testament. Do you know that? Notice that this is a quotation of Psalm 45. Yeah, so, I know. Psalm will mention 10, Yahweh, but not the New Testament. Now verse 10 says, in the beginning, Lord, which is Jehovah in Psalm 1 or 2, you lay the foundation of the earth. So now you have Psalm 45 applied to the Son, and Psalm 1 or 2 applied to the Son, and here you have the Tetragrammaton, Lord, from Psalm 1 or 2. You said you were going to show the Greek. Where's the Greek? Yeah. So Where's when I go Greek? to the show Greek... Yeah. yeah, okay, so here's the Septuagint. Now I'm going to the very psalm itself. No, no, don't go to the psalm. Stick to the New Testament. Don't play that game with no, me. No, that, that's My where, question that's was about where the New it Testament, appears. not the yeah. psalm. In the beginning, you, O oh, Lord, man, this laid so the foundation dishonest, of the earth. This guy so dishonest, honestly. Forget it. How's you that know, being look, dishonest? You know, first and Just... foremost, you need to be sincere. Have some integrity. Wait, did you... Even if you're learned, have some integrity. My question was specifically from the very beginning about the New Testament, not about psalm. Uh, Hashem, the thing is, it's a lot of things have been oh covered. Gosh. You have the, you have the. He knew what I was asking, and he was talking <laughs> about the psalm. Because Hashem, I have not read psalm. the term Yahweh. Psalm anywhere forty-five is quoted. Psalm one two is quoted. Psalm oh. one ten at the end of chapter one is quoted. Which well, part of Psalm is the New Testament? Psalm twenty-two is quoted in the very next chapter. In Hebrews is it 12. the New Testament though? The psalm. No, it's an Old Testament hymn. Yes, in the Old Testament. The author of Hebrews is quoting the Old Testament and applying it to the Son. Okay, here is your screen. Show me the Greek. Yeah, look at verse 26. What does no, verse 26 say? It. It's, your, it's your evidence. That yeah, I'm, it's right there. No, no, show me yeah, the Greek. Rob, in the, Greek? In the, in the Greek, okay. the Greek is not a transliteration. Right? The Greek is not a transliteration of the psalm. When it, when Let's it's see what he says of, in the Greek. No, it's yeah. a translation. It's not a transliteration. I didn't say it's a translation. Right. Did you say Hebrews 1.10? Oh my it's, goodness! One oh one. So you're, you're you're back a chapter when you read the Septuagint. In the Masoretic text, it's Psalm one hundred two, but in the Septuagint, it's Psalm one hundred one, verse twenty six. Is it part of the New Testament? N obviously not. It's a quotation. Then why do, why do you keep the reading it? The author of Hebrews. See, the author of Hebrews is quoting that Psalm and applying it to the Son. Yeah, just you know, just like Jesus. I've just gone back to Hebrews one. That's Hebrews one. Here's the Septuagint. I still don't see the. Yes, Greek. Hebrews one again. There's a subtusion. Where is the Greek? Do you want the Greek? All right, yes. I'll bring up the Greek interlinear. Here we go. Oh wait, one sec. Where's the swear? All right. Verse twenty-six. Kyrie. Verse one twenty. Sorry, verse what? Yeah. Psalm. This is in so the you. 
And there's the Greek. Yeah, what does it say? What does it read in the Greek? Lord. <laughs> so not Yahweh. Not the tetragrammaton. Uh, what do English translations do when they read Yahweh or Kurios they actually, in the Old Testament? Yeah, they replace the word. By the way, we have no idea what the original said because this is an assumption that wherever the word Yahweh was supposed to be there, this replaced yeah, or this substituted with Lord or Curious. But the question is this. You have to show me from the original, whatever is available to you, extant manuscripts, where they would actually use the word Yahweh. And I'm telling you, every place that the term Yahweh would have appeared, allegedly, All right. they have removed the it. Oldest we have who is gave the them the, who gave them the, the permission scrolls? to remove the very name of God from your Bible. All right, all right, all right. So the oldest we have is the Dead Sea Scrolls. Does the Dead Sea Scrolls have the New Testament? Pro, you're No, pulling... the Dead Sea Scrolls has the Psalms in them, for example. I'm not asking Pro. you about the Psalms. I'm asking you about the New Testament. How many times have to keep repeating this? All right. Here is the Dead Sea Scrolls of the same Psalm. Forget it, man. You're wasting time. What is what is the te what is the telegram? Look here. Look here. Wait, the did you, Psalm, did you answer? Look, dude. Share yes. my screen again. It's no, right there. I will not share the screen because you keep switching from Old Testament to New Testament. My question was specifically <laughs> about the New Testament. Even if you the asked New for Testament, the original, yeah, I went even, to the Balaga. No, no, you don't have which the original. Which is just for the Dead Sea Scrolls. What? How old is the Dead Sea Scrolls? About the oldest we have is about one twenty. Okay, how many years after Moses? Oh. Easily a thousand years after Moses. If Absolutely. Moses is How can that be the original? You got a thousand year gap and you call that the but, original. But Psalm, Psalm, what Balaga are you talking Psalm 102 about? Oh, is not written break. by Moses. Psalm like 102 said, is written look, look, well you know, later. Yeah, you know, just... let's, let's stop here because if you go back. And yeah, listen, you know, Yemen, I, I think you and I should have a discussion on just you and me. Yeah. We'll go. No, a we can at some point. No offense, As long as you answer the questions. My question was about the New Testament. You know that there is no mention of Yahweh in the New Testament. So you had no choice but to go to the Old Testament. Okay. All right. Anyway, thanks for your time, mate. Uh, until next time, all the best. Anyway, contact me, Yemenai Front. Yeah. Uh, leave your contact uh, for me in the private chat. And I'll no worries. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Well, I like the bit where he said God has a God. <laughs> he wasn't the, the first Christian, is, by the way. To admit the thing that. is, it's like what, what's happened with Rob and what I've seen, you know, on the multiple streams that he's been on. Hmm. He's so well read that he's confused himself because there are so many traditions. And even when I was studying the two powers, it took me a good six months of just focusing on that subject to be able to discern between the different traditions and where they come together and how the, and how this theology uh, comes through. So, you know, you have a few things. Like he was trying to talk about progressive revelation, but everything that he was trying to support was outside of revelation with regards to the Trinity. That, so that didn't help him. You know, the two powers in of itself, there was a massive, there's a massive history with it. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. But... I mean, look, we know for sure yeah. that the mainstream Judaism doesn't believe in that, does it? No, but the thing is, it stemmed from, like, with the exile, yeah. it, mainstream Judaism at one point became that. And then it returned back yeah. with the prophets and everything. So yeah. if you look at the history, you would see that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept sending prophets, because they were the mainstream group that kept verging on to paganism. And you can see, you can trace it through. The Old Testament, you can see the where it goes from monotheism to paganism to monotheism to paganism throughout yeah. the Old Testament. I mean, the uh, worship of the golden calf is a clear example, isn't it? It's no, but that's, the, that's very explicit. Like, for example, Psalm yeah. uh, 95, verse 3, or 93, verse 5, whichever way around it is, yeah. it mentions about Yahweh being the highest of the gods. Hmm. It doesn't mention him as the only God. He mentions him as the highest. And it's very discreet. You, you'd miss it if you're not paying attention. No, I think Rob mentioned that, didn't he? He mentioned uh, the concept. No, yeah, but he didn't touch on, on that yeah. specific verse. But then so this is a me. pantheon of gods. Um, No, Pan that, the Psalm 82, he mentioned yeah. Psalm 82 with the pantheon of gods. The Jews never understood that as uh, multiple gods. They understood that the term gods being applied to humans 
just means you you you're you're close to God. Or, or and when it's uh, explained within the uh, Talmudic tradition, it's very clear that God is. Uh, you know how when we say that so when you're in a gathering, you know the angels are there, and you know they Allah. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? It's that sim It's that same similar a similar concept oh, okay. too, right? But then you've got the Yahweh's tradition, you know, where he's talking about Yahweh and everything. But the Yahweh's tra tradition is something separate as well. It's not original to the Old Testament because you've got the Yahweh's and the priestly uh, traditions. And that's where you have doublets and triplets within the Old Testament. You see it in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, two creation stories. There's so much there. And he's read yeah. all of this and he can't make sense of it. Well, that's the thing. You know, when it's falsehood, you are bound to find contradictions in it. And that's what Allah says yeah. in the Quran that if this book was from anyone other than Allah, you surely have contradictions in it. Yeah, I did and, want to ask him if he if he knew about the Talmudic story about Elisha bin Obaya, but yeah. uh, I think he should speak to Brother Ismail. Um, yes. Yeah, brother. Sorry, brother Ibrahim. You know, who oh. knows a lot about the Old Testament, mashallah. So it'll be a good uh, uh, it'll be a good stream, inshallah, between them. Because he's yeah. learned and Brother Ibrahim, mashallah, is uh, well equipped with his Old Testament uh, knowledge. Uh, I mean, mashallah, you're you're quite uh, proficient as well. But yeah, it'll be good to, to have a discussion with them um, on a stream, maybe one day, inshallah. inshallah. But uh, yeah, jazakallah khair for uh, your patience. I know it's been, uh, what, nearly six hours, subhanallah. Well, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Well, Thank you very much to all the, uh, the viewers, the brothers and sisters have been quite patient. And also... Uh, specifically the moderators Jazakallah uh, Khairan for that uh, I think brother um, so brother Wakar was unable to continue because of the technical difficulties so I think something wrong with the internet but inshallah we'll try to bring him uh, on our next stream uh, he'll be quite a valuable asset uh, with his website you know ikra.org uh, which we had at the beginning of the of the stream and also brother Sabur, as you know, his website, Sabur Ahmed, uh, quite, a, quite, mashallah, is, is resourceful in terms of intelligent design, in terms of uh, topics like evolution and so on. And of course, we got uh, Brother Yamani. Uh, he's changed his, uh, his website. His, his, it was, uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> so, mashallah, that's his uh, website address. Uh, do subscribe to all the channels uh, and do uh, subscribe to Dawahwise as well. Um, please. Uh, Make dua for all of us. Keep us all in your dua. We need your duas. Um, alhamdulillah, we are all with the intention of spreading the deen. Uh, so we need your help there as well to help us spread the channel. You know, mention it in, in your groups, uh, in your Facebooks, whatever social media you follow. In addition to YouTube, uh, that'll be great. And jazakallah khairan for that. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. نحمد و نسلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك يا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نستغفرك نتوب إليه